Welcome to the Cultaholic Wrestling Podcast. If you like a lot of wrestling on your YouTube join, join our, our cult. cult. Hello and welcome to our throbbing wrestling ho 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 exciting edition of the Cultaholic Wrestling you really Podcast. CM Punk hand loosening talk. I do that instinctively now. Oh. I don't even think about it. Oh. Mm. Yes, he's not here. No, no. Thank no. God. Oh, yeah. love black what? eyes, wouldn't we? I'd love to have him on. <laughs> Imagine it. No, we give ourselves the black eyes right here in the Call It Wrestling Podcast, the home of the place where we just had a lovely, lovely Christmas party only mm. a small few days ago. Uh, John by ourselves, obviously, I was there, Matthew, Ross was there, <laughs> and Jack was there. We were all there. Joel was there. <laughs> and Funny. you were there. Everyone who worked here was there. Yes. Mm. It's weird how it worked out. I was in a new role. He's getting, <laughs> he's getting the mic. He's oh. got some thoughts. No, no, no. I, he's I, just I, getting ready. I, he's getting ready. I've got someone. just got, I, I was there. I've got someone shooting medal at home. I just uh, forgot to bring it in today. I don't know whose it is. Joel, did you win? What? Shooting? The guns? Shoot. Oh, oh, you have it. I've got it, yeah. Oh, it's... Uh, Who was in the final? Tubman? Richard, uh, um, Alex Winters, Alex and... Um, and um, someone else. Oh, man. Who's the, oh, the biggest psychopath? boyfriend, Ben. Then. Oh. Yes, yes, that was it. That <laughs> was then, the three one. And then Fraser. So uh, one of those, it's one of those four. Alex Winters won. Yo, he was insane. Is that the battle I've was, got? He I was, don't know. That boy... Oh, yeah, that, it was scary. Uh, it was like it? for the people who don't know, we went to like a, um, it's like a big time crisis, basically. Yeah, it's like a big virtual shooting gallery thing. Yeah, called Point Blank. Called Point Blank in Newcastle, and it uh, and Alex from Triple Jump, one of the editors there. Oh my word, he was like uh, Annie Oakley. He was <laughs> <laughs> in the old west. She was good at shooting. That's her gimmick, you know. <laughs> You know, <laughs> there's so many names you could have gone with, and you've gone with the best one possible. Thank you, Jack. Don't yes. we do sufficient background checks here? Why? Just off the back of that information there, they provided by Alex. Oh, that he was really good. How did he get really good? He, he, said, he, he said he's played similar VR games before. Mm. 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 He's That's actually all say. We just, it took us, took us this long to realize it's actually Liam Neeson. Mm. <laughs> but I. Yeah, well, lovely time was had. Mm -hmm. um, I forgot that's the place I went to for my cousin's stag do, mm -hmm. where he brought all his old uncles who were like, what are we doing? When the person explained the concept of computers, I was like, I don't know. Uh, and then I showed them how to use the gun. They were like, oh, it's good, this. So it was good seeing how much old people enjoyed it as much as young ones. Shout out to the lad who worked there who said he used to watch us. <laughs> <laughs> if you're listening. Well, you yeah. won't be. So. Oh, I got that knife good in the back there. Like. <laughs> yeah. I used to like it. And then... <laughs> We're like, why do you not watch this? Because I grew out of wrestling. Because, oh, we didn't. And occasionally the playlist in the bar would just turn into, like, Metalingus or, like... Yeah, we walked in, me and Kayla, it was Metalingus on there. And mm. I was like, I didn't plan this. This wasn't my fault. <laughs> like, yes, of course. Yeah. yeah. Um, she believed you, though. <laughs> it was a good night. I th it, didn't get, it didn't seem to get quite as messy as last year when there was, like, multiple falls on the ice and multiple sickies. <laughs> This year, Damn was, it. this year was a bit more chilled. Damn it, was tried though, didn't he? I think there was one sickie. Oh. Yeah. Who? I don't know if I should embarrass no. him on the podcast. Go on. Uh, Only if it's funny. I don't want to, you know. He was, to you. He's fine now. He's good, yeah, it yeah. Was, you can guess if you want. It was one of the lads in there. Dan? No. No. Pichini? No. Well. Not Andrew? No. Not Owen? No. Tubman? No. Adam? No. Luke? No, wasn't it? <laughs> Pierce. Yeah. Oh. oh. But he was fine. He stuck. He stuck around afterwards. And That's drank, clean up his sick. Water. Oh. <laughs> so how did you clean that up? With paper blue roll. Oh. Went to blue roll yeah. on the floor. Yeah. No, it was on the table. Here. Everyone do oh. the dinosaur on the table. It was on the table. Yeah. Oh. Wow. oh. I didn't want to embarrass him. <laughs> I'm sorry, Look at his Pierce. Vindictive smile. I'll like, yeah. yeah. cut it out. Joel has set the I'll scene. How did it end up on the table? Out of his mouth. What was? What was going? Well, he was in the. He was in the toilet for like an hour, and then he came out, and then he sat down and just. <laughs> I thought it was empty, lads. Leave him alone. He right? puts the P in part. I feel bad now. <laughs> yeah, you should feel bad. Be so quiet. Sound a bit deadly. God. Yeah. We suck on carbon monoxide. Pierce is um. Pierce was who I sat next to at All In. And they changed that this year. He was a one. Well, no. He was all out there at the party. Wasn't yeah. he? And I, I would like to report. I'd, li I'd just like. He to was say on the full gear. That <laughs> he was not. No, I'd just like to report that at the wrestling on the clock, Pierce was. A marvelous person. What he was on his best behavior. So he's not. He's not. I don't want to portray him as some kind of oh, lout. He's, he's very sensible. He's a lovely boy. Usually, yeah, yeah. he's very sensible. It happens to the usually. best of us. It, it, yeah, it yeah. happened to you last year. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. There we go. There we go. That nice disclaimer there. Mm -hmm. Good work, lads. Ah, I don't know. Pleb banter, as they call it. <laughs> <laughs> they mean in you know the Tories. Uh, the news this week actually was some newsworthy news for a change. 
WWE forced to abandon Jay Uso's Yeet catchphrase and merch, which I think people realize watching that lovely dramatic package they did to remind people who Jay Uso is. And like, hang on, he's wearing a Yeet shirt in those old, uh, pro- those old promos from a week ago. Why is that blurred out? Uh, turns out Casey Huffman, a pro wrestler based in West Virginia, um, has held the term Yeet, sorry, the trademark for Yeet within pro wrestling since 2021. Uh, try looking at Casey Huffman. I don't think the person has a Wikip- uh, Wikipedia's bloody hell Twitter page. So I think people didn't even know that he had a this. wrestler without a Twitter page. Yeah, hmm. doesn't seem doesn't seem right, does it? Yeah, no. So yeah, turns out no, we uh, we can't make money off it, and I'm sure, I'm not going to give him money to get it off, or maybe they will. I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's going to stop doing it. So you can still buy them as of this time, but the DuryShop.com is just get rid of what they've got. Once they're sold out, they're gone forever. Collector's item? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Jay doesn't need Yeet to be over. It would help him, though. Yeah. Maybe we love screaming one word answers, don't we, wrestling fans? Crowds love that. Yeet. So got... we have Yeet and AW have Adam. There's so <laughs> many on the show. <laughs> he's got he's got Usi still, I suppose. Or is that more Sami Zayn? Yeah, it was a Sami, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I suppose yeah. so. Hmm. He's got Yarp. Yarp? Yeah. Narp. He just it, needs to come up with a new variation, dude. Like neat. a Yurt. Yeah. yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> one letter difference. <laughs> or yeet. It's the three E's. Or, or yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeet. You haven't won the world title. Yet. <laughs> yeet with an A. Y E A T. Oh, that's yeet. good. Yeet. Mm. Yeast. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Oh my God, Juicer with the bread. Because he makes all the dough. Yes. I saw oh, a picture. Okay, yeah, a okay. picture of Brett Hart in it there this week. <laughs> in the airport <laughs> yeah, that one. With his little coffee cup. And he's yeah. like, just says bread. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like a year old to get reshared again, but it is just funny because he's, you know, happy Brett. Mm. <laughs> it was very happy. Happy bread. Sorry. Yeah. There's that meme of told them my name was Stephen with a PH and it's Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Uh, WWE to stop selling DVDs and Blu rays in Europe. Uh, the, oh, I think, oh, it says here. All over the world, apparently. I was just hearing about Fremantle Media, visual licensee of the home video uh, in the UK, announced that, yeah, let's get rid of them. It's the way of the world, I guess. Yeah, the very last home video releases will be Crown Jewel, which uh, staggers me this, is still available to buy on two-disc DVD. Two-disc? Oh, yeah. It's a long one. <laughs> mm. um, I, I was on the news video with Tom when we talked about this, and he was heartbroken. And, I was, and the more he talked about it, the more I was like, yeah, it is a shame. Because at first when I read it, I thought, I don't care. And I'm like, ah, oh. not just even so much in wrestling terms, but just the world, just the way of the world. What if all the computers stopped working? We'd all <laughs> our things are online, all our money, all of our entertainment. We'd have to go out and hunt in the, oh, I don't know. Just dig a hole, <laughs> put yeah. a box in the hole, put some cash in, some VHSs, you'd be fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is a shame, though, because, like, they've cancelled, obviously, the, the VHSs and what the physical media that it, what that was. Mm-hmm. But it's like not everything's available on the network. So we're being uh, shafted right. oh, yes. in certain respects. I don't know what's available on the network and what was available on VHS, but there is some. Yeah, and there's a few like Collision in Korea, Fight Accounts or... And I don't know, Damn if, it's, it. I don't know if it's certain, but do these more modern DVD pay-per-view releases have like special features and stuff? I don't know. No, same. I doubt it. When was the last time you bought one? Oh. A, a wrestling DVD? Aye. You're the most likely here, I reckon. No, it's still t- tape trade, but it's all old VHS things that you can't buy anywhere. But mm. like a proper, like official one, nah, no, yeah, it was a staple nah, of my childhood. Really like school report yeah. time, come around, go down to Woolworths, get to pick a VHS. Mm-hmm. No way out, two thousand and two. That yeah. was a big one. Oh, that must have been a high rating. Yeah, I didn't understand what was going on though. <laughs> Not having Sky to watch Raw yeah. SmackDown. <laughs> yeah. I did get the big dirty, like the two thousand and four WWE DVD box. They did them all, them all in one. It's giant, oh, the smell of the cellophane coming off, like, oh, that's so nice. <laughs> that's over now. Yes, it's over now. Mm. Uh, in crazy news, not just CM Punk returning, so hell freezing over there, uh, WWE seemingly reaching a deal with Ken Shamrock. That will be scheduled there. So uh, I know at the you put several Ken Shamrock T-shirts up for sale. Sadly, they've got him going, who wants to yeet? So I'll have to take them down again, I guess. But yeah, Shamrock, one of those guys that they just stopped talking about him. Stop referencing him. Never come back for any cameo spots or out like that. And it's been like, did he do something really bad? And Bruce Pritchard on his podcast that used to be good, but now doesn't say anything. Um, has not really made it very clear. He left very abruptly, sure, but I mean, worse wrestlers than him have done that and come back. So. Maybe he battered Vince McMahon. 
I don't know. Um, maybe it's maybe it's Vince knows he can't take. Him. I was gonna say maybe it's because he went to TNA, but loads of wrestlers did that yeah. and came back. And it's especially confusing because in the time since he's been gone, obviously MMA has exploded. So you'd think they could have used him at some point, like just even as a special referee or just something like that. Maybe Spring. that's why he came back because the merger. Ah, oh. oh. I don't know if he's um. He's not UFC, is he? Though? I don't know if he's in UFC's no. good books either. No. Don't know. He was in the nineties, was he? I don't know anything yeah, about him. He he yeah, he's on, on again, off again. He did try and sue. I forget the exact reasons why. So it's like you owe me money, and then Dana White was like, "No, you're not." <laughs> <laughs> it's so a... funny because Dana White back in the day used to be really funny and entertaining, watching him blast people because you're like, Dana's probably in the right here. But... Now you know whenever he opens his mouth, now it's like, oh, he's in the wrong. Oh, the, the Shamrock feud, the big feud, I guess, in inverted commas that he had in the UFC was with Tito Ortiz, mm. who. Off impact, you know, when he came back. Oh, like, yeah. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, you know, the man. <laughs> and um, Tito Ortiz, like Dana, used to be really a good promo, like you'd say. Mm. But nowadays, I think Tito's famous for saying silly things. Being the worst promo. Right. But back, they did like that. You're going to look like Ellsworth. <laughs> right. But you know, they used to <laughs> hey, do that, um, The Ultimate Fighter, like the reality show. It's like Big Brother, but yeah, yeah, with yeah. two teams of fighters. And the flimsy doors. And one of the, yeah. And one of the big early seasons was Shamrock's team versus Tito's yeah. team. And in that season, Tito just like outwits him at every. T- it's quite sad to watch. Shamrock's just like, I'm gonna bother you. And Tito's like, okay. Well. He's taking it so seriously. Yeah, and yeah. it's even funny because they're showing it. Obviously, it's, it's fake reality TV. But at the same time, it, all the guys who are uh, under Shamrock are like, well, uh, we haven't done any training today. Yeah, they're like, oh, we've watched the best of Shamrock. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. So maybe uh, oh, he wouldn't be a great promo if they brought him back, maybe. I don't know. Just, just, just do this. <laughs> you know, he bleeds from his mouth like good old. How like old? the old days. How old do you know? 63, my guess. You wouldn't, would you wouldn't think of looking at him? No. I'm going to Google What's it. his metabolic age? 45? <laughs> I'm going to have a little <laughs> one second. I know, that's the liver king. Not Frank Shamrock. Ken Shamrock. Yeah, to other one. I wonder if his sister's Ari. Ah, <laughs> right. He's, he thought Ryan. so. <laughs> he's, um, he's 59. A. Hey. 50, 50, 59. Thank you, Joel. <laughs> Uh, another news: Ric Flair effectively paying AE Dub to appear on TV. This was. This doesn't even seem real, does it? Ric Flair giving someone money. The story's already bollocks. <laughs> but yeah, because of the energy drink thing he's got going. Um, quote from Tony Khan: We're not paying Ric Flair. Ric Flair is essentially paying us. We're getting paid by Woo Energy for all of his appearances, so we're collecting revenue from them, which explains why he's hanging around like a bad smell. But his deal isn't his deal like four years long. Four. I don't see it lasting that long. No. <laughs> like, I don't know why Tony tweeted this, because I don't think it's a good look anyway. He's trying to say, like, well, we're not paying Rick, so, but it's it doesn't address the fact that I guess you're getting no, paid for it. It'll be then. fine, because we'll get, like, sponsorship from, like, Jimmy Havoc's Mints and Dumplings or, like, Marty Scurll's Paper oh Aeroplane, something God. like that. Just, <laughs> it'll make it all fine, because they'll be paying AEW, you see. Uh, well, but the, to, to Ross's point, you know... <laughs> Yeah. Just that was us going off switching yeah, yeah, gears yeah, from yeah, Jack's yeah. coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> switching gears rapidly. Like second into it's fifth. Like turn left, Ross. Right. Yeah. Jesus. We're still heading in the same general direction. You Ooh. know what I'm saying? No. Just took a yeah, bit of no, we get it. To to well, we, we need the money, says Tony Khan. Right. It's not a good right. look, is it? And like it also and you see the Canada Corona. It doesn't look good the other way, because surely it makes him look like he's saying He's not backing his own decision. He's like, well, we know it was a bad idea to get Rick, but we're getting paid for it anyway. Look, he's paying us. Man. Yeah. I saw uh, Rick Flair get slapped by an MMA man and it looked like a Weatherspoons. It's on Twitter. Oh, <laughs> yeah, is it's, like, this he's, having, he's having a, it's a, like a worky, it's uh, a worky oh, work work. But this, man, this fella takes a right hook off Rick Flair and then just goes, Pah! and Flair drops like a sack of you-know-what. Wow. Yeah. Worth a look, Joel, if you can get it. I don't think we'll, we'll be fine showing it on the podcast. There's I a couple of... <laughs> <laughs> Ric Flair fight bar. Oh, God. <laughs> Go on, Twitter. Just our, our man, Joe, behind the camera there. Always on the ball. Says he blacked out while I was talking. Not <laughs> he first, blacked so. out. <laughs> Not wasn't paying attention. He Rick blacked Flair. out. I don't know who it was. The MMA man just tightened oh, me on the... I did see this. Yeah. His last Pokemon fame. <laughs> there he is there. Yeah. Check one down. Yeah, Michael, Michael Chandler. Chandler. What? what? He's quite Wait a minute. and current. Just skip to the end, because I think there'll be a couple of sweary boos in there. Oh, yeah, maybe me um, no. No, no, we'll, we'll, we'll just talk just over have, it. It's just, it's all about the action. Yeah, 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 yeah. Calm down, hey, man, calm you're down. You're an old guy. Yeah, oh, I, 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 love, you, yeah. I loved you in Twisted Sister. <laughs> oh, he's American. He's American. <laughs> oh, he's American. All right. <laughs> I, I loved you in um, Quiet Riot. <laughs> no, no. So this is in the Mile Castle in Newcastle. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Wait a minute. That's in the mile. Are you joking? I'm joking. Oh, yeah, I was <laughs> sorry. Right. Right. It looks like a million in there. <laughs> was it? <laughs> oh God! Thank you, Ross. That's not. That. That's not like <laughs> Flair's usual work. Punches. Doesn't he normally do quite short, like little? There's a fantastic. If you, if you can oh. skip it just before the impact, Jill, there is oh. like a good sound effect on the the right hook from Rick oh. Flair that we should oh, probably no. listen to. If you if you can't see this, just an audio feed. Imagine the punch you're throwing your sleep. <laughs> Listen. Give him a comedy song. <laughs> like Rocky. <laughs> Little birds going around. His head. <laughs> oh. Why is it like oh. it's filmed on like a Nokia 3310? Because of mm. course they had cameras, didn't they, Ross? You stupid prick. Oh, but no. You know what I mean? Not, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, it's, an, well, it's an upload of an upload of an upload. Everything looks like it's underwater now, so... <laughs> Oh, um, the Kenzie Mitchell released by WWE. Oh, the no. interviewer. The interviewer, that's her name. Uh, today I was released by WWE. She said, I met my husband, moved cross country from CT to FL for NXT uh, and met friends who that became like family. I've always said and firmly believe in when doors close, another opens. Didn't she literally just tell that lovely story as well about how she wasn't really a wrestling fan, but her husband was. And when she told him she was uh, getting interviewed by WWE for a job he was like oh my god like and, and now uh, she's been husband's Vic Joseph isn't it right well it's not her then it's not <laughs> her then, <laughs> I thought Vic Joseph was married to Joe Gacy the way he was going on at NXT. <laughs> we go. We'll get we'll get there. We'll get there. I can't wait for NXT this week. Oh, it's a shame though, because Mackenzie was like different to all the other interviewers because she really got invested. Yeah. She wasn't like unbiased in any way. She was actually quite a bad journalist when you think about it. But in terms of a wrestling interviewer, she was right in there all the time. You agree. She yeah. knew exactly what she was talking about. She knew who all the wrestlers were, which meant she was unqualified to be commentator. <laughs> Strange one to get released, because I don't see why. What does he why? No. Well, they're saying some more releases. They've been more um, uh, backstage. Again, we merge companies and you're like, wait, this person only does your job, but you're out. Maybe they'll get one of the UFC ones in. I hope it's Megan O'Levy. Sorry. <laughs> she's just really professional and good at, yeah. She's yeah. too unbiased to be a wrestling uh, interviewer, actually. Yeah. And also the, the last bit of news is Brian Danielson apparently uh, monitoring AEW's wrestlers' social media. What a busy people. body. Well, no, <laughs> I've seen a lot of people defending him. Saying, like, damn right, let's get this ship together. I'm yeah. like, what a nerd. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> He's the prefect. He is the Which is needed. No. It's all delinquents. He is the prefect. I'm the them. prefect. I can understand it from Tony Khan's perspective, because obviously you don't want you know people speaking out with turn and whatnot, but it, it, you do lose a little bit when the wrestlers just can't be, especially with AEW, because it's, it's obviously different world with WWE, but in AEW, they can still largely say what they want on social media, and lots of them do do that. Well, do do. Who's, who's speaking? Their mind on social media. Britt Baker. And, 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 it's right, in, in WWE. And, oh. That's what I'm saying. They don't, but AEW... Oh, I misheard put, what yeah. you said. Yeah, no, 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 no. That's what I'm saying. The two different words. So the fact that AEW's are becoming a bit more like WWE, it feels like you're losing some. Yeah. Yeah. No, but I agree not that a not, company should have people not necessarily going, it's great here, like every day. Like, I love here, Heaven's Gate. But at the same time, they should be not saying negative things all the yeah. time. Like, the Hardys... I'm uh, sure up this week. Oh, my God. We like, should be doing more stuff. a bad example. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, yeah. right. Yeah, so I'll start not including Matt Hardy or Soraya. I was going to say, Soraya, <laughs> they didn't say who it was. It'd been fine. But, but people quite quick to point out, hmm, someone's been a bit more quiet than usual <laughs> last few months. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It, it just ruins my image of Brian Danielson as this really chilled guy when he's actually the, the, the prefect, as you've said. I, he, he means well. I don't think I think Khan would have been like, how do I keep him happy? So we'll give all the responsibility to him so he can't leave. <laughs> I think he seems quite genuinely invested, doesn't he, in like yeah. helping AEW be good and everything. But he's got a lot on his plate at the minute with the injuries and although it was the injury at work. The Apparently eye the reported so, yeah. eye well, injury. No one knows. But we did do this. Not the overall orbital. Right, right, the, the report the was one, yeah. that like the match had to be stopped because Brian's uh, eyes were bleeding so much that apparently we'd been poked during the match. So it's like Right, okay. Against but Andrade. last time we had one of this was, oh my God, shocking footage is Brian Danielson gets his leg caught between oh, the yeah. ramp and the stage. And it's like, oh no, and he can't get out. And you watch on TV going, this one, yeah, this okay. This one wasn't as silly as that one. This one was quite convincing if it was a word. But it was after s some eye poke, you started bleeding from the eye. It's I like, oh no. Eye? That giant eye patch you're wearing that I poked. Did you not see the picture? <laughs> yeah. It's all red and swollen. Yeah, he's a good worker. He is a good worker. He's like Le Chiffre. 
from Casino oh, Royale. Too. I never got that bit of Casino Royale. It's like he's a master poker player, but he's got one tell. You can barely notice it, but his what's, eyes. What's starts, his tell? What's his tell? Starts crying. Let me write blood. this down so I can know about it. <laughs> he cries blood. <laughs> And Bond still nearly loses to yeah. Felix. Best, uh, best play in the Felix yeah, has to buy right. him back into the tournament. Oh, what a film, though. Yeah. yeah. I'm the best poker player. I've had a heart attack in the car. I think I'm all right. <laughs> Coming soon to NXT, you? then. That's what's happening now. Off the oh. back of that. If Dull Hudson starts doing that in the background with blood, I can see it happening. I'll or Chase you. Casino disloyal. Uh, this was disloyal. This is a heartbreak. This, this was a this was a, a great example of what I termed last week the Shawn Michaels bait and bait this week, <laughs> yeah. where he suggests something and then confirms it. Yeah. <laughs> like brilliant, nice one, Shawn. I love your time going on uh, Twitch and raiding him and just be like, oh hey Matthew, how you doing? I'm like, you broke. He let us all down. I'm watching this stream with tears in my eyes. I can barely make you out. And did you, are you involved with the completionist as well? Did he not? <laughs> Did he have anything to say, Andre, about the allegations? He was just there like, well, I'm going to be playing 2K23. All the allegations will be addressed on TV. <laughs> oh, yes. How's everyone doing? Um, what did you think got on TV this week? There's just other people going, you're a liar, you're a scumbag. Unbelievable. <laughs> oh, I love this game. Look at the graphics. Just talk about anything else. Very good. Do you want to talk about anything else? This podcast. Everybody get excited for the Cultaholic Hall of Fame. Ah, the prestigious Hall of Fame. I'm looking at what we've got in condescending order. Ah, in third place, streamers being proven instantly wrong about CM Punk going back to WWE at Survivor Series 16%. Right. I imagine the Arrested Development... No, not Arrested Development. Kirby Enthusiasm theme was used a lot in those <laughs> montages. Uh, the R-Truth Pop, second place, 33%. I thought that was a guaranteed win, but mm. look at me going head-to-head with... Adam and Andrew's Monday Night Raw appearance, 51%. Oh. No you know what he'd say way. if he was here right now? No way. How was, Ad- How was Adam snuck in there? He was on there as well, wasn't he? Aye, but it was all you about know. Andrew. Yeah. Well, hang, a, on. Yeah. A, yeah. Yeah, hang on, yeah. Hang on, hang on. Well, it's no. all right for Matthew. Like, I'll just change my titles oh, as well. Oh, <laughs> what's going on? The integrity of the... <laughs> No, a lot of people did point out, and the thing last week was like, Adam was there as well. I was like, oh, he was there. <laughs> but he, was, he wasn't. Oh, was it, was, oh, it, was, it was just the audio. Oh, whatever, I'm not going to win. 51% yeah, well done, Andrew. Yes, well done, Andrew. And brackets also. And Adam, yeah. <laughs> Even in the background, like we have the old graphics, it's the manager in the background smiling. He's yeah. smaller. But yeah, well done. What have you got for us this week, Ross? Joel, the footage, please. We obviously can't use the noise, but nothing to see here, the tweet reads. I was watching BBC News at 12 p.m. yesterday. So just imagine the BBC theme tune. Boop. Boop. Hit play, please, Joel. Boop. Boop. She is being caught. Now she put out a statement. If you're on the audio feed, if you're on Spotify. I don't know what her name is, but a newsreader on BBC News over here in the UK. Might be on the World Service, to be fair. I don't know if you get in America. She's being caught. Giving us the flipping the bird as, as the camera cuts to her after the, 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 the intro titles hit. She put out a statement saying that it was just a fun game between her and the production crew behind the camera. Apparently she was counting down from 10 to 1. And that was her counting number one there with flipping the bird. Oh, that makes sense. Her. I was going to say, how can you, when there's a countdown to when you go live, it's a bad, it's a hard, it's a hard mistake to make. But yeah. maybe she was on a delay. Maybe. I, mean, I, I feel bad for her. It's really good. It though. is funny. She shouldn't get fired. It was, it's just it, we've all been there. Yeah, on the news. Well, we've all flipped off our boss. <laughs> it's how it's how quickly she yeah, snaps yeah. into like presentment. I couldn't do. It. I go to pieces. There's one when the the weatherman's doing it, and he's like, "Ah, oh, it's gonna be a good day for you, isn't it, Steve? Whatever." Ho, ho, ho. And he's just going, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> "I expect the camera to go to him." Uh, oh. Good work. Good. Good. Very good. It's always good to see a newsreader do something like that. Yeah, yeah, Shades yeah. of Mark Austin, one of my favourite TV clips of all time. Go on. This is the ITV News at 10 with Mark Austin and Julie Etchingham. Good evening, paedophiles. <laughs> <laughs> That's my Twitch intro currently now as well. <laughs> <laughs> but I always start the streams at 9 o'clock. So they're <laughs> they're the chat go, hello. <laughs> oh, golly. Oh, it's a good pick. Oh... It's been a rubbish week in terms of finding joy in life because uh, <laughs> I've been very, very busy with moving properties. Ah, yes. So what it's just been the week where I've looked at it and going, this is just no fun, nah. And I'm Worth it to... in the end. Oh, no, no. It's got to be all grand. It's mm. just this week's been head down, ass up, but not in the nice That's way. That's the way we so, 
So it's just like, all right, so Matthew, think of something positive for the Hall of Fame. I'm like, I'll put you in the face. And I went, no, wait, that's not true. I've thought of something positive. I've had them in the background to make me feel better about myself and to learn some stuff. Uh, disaster Breakdown on YouTube. Get this. From Newcastle. Oh. Uh, I didn't realize because they're trying to be very polite with their voice. So it was only until someone said, like, point out, like, from this disaster happened in, in Newcastle upon Tyne, where I'm from. I'm like, <gasps> did the DiCaprio point, like, oh, yes. <laughs> That's how you felt about Botchamania because your voice was never on it. And then I learned you were from Newcastle. And then it was, and people were like, oh, Christ. <laughs> <laughs> and now, Enough. You're, now you're the host of a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we, cho we chose you to host our podcast. <laughs> Who's got a lovely voice? <laughs> oh, they're all busy. Well, You've got food. dulcet, as you say, the dulcet tone. Yes, thank you. What's the YouTube channel about? A disaster Breakdown covers uh, mostly plane accidents, uh, but does it very well with, um, what's the term there? This don't don't laugh. <laughs> this, was his, this is what he put on to make him feel happy. Yeah. <laughs> is it not? I find, I, I, I find him. Demonstrate the plane. Like, going look, down. Like, it shows the uh, dramatization of the plane going, oh, oh, and then, you know. <laughs> oh, a barrel of laughs. It's... <laughs> What? Mm, I don't thought this one through, really. How many people died in the most recent one you saw, Matthew? <laughs> oh, I, I could probably tell you, actually. Geez. But it's it's fascinating how uh, they go, well, we learned from this not to do this again. So plane, the changes were made to planes. That's so why plane safety gets like more and more safe every time. Uh, but it's the fact that they're from round here. Yeah. <laughs> I really thought this one through it all. Do you know where about Oh, you know the best bit was when the, the plane crashed and they all died. Do you know where about specifically it's from? No. Disaster breakdown. Wow, an online education and inf an informative series on air and other accidents as well. So not just planes. That's right. They Fine. did a train. Oh my word! Any automobiles in there? Uh, an automobile. <laughs> <laughs> automobile that did cause. Oh, that. fair play. And uh, 177,000 subscribers doing very well. But yeah. give give disaster breakdown. Give them a shout. No. Touchdown and uh, oh, like <laughs> was the sound effect needed? <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to do something to save this, like, because I'm trying to think, like, oh, is this one great time? I'm like, wait, they all end badly. Do you ever, <laughs> on a flight, do you ever, because I'm not usually, I'm not scared of flying, but it's not a pleasant experience. I don't enjoy it. But do you ever have a moment of clarity on a plane where you just remember that you're in the air and you're, like, in a in a box and you're like, oh, my God. It happened the first few times. Right. And I was, like, getting saved because the first time I'm like, you know. Oh, uh, I don't remember uh, my first, clench. I think I was like, too young to remember my first one. I, oh, I remember mine because, like, because it's so weird. There's so many weird noises that just sounds yeah. like if you heard it in your house, you're like, so much wrong there. Yeah. But because you're in a plane, it's all right. Um, but then once I heard Kevin Ash did that great thing when he was asked, like, how was it working with Vincent Manager in the steroid trial? And he went, you know, when you're in a plane, you know, even if there's turbulence and you're a bit worried, look at the stewardesses. Mm. They'd be doing this thousands of times. If they're okay, everything's okay. Vince was just, eh, we're going to be all right. So that's how we were okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess it works yeah. as an analogy. <laughs> So you know, um, times I looked and stupid. Yes, that's on note. So I also know that if anything does happen, it w won't last long. That's the way I want to go. Just a sudden impact explosion. No pain, yeah. no suffering. I'd you had like a Wikipedia it. article made yeah. about it. I'd like it like, to be more sudden than a forever. plane. I think the terror would be quite hard in the last few seconds. Uh, people would be out of your seat, wouldn't you? Flying around the cockpit, yeah. wouldn't you? Yeah. Yeah. Wee! <laughs> Two of these bloody wrestlers have had a wrestle near the door. And look at what's happened. <laughs> I love that story. That's such a stupid story. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But yeah, I realised like, hmm, Matthew, this says a lot about you. Look, it's been a hectic week, Ari. No, I get it, because sometimes the best sort of thing to stick on just to decompress is like a thing that, where you learn. So I've been watching a breakdown of the Watergate affair. Oh, wow. I'm only a few minutes, I fell asleep. But <laughs> but it is a good, it's, I can tell it's a well-made video. We start off in the country of America. <laughs> <laughs> like Patrick on the couch. Because I realised even though I know the, it's when it's something. It's when it's something you know, like the outline of. But yeah. I realize I don't actually know the full story of Watergate. So. I mean, it's insanely fascinating, right? Especially when it gets it keeps on going and going and no going. No spoilers. And... I think Nixon oh, might be the hero of the tale. <laughs> yeah, he has got the end. Yeah, yeah. Nixon looks really good. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah, that's a good one. What have you got for us? Is it Watergate? Don't know. <laughs> no, I need to watch it first. <clears throat> um, what have you learned about Watergate so far? Oh, I, I fell asleep really soon. He had a nice three D graphic of the buildings and the complex. Then he said a security guard found five men in suits wearing surgical gloves. That's right. And I thought, that sounds a bit dodgy. And then I woke up and it was time for work. <laughs> <laughs> but all right. Water gate, I'll have to wait then. Water wait. Um, hey. Oh, dear. What do I pick then? I'll pick Tom Campbell. Uh, Tom Campbell encouraging karaoke man. That's what I'll go for. Because at the Christmas party, the, the DJ was a nice guy, I'm sure. 
but he was a bully. Uh, he was a bully? <laughs> he wasn't a bully. Do you know what I mean, Joel? He was just making people sing, wasn't he? We all oh. turn up. We all turn up. What time did we leave Point Blank? I've got no idea. No, it was quite early. It was probably like <laughs> half six, seven. It's a bit of a blur because I used all my tokens really quickly because uh. I saw how, saw what time we were leaving. So... <laughs> It, well, we get to the, the after party bit of the night, after the shooting gallery thing, at like seven. Mm. It's not, people aren't like right, right up for it yet. We're all having a nice time. And we're all just sat down in this in this function, in the social club's like room for the party. And we're all just sat around on the tables, just like having a drink and having a chat. The DJ sticks the music on, it's all going well. Then he gets on the house mic and goes like, come on, time for karaoke. And we're all like, mm. And then he's like, come on, you cowards. <laughs> basically, <laughs> basically what he was saying. Um, come on, the louder you scream, the faster the run. And then he handed out two microphones into the us just all sat in the corner trying to have a nice time and put on Sweet Caroline and made us, like, oh. in, like in assembly in primary school, made us sing Sweet Caroline. Not us, it was just Dan and who? Aiden, I think. Dan and Aiden. But like he thought, I think he thought... <laughs> That would pass the mic round in that, but no one wanted yeah. any part of it. It was seven o'clock. Hey, Rory, sing sweet. And then yeah, and then later on, <laughs> in the, later on in the night, once it loosened up a bit, and then people were there was a lot of people who were keen for karaoke, but a lot of people who didn't want to do it on their own. Tom Campbell was always there as a duet partner, and I thought that was very nice of him. Oh. And he loves, and he's a showman. He loved it as well. Yeah. He loved it, but he was very nice. If anybody wanted to have a go, he was like, "I'll do it with you," and it, it gave them the nudge to go oh. on through. Uh, Tom he's was in he's the, the hardest working man, even at parties. He he <laughs> got he, he, at one stage. I think during I'm still standing, maybe he jumped off the stage. Um, <laughs> I think he nearly yeah. stuck the landing, but kind of hit one of his knees. And I went to help him up, but he styled it out and kept singing on one knee. I was like, he's he's oh he's good. And then next song, he tried to get on the stage again. The DJ was like, no, this is my stage because Tom was upstage in it. You know, Tom being born in this. This time period has made him this person. But like 60 or 70 years ago, you'd have had a purple heart easily. <laughs> <laughs> well, from an injury. Yeah, you can imagine him just like, <clears throat> go on, troops, go and take that. Oh, sir. All right, cool, let's go. Mm. I see what you mean. <laughs> he's singing the Dan Buses theme as he's going down to morale. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody hell. Um, but I thought, you know, the DJ was a good DJ ultimately. Just a bit aggressive towards the start, but he was nullified by the selfless ways of Tom Campbell. So I'm nominating Tom Campbell, selfless karaoke man. It was a it was a panic pick, but it's one I stand by. It's like Bon Jovi. That was a steel horse, all right. Tom Campbell. Uh, Campbell. Selfless karaoke man. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. No. Let's move on from that. <laughs> Somehow worse than what John Bon Jovi's voice sounds like in 2023. Oh. Bless his cotton socks. I love that you keep up with all these old bands still playing. Oh, that's another like... live performance from JBJ and the lads. <laughs> got, got Ricky back. And the in the... JBJ and the lads yeah. BJ. <laughs> He's got Ricky, what's his face, back in the full? Sam. Sam Badabada Boom. Uh, Samaritano, I think he's saying. <laughs> um, so, yeah, but no, he's, just, he's obviously just shot his voice that for that long. Yeah. Currently, he just can't do any more. It's, it's sad, but it's nice. That he, he sounds... Just, what's it sound like then? He, he just, sounds like he's really quiet. He's like, yeah. I can say a lot of stuff. Uh, That's actually better than what he And the sounds. key change for Living on the Prey now goes down instead of up. Ooh. We've got to hold on. <laughs> oh. Um, it's sad because Bon Jovi was an incredible vocalist. John mm. John Bon Jovi. Um, was Shawn Michaels based on him? Or just 80s rock star? Like, oh, so, many, so much hair melt around that period. It could have uh, been yeah, him true. or yeah. Motley Crue. Or... There's just a picture of John Bon Jovi in his youth lying on a bed with about a million women around him. <laughs> and they're all posing for the camera. It's not like a cat. No, no one's just snuck in the room and gone, oh, but it's for a, a photo shoot. But I, I just thought he looked really Shawn Michaels in it. Hmm. But I guess you're right. Everyone. You see the influence. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Brett Hart could learn a thing or two from JBJ. He was not Go into it. JBJ yeah. is he's been a married man for ages. Has he? But he never cheated on her once. Oh. He might have done, I just don't know that he had some. So I've just thought I'd throw it in there for comedic effect. Because obviously someone will know in the comments and they'll go, Well, Ross, <laughs> so you should read this, son. But JBJ hasn't like written an autobiography <laughs> confessing to all the times he did it, whilst also complaining about his wife nagging him. And in quite a casual, flippant tone. Sorry, Jules. <laughs> no, I can't help pull up the tree. I'm too busy from shagging the neighbour. Julie made me feel... Selfish bitch. I'm like Julie on tour, and she made me feel really bad about myself. So I slept with two Japanese women. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right. It was all her fault. JBJ would never. Why are we calling him JBJ? So I'll just refer him. John Bon Jovi, JBJ. <laughs> Yeah. Call him his real name, John Bread Jovi. I had a, like an Andy Hall of Fame pick in a bad way. Yeah, Andy? No, like a negative Hall of oh. Fame pick. Because, um, oh my God, it's like that bit in Green Street. Sonnen and Newcastle have been drawn together in the <laughs> FA Cup. And I don't know if either side's happy about it. Sunderland will probably get beat, so we're not There's only it. one loser in the match, isn't there? Sunderland AFC. No, it's us. No, it's Sunderland. It'll be Sunderland. We'll wear that bloody green kit that we can't see each other in because the grass is also green. We'll get, <laughs> bit, we'll get beat. <laughs> the, Sunderland aren't happy about it because we'll probably lose because Newcastle are a better side. It's Newcastle aren't happy about it because if there is an upset, it's awful for them. So no one yeah. wants this match. So why don't we just call it off? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something just go, look, just pretend you won, all right? I'm also staying cl- well. Cl- I'm not going to go to the match because there's not been a derby for about six years. There will be trouble probably at the match. It's yeah. going to be awful. You're right. There is one loser. Yeah. Anybody around the surrounding area. Yeah. Is, yeah. That's a good point. So that's my Andy, and Andy Hall, Hall of Fame. fame <laughs> yeah. Sunderland v Newcastle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've not missed the derby particularly. Me neither, no. 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 I mean... It's amazing that it happened. I, well, with I was the thinking one what? guy punching the police horse, but <laughs> it doesn't need to happen every single time, you know. I, I was like, what are the chances that we've been drawn together? But then I thought it had to happen one year. Yeah. Yeah. It's for a different time, but there's something going on with Newcastle's Cup draws at the minute. It's disgusting. Really? The Champions League group, the League Cup this season. We've got Man City, Man United, Chelsea, mm-hmm. Sunderland in the FA Cup. Someone's having our life. Well, the further you get in the League Cup, the more better teams you'll theoretically draw. Theoretically, but we've had them all the way through. City was the first game oh, we had, right. and then we're knocked out. United, Man United, mm-hmm. and then Chelsea. Now it's a well, disgrace. If, well, I mean, if they're playing them and beating them, well, you've got an easy team now, then Chelsea. <sighs> you say that. Mm. You say that. You say that. Mm. Wrestling Hall yeah. of Fame. Wrestling Hall Long of Fame. Long segment that one. It? it certainly was. Let's recap for the people who've already forgotten <laughs> about what forgot. we were talking oh, about. Yeah. Ross, what was yours? Uh, my BBC News reader caught swearing at start of broadcast. I'll well, that's winning. Yeah. So potential second places are also. Uh, disaster breakdown and Tom, the Geordies. And Tom Campbell, selfless karaoke man. Those are the picks. I'll I'll change it to selfless karaoke partner because he was being everybody's partner. Oh, that's nice. Hmm. Those picks are yours and yours alone at patreon.com forward slash called the Holic to vote for and have fun with. How? <laughs> well, we see all the comments people. <laughs> This is this week in the wrestling. It's this bloody week in the wrestling. Ha! Ah. Ah, this week in wrestling. Smackdown. No funny name. Bianca uh, Belair opens the show and says she wants her title back from EO Sky. Damage Katal interrupt, minus Bailey. And Dakota Kai says Belair will have to go through the whole group. Charlotte Flair and Shotzi arrive to help Belair, and the baby faces clear the ring. Backstage, Bailey complains about not being brought to ringside with the rest of the group. Dakota tells her that Kyrie is facing Bel Air later on tonight, and she could use Bailey's help. Bailey looks worried. <gasps> Call it the Ballad of Bailey, boys. Mm. Ah. Triple B. Yeah, the B.I. <laughs> oh, I don't know what happened. <laughs> uh, yeah, damage Control came out without Bailey, with Dakota speaking for the other lasses in the group, which again feeds into the narrative that she is the actual leader, and Bailey's a massive loser. Uh, Charlotte also made mention that she's not the only person coming for Eo's title, which struck the Fear of God in me. Oh, she'll get a title shot. Oh, it's terrifying. Uh, the let shots, you speak like a normal person for like the second, well, like a week and a half in a row. Forget about the first half mm-hmm. of last week's show. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously the commentators just saying, oh, well, you think she'd be out here when speaking about Bailey? It's all about Bailey. We're on the mm. move on a face turn, I reckon. I think that at first, this set off alarm signals in my head where I agreed with Ross and thought Dakota's pulling the strings. But later, I think you was pulling the strings. Oh no! Oh no! Now, I would think Dakota can't actually speak Japanese, so she's just like, "Yeah, they've said this about you," yeah, and they don't know what she's saying. She has a storied career over there in Japan. Did you know that Mariah May wrestled <laughs> in Japan? She mentions it every segment. <laughs> <laughs> there, Bailey backstage was like, "Where were you, lads? No one told me where you were." It's terrible. Mm. Really, hard. she's lost control. I'm intrigued. I'm liking it. I'm liking it. I'm liking where it's going. Yeah. Matthew seems to really care. No one's waiting for Jagger. <laughs> Oh, good. I just felt like me and Ross were taking turns good. Mm, yeah. Mm, yeah. I'm waiting. And we just got right of way. I'm letting him go first. I'm, I've flashed you several times yeah, yeah, yeah. in my life. I'm, like, I'm not sure what you're trying to tell us. <laughs> That's not legal. They shouldn't be doing that on the road. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I agree. Bailey is the glue keeping the women's division together until Rumble. And then, you know, the proper big feuds kick in. Bailey's so good. My mm. God, is she great. Oh, she was really good at looking sad this week. Mm. Aw. Hmm. 
She's good at the house show this at the weekend. Did you see yeah. the video with the Bailey's hot sign? Yeah. What did she do? She just took it and walked down the thing and then ah. ripped, ripped over at the end. Oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> nah. This, again, it was just like, yeah, everyone going, isn't Bailey great? Yeah, she is. Let's beat her up. <laughs> and then Bobby Lashley beats Booch in a singles match. Hmm. Later backstage, pretty deadly, interrupt an interview with Booch and mock him for not having any friends anymore. He attacks them, but they slam him into the side of a production crate, like you do in uh, 2K13. It was very cutscene, yeah. yes. Um, it, it made me it back. It made me uh, sort of hopeful for the future when it comes to Butch because I just had the visions of the hair being quaffed, Butch being a part of Pretty Deadly no. after weeks and weeks and weeks of breaking exactly down. Exactly what I've got right now. Oh, yes, it's gonna be great. And he comes frolicking down the aisle. Hello, I'm Butch. He'll say. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think. I think you could say to Pete Dunn, if you don't do this, you will lose your job. <laughs> and I don't think. I still don't mm. think you'd do it. I really don't. I think you would. Really? He'd be pretty butch. He's quite a serious bloke. Pretty butch? Yeah. Pretty butch. Young and friendly, we are pretty deadly. <laughs> like, done de dead, dead. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to, if it does happen, you know the skits of it. Yes, boys, say it, Pete. Yes, boys. <laughs> All right, fellas. <laughs> and it'll slap. smile, smile, uh, smile, Butch. I am smiling. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if he does, if they do do it, I, I, all the only way I can imagine doing it is if they like prance down the ramp and he's like in a big wig and that, but like just clomping down after them. Mm. Mm. He needs something right. to old Butch because in the match here where he was supposed to be the one who was like proving himself by going alone against Big Bob. Uh, Big Bob was the one who was just getting the loud reactions. The, the, just scrap the heel turn now of Bobby and his lads because it's impossible wherever they go. Yeah, technically heel, Bobby and Street Profits, it's not working no. at all. It yeah. was kind of maybe working before, but against other teams where it's like, oh, it's a storyline here, blah, blah, blah. But against Bobby, against what? Sorry, against Botch. It's very good. <laughs> it's been such a stressful week. Oh, I thought that against was, I thought that was Booch, deliberate. <laughs> yes, I'm deliberate. I'm really good at podcasting. Against Booch... <laughs> Uh, it just didn't work. Crowd were like, Bobby, Bobby. Yeah. Wow, the hated heel, Bobby. Remember when he attacked all Bobby, Bobby. So it was yeah, funny not Butch was doing all like the moonsaults off the, in the ring, out the ring, onto the floor. Yet Bobby just does one spine buster. Gets 10 times the reaction that Butch did all yep. match long. Yeah. Uh, there was a fantastic line from Tez on the outside when he was talking smack. He was like, he doesn't realize Black Friday is extended. <laughs> no, I've only just got the connotation. No, of that. no, Black Friday because because cool. <laughs> he was selling. I thought that was it. Uh, oh, ah, oh. oh. nah. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, it was a hell of a shame for a finish. But yeah, I hope that's where it's going with Pretty Deadly yeah. getting Butch in there, and maybe Ridge as well. I love this. Oh, I love stockings and suspenders. Me. <laughs> <laughs> And ruffles. <laughs> yeah. I love crisps. <laughs> oh, I love the ruffles of your blouse there, Elton. Uh, oh, I love the chest hair poking through. I'm Ridge. <laughs> <laughs> it writes itself, really, doesn't Cheer it? Cheer to the late great Rasby Nesbitt. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Heyman complains to Nick Aldis about Randy Orton being here tonight. Aldis tells Heyman he intends to sign Orton to SmackDown. He doesn't care if he has to offer up the entire bloodline to get him. He asks Heyman what he's going to do about that. Heyman replies anything it takes, and then starts taking off his clothes. That last bit wasn't true. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, I think this is a, an error from Nick Aldis in terms of, yeah, Orton will pop a rating for his brand early on, but the bloodline are the centerpiece of, of this Don't brand. Do anything will pop. Oh, oh. Uh, what will he pop, a wheelie? Mm. Yes, that's exactly what I was going for. Yeah, uh, The Bowles and Aldis. Nick Bald is going because <laughs> they are huge. Uh, he just saying he's gearing up for a match with Roman. He's like, I need to offer the bloodline to sign all this sort of stuff. He's like, what are you going to do about it, Paul? Who says that to Paul? Mm. Who has said that to Paul over the past two years? Hmm. No one. Nick. How about I get the entire roster to work for now for two years? Nick Bald. All right, yeah, we're talking. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, his interview, Santos Escobar says Rey Mysterio turned his back on the LWO by choosing Carlito over him. He says, Wild and Del Toro are blinded by their hero, but Ray will betray them too. Now he's going to put Wild on the shelf. S1 and Wild have their match, and Santos wins. He continues the attack after the bell, but Dragon Lee makes a save. He's just the substitute everywhere. Yes, yeah. he is. Mm. Um, I was shocked how much offense Joaquin got in because he's been a proper bum on the main roster up until now, when obviously Santos is getting a bit of a push up the roster as a heel. Joaquin got a lot of offense in there, but it was one of those Triple H match structures heel for a bit 
babyface for a bit more. One move to turn the tide. The finisher, it's the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> it's a good <laughs> formula. And we've said here before, like it's weird how they're trying to like force Dragon Lee in these these bits, like having him replace Carlito and stuff like that. You're like, eh, maybe you're not doing too much here because the crowd's not responding. Well, this loud crowd were going nuts over Dragon Lee when he showed up and kicked Santos. So well done. Do you think it was yeah. piped in or do you think it was real? It sounded real. Fair enough. You're the expert. We'll, we'll see, won't we? Mm. We see Logan Paul backstage shaking hands with Nick Baldus. <laughs> big the, balls. After break, Big Baldus and Adam Pierce bicker over which brand will sign Randy Orton. Yeah. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. Exciting stuff there. I'm glad that Pierce rocked up because, you know, I'm, I'm glad he got there in, in time as well because, you know, he would, I, I assume he didn't know Randy Orton was going to be tried to sign by SmackDown. So he had to try and do something. Is, is Pierce a face and Aldous is a heel is that what's going on I think so because Pierce has got the catchphrase of like oh I need a drink it's play it's an every man it's like yeah. Steve Austin yeah just like Steve Austin yeah bald <laughs> drinks yeah. Yeah. yeah he sticks to the rules at all times <laughs> <laughs> Logan Paul heads the ring and gloats about being US champ he announces a tournament to determine his next cha uh, his next challenger like Shang Tsung in Mortal <laughs> Kombat this was mint the entrants are Escobar mm. Dragon Lee Carrying Cross that kind of boo. I legitimately forgot was he even oh. with the company still. A mystery NXT superstar, oh, Lashley, Waller, <laughs> Fury, oh, and Kevin Owens. No, no. Who no. wasn't on? Who's been missing the past <laughs> two weeks? Oh, my God. Who's getting geared up for this tournament just out of nowhere? You got a dance in you now. Cameron Grant. No. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, you're thinking come? I'm thinking come, baby. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he, better, you, he, better, he better show up because if he doesn't, it's going to be come on your face. <laughs> if, it's, if, it's, if it's him. Then, oh my God. All better off. Yeah. Imagine the amount of Sasatha the Thath is just getting by with the, <laughs> the US title. Imagine. Dude, the, the, the fake crowd noise might explode. <laughs> I don't know where the match is going to take place, but it, I'm assuming like maybe the Rumble. But imagine at the Rumble, Logan Paul versus Von Wagner. The, oh. Imagine the gut come will have on him by then after all the Sasatha the Thath just from Mrs. Stone. It'll be. All those carbs every night. It'll be Kevin Owens, unfortunately. It will be, yeah. yeah. They've really I mean, telegraphed that with the yeah, angle yeah. that they did. Yes. <laughs> yes, then out of all these people, Kevin Owens interrupts and says he saw Logan on Vine. And even then, he could tell he was an unbearable jackass. Oh, yeah, yeah years yeah. ago I saw you on Vine. Yeah. Logan says he's fought the best... <laughs> he's fought the best boxer in the world and could knock Kevin out. He has? He didn't. Right. He went all the rounds with him, didn't he? Shut up. People yeah. have found a bit where it looks like Mayweather knocks him out by accident yes. and then holds him up on his shoulder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Owens says pro wrestling is his world but is interrupted by Waller and Theory. They suck up the Logan, so Owens punches Theory in the face. Theory Who's repeated everything Logan Paul said, but in different words. Yeah. They're really not helping him out at the moment. He also kind of repeated everything Waller said, but not as entertainingly. <laughs> yeah. It's, do you like three of the same thing? Yeah. One thing I've noticed is, is this the week where, out of those two, Waller's nudged himself ahead in WWE. Well, he's already ahead in most fans' eyes, but in WWE's eyes, because it was his theme music that played. He spoke first, and it was Theory who got punched. Mm. 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 And the fan apparently jumped over the guardrail to get to Waller. Yeah, that was on a house show. And then he yeah. jumped away to get, <laughs> jump back over to get away from Theory. Ah, <laughs> but I thought you stop. I thought it was an interesting promo from Logan Paul at the start because he was it was like a baby face promo. He's like, all oh, the haters hate, but hoping I fail. Oh, I didn't think that was a face promo. Haven't failed. That was a face promo. No. It That's sounded no, it sounded like one, but, but the from him, is, but from him, yeah. yeah, it's not because then he went and I quote, "Ya ga, ga ga ga." Ah, what was that? Yeah, what was that? Is that his catchphrase? I don't know. <laughs> he went out. He was the famous Logan here. Paul catchphrase. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, all right, mate. Yeah, ga, 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 ga. Ah, they wanted him to say yeet, but <laughs> a massive Jameson <laughs> comes out next week with a T-shirt. Yeah, ga, 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 ga. Ah, um, he made reference to the fact the US title's been on his junk like the rest of the wrestlers have since he's been there. I thought oh. that was. A that was a good bar. Wow. Was I didn't realize Logan Paul was that popular backstage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Sorry. Um, yeah. Um, and then he called Kevin Owens the Humpty Dumpty of WWE because he looks like an egg, which is a lot more than Austin Theory's given ever. Uh, so Logan Paul is now above Austin Theory yeah. in the Pantheon oh, as well. Oh, God, yeah, of course he is. Oh, yeah. Um, on commentary later on, he, he said that Waller and Theory were like his children and he's so proud of them. And then they went, would you say that Grayson's your favorite out of the two? And he went... I wouldn't say that. He's very handsome. <laughs> He's like, what, what's if, going if on? only he wrestled as good as he looks, is what he said. Oh, that's burying. <laughs> <laughs> that's his child. That's his child. That's his son. Oh, the handsome son. The handsome son. Yes. Yeah, but the match was. I mean, have we said the match yet? I was no, say, no, we'll help sorry, him. No. We'll help him. Theory Waller works over Kevin's hand, but gets caught up with a roll up four three. He's apparently out 
or injured because of this. He will make it to this week's SmackDown, which is when CM Punk is on SmackDown, which has led to speculation oh. that they hate each other. Well, they, they have argued in the past. They was, have that unresolved. Punk was mean to him back in the day. I'm not sure. I've, uh, I haven't bothered to check if they've done anything since then. Well, Owens is also like It was pals, 20 years ago, by the way. But Owens is pals with the Young Bucks. So he probably doesn't like Punk very oh, much. That's, mm. how, that's how that works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why bring up a SmackDown then? <laughs> well, Kev's going to go somewhere. Because we're all like, no, 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 we're not taking him. Well, Kev's, Kev's off this week. He's injured, Dan. Yeah. Mm. It's very it's good that that happened. He's injured. It's, a lucky, it's, just a, lucky, it's a lucky break. I bet mm. Aldis is breathing a sigh of relief. <laughs> but I, it, the story's all right to tell now because Owens could now get a plate put in his arm like Logan has in his oh, arm. Oh, that's And they can good, have like that. a sword fight. Oh, this is becoming... <laughs> not involving <laughs> Logan's junk, of course. This is becoming a bit too... Dragon Ball Z for my liking. <laughs> Superpowers and that. But I thought the match was, I've compared it to Shawn Michaels on the call at that WrestleMania. Was it 13? I wrote it down without really looking. I can't remember which. No, he's on the call for the main event. For Brett yeah. Austin. Oh. Uh, Sid, no, it's Brett that does the commentary for that, isn't it? Oh. Sid, no, the Sid one. The Sid main event where Michael's on commentary. Oh, that's um, 11, it's time. 10, 11, 12. It's Brett versus. 24. <laughs> <laughs> But that that's number one. A bit like this because uh, Logan Paul was very distracting on commentary with all the bars he had. Mm. Well, yeah. yeah. So he wouldn't shut up. I thought Logan sounded like when Adam Sandler accepted his Spirit of the Independence Awards for Uncut Gems. I don't know why I brought that up. Did Joel, did Joel laugh at that? Yeah, one? that's that's the only guy who's no. Nope, Joel didn't laugh at that. One. Adam Sandler showed up and just started doing this weird speech because he was like, "I hello, it's me, Adam Sandler, the comedy." No. <laughs> like, they started doing it like that and just yeah. It was he, just, that. Who's a funny? I've seen that tip. film. And Uncut Gems. Yeah. That's right, well done. Stressful. Yes. Um, I reckon that that was his chance to be cool. He's, he's reinvented himself mm. as a cool indie actor rather than Happy Gilmore. And then he does that and ruins it. Well, yeah, significantly more money made that way. But uh, <laughs> but you did say, like, yeah, now all the guys who were up for this category are now known as the guys who lost to Adam Sandler. <laughs> that is a good joke. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he was very, very good. Anyway, Damage Guitar helped Kyrie get ready for her match against Belair, but Bailey seems distant. Dakota asks if she's okay. But your phone me tells Bailey, stay in the back. She's, she's Rudolph this festive season. Can't join in any reindeer games. <laughs> no. Damage Guitar ends up getting ejected from ringside. So Bailey runs out to interfere instead with a shiny nose, and Belair still wins. <laughs> but it wasn't Bailey's fault, I don't believe. No. Kyrie milked it before hitting the elbow drop, and it let Bianca reverse that. And Bailey on the outside is like, damn it. But you can also tell she's like, I'm going to get the blame for this. And that's exactly yeah. the way the story should go. Yeah. Yeah, good stuff, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, a bit of Schadenfreude for the lads. I can't remember how was Kyrie because people noticed that she seemed a bit off the pace in the War Games match, and she's had the awkward interactions with Charlotte. I thought she was fine in this yeah, match. I, I didn't notice good. anything out of out of order, so to speak. Mm. Maybe it's just when her and Charlotte have. Yeah, Charlotte together. has negative. Riz. Know. Yeah, that was the word just, of the year. She's just too big and unstickly. I don't know. Well, <laughs> Kyrie's a bunch of pipe cleaners stuck together. But she does have good chemistry <laughs> with some people. Yeah, it's just that her and Kyrie can't. Yeah. Yeah. I, th- I actually like the bit where she gets up and she's just like, oh, and she <laughs> sells nothing. Just like, oh, no, it's mm. Charlotte. <laughs> but then Charlotte's like, no, get up and let me do a move. He's like, oh, okay, and ruins it. But It was yeah, shoot suplexes weird. then, though, from Bianca when she was screaming, get up at uh, Kyrie. Mm. Adama! Proper, you know what? If you're what, a why, did she yell, why did she yell Logan Paul's catchphrase? <laughs> if you're a suplex heavy wrestler, I don't know if Bianca counts as that, but if you do a lot of power moves, Kyrie must be a dream to wrestle. Must be like picking up air. Like, there yeah. we go. Have a bit of that. You can yet her. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Don't say the word. That's good, that's good. And then Alderson Pierce bring Orton to the ring to fight over his contract. Pierce offers Orton a world title shot if he signs with Raw. Aldis offers him the chance to get revenge on the bloodline. Paul Heyman interrupts and says Randy won't be making a decision tonight because the bloodline are here to make it for him. Jimmy Uso and Solo Sokoa attack, but LA Knight makes a save. He brawls the back with Solo while Orton hits Jimmy with an RKO in the ring. He signs his SmackDown, excuse me, he signs his SmackDown contract and tells Heyman to call Roman Reigns to let him know Daddy's back. Uh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry. That's the clip for this week. Alvin <laughs> 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 celebrates with Orton, gets hit with an RKO to close the show and send home everyone happy. 316. Yeah. It was very, it was like that. Is it Flair and Vince? When yeah. Austin's tried to decide between the two contracts and then oh, he yeah, stuns yeah. both of them. Yeah. I think that was the inspiration for this. Yeah. But the only thing bigger than Randy right now is Randy's pop. And LA Knight's pop. I need to stop comparing it to The Rock because he is now, that was the Stone Cold save bit that LA Knight was afforded. He's now Stone Cold Steve Austin, <laughs> no longer The Rock. Just um, comparing him to like the most popular wrestlers he's of He's an amalgamation time. of the pair, though. Oh. He's got the Kevorkra of The Rock, and now he's got the booking of Stone Cold <laughs> Steve Austin, minus the authority bit. Yeah, can yeah. you be a soul and a rock? Yes, you can. Yeah. 
stock. No, it doesn't matter. Uh, Paul He's Heyman. gravy. The Paul Heyman <laughs> Beef stock. He got married yesterday. Who? Wow. LA Knight. Oh. He wore a green suit. Hmm. <laughs> Thank you, man. Look? Joe, can you tell me an LA Knight wedding? Well, I'll tell you about the Paul Heyman pop. That's Is... now a thing. I don't know where they were. <laughs> She's no, like, no, no, no. The, the answer? Ellen Knight <laughs> wedding. It happened yesterday. He married a lady. There you go, the green. <laughs> married a lady. He married a lady. She met her. That's her there. Oh. Mrs. Rock. Oh, it is a jazzy. Oh, Jesus. wow. Jesus Christ, says Joe. <laughs> <You can't. laughs> like Mr. Slave or something. Yeah. I opened the premiere by accident. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to do that impression, but I don't want to hear it. <laughs> I, I do. I, I'm you already sure I, did it when we asked the Randy Orton thing. I'm sure I call someone a silly goose later on in the notes as well. <laughs> but there he is in his suit getting married. Oh, She's dressed like suit. the Grinch this festive season. It's a wonderful wedding attire. Is that lizard skin or something? Or <laughs> <what>? <laughs> He's killed Randy Orton. He was oh. Oh. Yeah, he used his skin to form a dress for his good lady. Yeah. Like, Why did he kill my, my uncle? Take, I needed some up for the wedding. <laughs> Uh, I thought the, the ending segment was fine. It sent everyone home happy. Mick, Nick Ald, like, oh, Mick Aldis, Nick Aldis milked it for what it was worth on social media, saying, "Oh, it does come out of nowhere." <laughs> oh, he should be furious. He should fire him. Mm, he got bare numbers, so he did. Mm. But I think SmackDown's really lacking at the minute. I was bored watching this week's SmackDown. Is it the lack of Roman Reigns? Potentially. Mm. Just, just feel, doesn't. There's no. The Orton bit was a bit exciting at the end with the RKOs and whatnot, but uh. well, don't you worry because this week. The straight edge superstar's back. Yeah. Oh, he's going to bat everybody. He's going to end up on Roll. 100%. Some of it might be in the ring. The dose of Patterson. <laughs> now, Pungle. He'll, Pepsi. Pungle will be on Raw, surely. <laughs> Maybe a Raw That's superstar. That's an end of The lethal dose of Pepsi. <laughs> how much Pepsi would that have to be? <laughs> There's something dose. out there about that, isn't it? How many cans of Pepsi you need to drink to poison yourself? I'm sure I read that the other day. Pepsi Max, especially. <laughs> Jill's is. Uh, how <laughs> many cans of Pepsi? Jill's like, Jill, on. work, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and Joel is actually typing this up. <laughs> How many cans of Pepsi? Poison. Till you poison. That'll do you. <laughs> All right, cool. I'm on I'm images sure it's still. Massive. So. Two or three. That was soda? it. it was, it's obviously more than two or three cans a day. It's going to be like 150 or something. I can't remember what it was now, but it is a, a big amount of Pepsi Max kills you. Imagine if it was like six like a horribly like quite a like oh no that's like the myth about bananas isn't it and potassium mm -hmm. i had two bananas Nine. one time on one day and a mate at work said oh watch out pal you want to hurt yourself basically superman now that amount of potassium. nine two liter bottles of coke in one sitting well yeah nine two liter bottles that's a lot that's yeah. coca that's a full fat you know what to as well the death inducing 10.5 cups of sugar well you say it like that like, i don't well, think you could physically drink that without being sick that much yeah Four, oh, bananas. Got to eat 408 bananas before you reach a dangerous dose of potassium. Oh, it's this close. We're learning stuff on the podcast wow. today. 129 teaspoons of pepper will kill you as well. You couldn't do one? <laughs> God, a teaspoon that, of pepper? That was on the punishment list for the L pay-per-view stuff back in the day. Oh, yeah. Wow. Mm. Two pepper. teaspoons of nutmeg can cause you to die. Two teaspoons? That's bollocks. Where are you getting that nutmeg from? <laughs> Columbia. The guy off the corner. <laughs> Does it mean... <laughs> Does it mean if you're playing five aside and you get nutmeg twice? And you're like, no, oh, your soul leaves your body. Just, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Lock in your bedroom and pretend you're dead. <laughs> AW Collision. Brody King beat oh, Cornel. What's happened now? I opened Photoshop by accident. <laughs> <laughs> I keep opening things. Are you I'm okay? Sorry. <laughs> He can't tell us to assemble. It's can finally you? Out. Joel. How long have you been the the producer of the podcast? Now has it been a year? Uh, maybe. Yeah, just over a year. He's cracking. It's been a year. Heard, <laughs> he's had enough. I don't know if anyone heard, but when Joel accidentally opened Photoshop, he went, "God damn it!" <laughs> <laughs> I'm fed up with this world. He's like Eddie Guerrero at SummerSlam 05. <laughs> yeah, Brody B. Claudio in the Continental Classic. Oh, it was good. They oh. battered each other at the start, and then they battered each other in the middle, and then they battered each other at the end. I'm glad Brody won. <laughs> Yeah, Brody, likewise. As I think Ross predicted or hoped before the tournament. I hoped, yeah. <laughs> Brody's getting a bit of a little push. He's good, isn't he? He's yeah. different. He slaps. It's fantastic. He sold his arse off as well for Claudio. There was that uppercut where he somehow yetted himself up in the air very, very high. I don't know how a man of that size went that high. It was like the... I don't know why. It's like when Bubba Ray Dudley took that choke slam off 911. Am I right, Mafia? I've written well down done, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. Um, and I was a big fan of the finish because the pile driver just doesn't work. So, yeah, yeah. get down, you little lariat. Yes. yes. 
That's exactly might, what might I might be my favourite match of the tournament so far. Mm. Oh. I'd say so. There was bits I didn't like when the they were kicking out at one because that's a spot I think is just done to death and is meaning nothing anymore. But I did like the fact that yeah, they were beating each other up, and I liked the fact that Brody is getting some momentum in the yeah. CC yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, which is what it's there for, right? Mm-hmm. You'd hope. You'd hope. You'd hope. John Moxie cuts a promo about being broken down physically and mentally. Ah, oh, hear you, John. But he says he'll deal with it the only way he knows how. YouTube videos about planes. <laughs> <laughs> Hundreds of people dying and one fell swoop you. That could have been me. <laughs> uh, by fighting through. He's going to win the CC because somebody needs to step up and show what AEW is all about. Also call himself. What is AEW all about? Oh, many things. We've lost it. We've lost oh, the meaning. Overbooking. <laughs> he also called himself the ace of the world. But I didn't write that in the notes because he said it later on on Dynamite and I realized it's it's a new thing he's pushing. So the ace of the world. We're booking forbidden door early, aren't we? Yeah, mm. Yes. Um, but yeah, it was a very real promo. I was a big fan of it. Just saying he takes lots of medication because of how knackered he is and his back and his legs and his elbow and his ass. And he's in All toes. tired, yeah. Mm. Good promo. He's very good at these. Even when Moxie's one of those wrestlers, but even when he's not done anything for a while and you feel like he's lost momentum, it just takes one promo and you're fully invested in him mm. again. It's great. Just sounds like you're da. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to go for a walk this way? No. <laughs> Abaddon beats Hollywood. Kira Hogan, dude. Oh, sorry, I, was, I think I was tired when I wrote the collision. Note. You can't ignore. You can't have the surname Hogan in wrestling and have no one point out. Like, but after the match, the lights go down and Julia Hart confronts Abaddon in the ring. The lights go down again and Julia disappears. We're still doing that. Ooh. Spooky bollocks versus spooky bollocks. Mm. It was good. This is the most I've seen, like the best I've seen Abaddon move around the wrestling ring. Because obviously it's more gimmick than moves. This time it was more moves than gimmick. Because hmm. an Abaddon is not just for Christmas. But when it comes to the actual match, I hope it's all gimmick, no moves. <laughs> it's going to be like a, I was about to say a pitch black match. I hope it's not like a, one of, or what was it called, lights out. I thought Vin Diesel was going to be in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He should be the special referee. Yes. I've got to say something about production of AEW because there was a couple of times I missed big stuff this week. Like the reveal for Julia here, just after the lights go off, the camera shot and the big chair, she wasn't on screen yeah. and it moved over. It's just those big, like the Tony Storm thing that messed up again this week, these big moments. Wait, if I was, well, we'll get to it, but if I was Kip Sabian, I'd have left this week. Like, you don't care about me. I'm off. Yep. Yeah. What happened, like? It's not, it's a minor thing, but it was very, I'll, I'll say it when yeah, we we'll get, get to it. Way. Backstage, Roddy Strong and the Kingdom try to convince Mojo that MGF is the devil. Strong says that Joe is essentially his best friend by proxy due to Adam Cole being a fan of his. <laughs> my, my best mate who hates me is a fan of yours, so you're also now my best friend. <laughs> it's really funny heel logic. I do, I do like it. Yeah. Strong warms, warns, not warms, ah, you're a bit cold there, warns Joe that the devil and the henchman will beat him down on Wednesday. Joe laughs, ha-ha, and walks off. <laughs> Doesn't care. Yeah. But Roddy reiterates this. Like It felt like about five times this week. It wasn't that many, but... I think it was twice on Collision and once again on Dynamite, maybe. Mm. They're really hammering it home that MJF's the devil, and he won't be. Cole wasn't there again, though, was he? Mm. Mm. He I'm starting to jungle boy. I'm starting to think that you were right and I was wrong. Ugh. Because <laughs> it pains me to say that. Because I think it's been Jungle Jack. But now I'm starting to think it might be, it might be Cole. The other leading contender, we'll, I guess we'll talk about more on Dynamite. The bro- Hangman's name was getting mentioned a lot this week. And the beer mm. bottle. What does been, the beer bottle mean? I think he's been too busy to be the devil. Yeah. Him. yeah, yeah. He has also been missed. Battered. Mm. I got, he got hung. S- pure sliced open, eh? Maybe he's actually dead. And this is him from hell. <laughs> ah. <laughs> oh, <What>? God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Vexed. <laughs> I know we're better. Uh, Andrade beats Daniel Garcia in the CC. They shake hands afterwards. Another loss for Daniel. Mm-hmm. It's not really. It, it's, oh, it was. They were near his hometown this week, I think. It was from Buffalo, I think. Yeah. Mm. So that he was getting a good reaction anyway, but the reactions elsewhere aren't exactly quiet for him. So it's not hampering him too much because wins and like well, they don't do the win loss record anymore, do they? In you AW. S- you so. see where Buffalo is? It's no. it right, up, right up near the. It's in New York State, right up near the Canadian border. I was just thought Buffalo would be like the prairies, the rolling. Right, right, I'm right. like, oh, it's called literally called Buffalo. <laughs> Just thought I was crazy, in crazy little quirk of American geography there. But it was a very good match. They both laid it in, and it was a hell of a dudder to for the finish. Yes, it was lots of wrestling. I like the handshake because no, sorry, I don't know if I, I was conflicted about the handshake because it was nice to see Garcia get his flowers from Andrade. But does it fit Andrade's character? It depends. What is Andrade's character right now? What is happening? A man who didn't want to be in the tournament, but. CJ Perry whispered something to him. I hope we don't forget that, by the way. What did she... 
Offer yeah. him. I, I, he's really good at setting up storylines. Not that too good at ending them. Yeah. The Miro one's bad at the moment. Yeah. But we've got to let it play out. Uh, well, let's be fair. Uh, I don't know if it'll ever... Because We'll get on to the segment a bit later because it's coming up. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's as clear as mud. When the, well, when they recite poetry at each other. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Backstage, Willie Mack. Hey, oh, says yes. he's unhappy with Wardlow being up his friend AR Fox. He challenges Wardlow to a match. You better pack your lunch because I'm a big boy and I'm a big meal to try and eat. Is a great closing line. Better pack your lunch because I'm a big boy. <laughs> they say being a babyface is hard in wrestling. It's harder, to, harder to get someone to cheer you than hate yeah, you. Yeah. But Willie Mack's just incredibly likable. Mm. I want to cheer him. He's a big boy yeah. and yeah. he's going to get destroyed. Yeah, yes, Wardlow also want, might be the devil as well. I'm sticking oh. to me guns after last week. After yeah, <laughs> yeah, mess, yeah, that messy hair. Yeah. <laughs> I think you're right that he might be um, one of the devil's henchmen. Yeah. yeah. I think that was From really... the henchmen, men. I think it was really clear who was playing them on Dynamite this week. Not necessarily who they'll be, but who was playing them. And I right. think big, big KOR was one of them. Oh! Big Kyle O'Reilly. He, he was moving like... A, he's got a little hunch, hasn't he, Kyle, when he's moving. Was he air guitar it? <laughs> <laughs> he <laughs> whacked up the NXT tag track. team title. Did that, yeah. But now he's got a little hunch, hasn't he? One of them was like a little spider. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to think. You know what I mean, though, when he's wrestling? Uh, he learned, like that, hasn't he? Le- yeah. Learned that from Von Wagner in the forest. <laughs> That's why he's got the hunch yeah. carrying all those logs on the back of his neck. Oh, of course. Mm. Mm. The Kingdom are about to take on the Iron Savages, but Ray Strong cuts off their entrance music and reiterates his warning to Samoa Joe. Uh, the Iron Savages just need to stop trying to make eating ass happen. Yeah. Like, blah, blah, fetch. Because uh, what they do, they're very entertaining. But then, when they, after every move or every movement, they go, blah, 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 blah. I'm just going, stop it, lads. Oh. You can do that when the crowd's popping. When the yeah. crowd's not popping, it's just a bit sad. So it was a good little match. They did do a couple of good little. They are really likable, I find, until they eat the ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've thought about many people. <laughs> <laughs> do you get it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, was this the collision where the crowd was really bad? Or is that coming up? You know, I see all the reports like, this was really badly attended. It was like noticeably bad. Oh, well, if it's one out in Canada, it'll be that one. Maybe, yeah. Canada this Saturday because Kenny, well, that's what it I mean, was yeah, taped, wasn't it? Because yeah. ah, Kenny right. and uh, Ethan Page, innit? I see. Mm. But yeah, it was a nice finish with a spout pile drive. Spike pile driver. I like the stout pile driver. That's good. Stout pile driver. Yeah, yeah. Nice old, pale ale. Two old 50 year old men. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, it looked like there was a bit of a concern for the, the ass eater who took the move. I forgot his name. It's either Boulder or the other fella. It's either ass or eat. Was ass there more eat. before the... Because you turned the page, but then we started talking about the match, but I don't know if there was more. Yeah, there. but I mean, who cares? Uh, Strong <laughs> no, gives I'm... Kingdom's inevitable victory to his best friend, Adam Cole. <laughs> yeah. They do end up winning, hey, and Strong gets a cheap shot in after the bell. He oh. accidentally breaks his wheelchair while running away. There, it was worth it. Yeah, there he, there he fell go. over the wheelchair. It was good. <laughs> um, I thought this was going to be the segment where he bravely stood up from the wheelchair, but that's, that's not it. Uh, this was the what pit with where they, they took on the human centipede. So <laughs> Ethan Page is interviewed. Hey, remember him? And says that since losing the MGF in Canada, he's worked hard and got in the best shape of his life. He wants to be the king of Canada, but right now that title belongs to someone else. So he's challenging Kenny Omega, who is also Canadian. Mm, I swear yeah. we had this exact same promo when he wrestled MGF in Canada last time. Well, now he's now, now he's, he's in the even better best. He's shape in the best of shape life. of his life. Mm-hmm. And I think if it gets given time, maybe it'll. Do good things for Ethan Page. He's never going to win. Can you remember anything he's done since that match of MGF in Canada? You can't because he has done nothing. His last singles match was in June, and it was that match against MGF. Wow, wow. On okay. AEW, he has been doing stuff in Ring of Honor. I think he said, didn't he? Rather than his wins and whatnot, but it is weird how he hasn't been used at all across AEW's sort of shows weekly. He seems like someone who can be who's game for any storyline and is very versatile. Like he can talk, he can wrestle, he can sing. Is and he the they... new Q- QT Marshall? No, no, you know, how dare you? He's way more charming and looks a bit like our friend Sam. He does a bit. Oh, he? Ethan Page. Yeah. Like cutie Marshall. No, yeah. Sam. <laughs> I mean... No, Sam's Ethan a blow-up. <coughs> <coughs> the House of Black beat Chris McDaniels and Matt Seidel in a tag match. They used to be Ring of Honor, the proper Ring of Honor, not the crap one. Oh. Who? What? Daniels and Seidel? Yeah. Did they? Yeah. Apparently there was a 12th match as a tag team across AEW and Ring of Honor. Ooh. Which the commentators know it up bad, didn't know. Because I was I was initially going like, why are these two lads together without knowing the history? The twelfth one. Yeah, the twelfth match together. No, it's not. Yeah, I don't, don't believe it. What the commentator said. <laughs> don't shoot the messenger. I I'm thought it was actually you. a really good match though. Like Side Al and Matthews especially stood out to me. I just wish I cared more and I wish it was more geared towards like FTR having no pals and the House mm. of Black try to take mm. them down because they've got no pals. It was just sort of like shoehorned on at the end, wasn't mm. it? The actual yeah. story. Right. 
They were, um, the, the company was going, well, we're going to have to talk about so let's make up something. Ooh, Daniel's just to be a, a silly, spooky person as well. Ooh. <laughs> well, he, they've lost. He was going to be the bloody higher power. Everyone Allegedly. Says, yeah. This doesn't make any sense whatsoever. But He was there. He was backstage. Yeah. That's on, all on you want to know? On a per night deal. <laughs> living out his bag. Malachi cuts promo afterwards talking about how his group had has had FDR's back recently. FDR are about to reply, but it's all a trick. The House of Black ambushed Dax and Cash and beat them down. Malachi gloats about nobody coming to save them. And then Dax goes, because I've got this. And Cash, but no, stop it. It's just a pet peeve of mine. Good. Uh, a pet peeve of mine, but I don't like the FTR did the lights out gimmick here. Because that's that's a mystical power yeah, for Julia. Right. That's not just FTR going, hey, little buddy, you can hit the lights, which then do it for my daughter. It's interesting <laughs> that you say that. That's I a thought, beautiful impression, by the way. I thought the House of Black had triggered the lights out, but then FTR interrupted that with their theme oh. music. Don't know, though. Don't know. Maybe they did. I don't know. It was it was a weird segment, I thought. I thought Dash and Cash, yeah. Dax and Cash looked a bit like mugs. Mm. Like, there's the mic. I've put it on the floor. You better bend down and pick it up. And then, yeah. bang. But it feels like we're setting up to an angle where like somebody comes back and actually saves them. So I'm wondering who that'll be. Oh, if that yeah. Because Punk's gone. Yeah. yeah who are they going to rip off now? Oh, Maybe it's Brett. Uh, oh, yes. Actual <laughs> Brett. <laughs> Wrestling again. Who's Why gonna... not? Flair's there. Should we all... Oh. <laughs> who could it possibly be? I don't know. Wardlow was loosely affiliated one time, but he's busy. Mm. That's right. Yeah. I, I don't know. They've got no friends. Ha <laughs> ha. Mark Briscoe. Oh, yeah. Mm. Might be my pick. Yeah. Because they they ended up respecting each other, didn't they, the Briscoes? They did, yeah. Yeah. At the end of that feud. Okay. Hmm. Well, we talked to Luther. I said that like I thought it was real, by the way. They did end up respecting each other. <laughs> <laughs> Tony Storm is interviewed backstage and talks about how Sky Blue interrupted her championship acceptance speech. She advises Sky to walk backwards because the only time people pay attention to her is when they're taking pictures of her bottom. What? You what? can't say that. <laughs> the Sky Blue's ass was like an unsaid thing that no one actually says out loud. We all know it's there. You can't talk. <laughs> God, what have I done? Well, we're a bunch of wrestling analysis. An as you can tell, thing. Ross, yes. So let's, let's uh, analyze. Okay. Yeah, let's turn it to worst W. <laughs> no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm, oh, I'm a huge fan oh, of no. them, but I, so I don't want to. No, 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 no. I was watching. The, oh, was I watching? Was it the Rumble 01 one the other day? And the one about the, the ninja angle with Raven? Yeah. Just touched upon. And they're just like, you can clearly tear it a lady. Just a garage, just voluptuous garage. <laughs> 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 Going into real detail about like uh, it's clearly a lid. Look at that! Look at that! Look at that ass! Oh. <laughs> squeezy, squeezy. Uh, but yeah, it looks like there's heat with Mariah May already. I assume because I'm a hack. She's on about uh, some blonde foozy being worked on the makeup chair, which I assume. Oh, that'll be her. Yeah. I didn't know who she meant. Ah, jump, jump to conclusions. No, I was gonna say who right. else could it be? Um, <laughs> I thought she Renee. Meant, I, I thought she meant. <laughs> I thought she was having to go. The inter- was it Renee interviewing her? Yeah. I thought she was having to go. Renee. Yeah, it might be uh. Renee. Anyway, Sky Blue has a response. Sky cuts a promo of her own and accuses Tony of having a midlife crisis. Nothing will stop her from taking Storm's title. She also says she's going to have her titties out. I'm oh, no, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I have. It was a bad mistake. To, I don't know why. I, would, I tried to make it more jovial. She, bring, she brings up Tony Storm's catchphrase, yes. I've just made a huge mistake. <laughs> yeah. Um, but she did that at the same time. Hoo-ha! Yes. Yeah. So. Well, she moved her hair away, I guess. <laughs> Does it, I guess it just means like chin up, chest. That's Tony's equivalent of saying that, isn't yeah, it? Like, standing stand proud, tall. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Stand. And Sky said, and I'd like to remember the claim she made there: nothing is going to stop her from taking Tony's title. You should never face promise something. <laughs> yeah, and she said in that same type of delivery as well. Like, is she supposed to be like tired, bored? Yeah, bored. Yes. No, no. I, I just think I'm she's... a bit evil now, so I can't be asked. No, I, I, I think that's just her. <laughs> I think she, that's what, yeah. Because before she was spooky, she still kind of struggled to be over the top, which wrestlers kind of mm. all have to be, you know. But maybe she'll get there. She's still really young. Mm. Yeah. Good point. Maybe they gave her the spooky thing so that oh, it didn't, good, yeah. so that it fit more with her laid back. Work into your strengths. Mm. Like Dull Hudson poker man. Yes. I can't believe it. We don't have to, we don't show emotion. That's good. That. How was he so bombastic? And we just, and they never realized. Uh, drugs. Uh, <laughs> El Hijo del Vikingo beats Kip Sabian in a singles match. He offers him a handshake after the match, but Kip walks away probably right. after seeing the production. Go on, Jack. So, two well, two things. Commentary go, as he's making his entrance here, we've got a pre-recorded message from Kip Sabian. Let's uh, see what he has to say. And it's literally, 
I think Vikingo is the most overrated man in AW. And that's it. He gets a second. And then at the end, Vikingo goes for the handshake. And as Kip's turn into walk away, quite an important character beat just cuts to the next thing. They don't even linger on him at all. Yeah. They don't care about him. But he's got a new catchphrase, though. He's got a hot take. Yeah. And that was his hot no. take about Vic- oh, Vikingo there. Did you watch in NXT? It was you? shades of Nathan it's Fraser. Hard was, hitting was, you, know what, you know what's good in NXT? Those Nathan Fraser bits where he talks. <laughs> This week, I quite like Nathan Fraser. Anyway, damn it. We'll actually, get yeah, he was actually good this week. God so. damn it. <laughs> but at least Kip's like, got super bad in his name again. He's Woo! not like the whimsical you know, witch doctor from 1912. Mm-hmm. Um, it was ni- I thought it was a nice clash of styles until it wasn't because then Kip started doing springboard moonsaults into the scorpion death drop on the floor. Uh, he's like, and then the camera goes to him. He goes, they wanted to dive, so I gave them one. That's a bit Tony Storm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure what he's meant to be. Yeah, um, he's, he's like a compass in a magnet factory right now. <laughs> in all directions yeah. at once. Vikingo was obviously amazing in the match because he always is. Um, and a shoot 6.30 for the win because he landed right on poor Kip's ribs. Mm. Hasn't gotten any more. He can probably suck his own winky. Oh, the Marilyn Manson. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. That everyone found out about. Honestly, at school, that's... I feel like everyone brought that up all the time. Everyone, two things that people knew at school in our generation. How to do that cool looking at S. And Marlon Manson had one of his ribs removed. Yeah. <laughs> and there was a last at Leeds Festival who fell into one of the toilets. Who go? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, you got one of them as well? I didn't realize that was a thing. Well, I thought everyone just told the same story about Leeds everyone Festival. Everyone knew that one. Or, well, we didn't have one. We just, <laughs> someone, a friend of a friend had been to Leeds one year and heard about Pugo. I assume in the South, <laughs> the, the equivalent happens at Reading. I don't know. Yeah. Imagine falling into oh, no. Apparently she dropped her phone and was trying to fish it back out. You've <laughs> got to just abandon the phone at that stage. <laughs> I don't know if it's real. There's after breakdown cover in that. Mm. <laughs> at least no There's one dies in it, Matthew. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Just wish they were dead. Shane Taylor interrupts a backstage interview with Keith Lee because what else has he been doing for like a year and offers him a handshake after the match but Kip walks away. What? what? Uh, well, well, well. And challenges him to a match at Final Battle. Keith accepts. I somehow managed to read the line of book. Oh, <laughs> buffering. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> Surely Shane can't be him who Keith was on about last week. Oh, yes. The big reveal can't be Shane Taylor. Yeah. So that's what people call. Oh, uh, him. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what's his face? Um, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Keith was doing a bit of a there's Shinsuke. a new challenger on the horizon. Yeah. And it, yeah, it's his old It can't rival. be Shane, because he was in a feud with Shane anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and that's he, was thing, calling, yeah. he was calling out him, mm. and now him appears to be Shane. And it, or maybe it's Kip Sabian, like I accidentally read. And <laughs> Shane challenged him as well. This isn't even, this doesn't make sense. Same him, dub, man. Like, him is still at large. Yeah. yeah. Who is him? Swerve. The band, him. I assume. Oh, Lovers and Funeral of Hearts. Yes. I thought. Who played at Leeds when that last fell in the booth. <laughs> I thought of Swerve, just because... And Swerve would win, obviously. But just to... Because the, the feud never got ended. Like, yeah. it, when they broke up, they just stopped. They just stopped. They just stopped. Them. They'd have to wait until the tournament's over, wouldn't they, surely? Oh, yeah. Mm. Maybe this is to fill time. Yeah. I hope they haven't forgot about him. Mm. Mm. Him can't be Shane. I haven't heard him in ages. Are they still going? That was on my Spotify rap this year. Was it? was it? the Funeral of Hearts, yeah? That was back in the... Cur- we used to put Kerrang on the telly yes. like when you were like, 12. Go to sleep to it. The man would come in and turn it off. Yep. I only knew that one oh. song. <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> I know the one. I don't know what it's called. Yeah. Yeah. I know what it's called. I know that it's... I don't know. I just can't bring, think bring. any of the names. This is your phone going off. Let us know your favourite hymn song. <laughs> <laughs> or your favourite hymn. Your favourite hymn, yes. <laughs> Onward, Christian Soldier. All things oh. bright and beautiful. Ooh. Ooh. Keep me travelling along with you. Oh. Yeah. I don't know okay. if it's a hymn, but we used to sing this one in assembly at school. It was like a pretty, pretty kumba, a pretty, pretty kumba, a musa, musa, musa. Ah, okay, laugh that one. No, 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 I don't know. That sounds great. Ah, okay, marawam, maraway. We had um. <laughs> oh, wait, where was no, your wait, school? Wait. In Morpeth, right? <laughs> and the music teacher would took her her, <laughs> her sagging breasts oh. into her skirt. It was a, <laughs> what? That's how she would rock around the school. Hang on now. <laughs> It was a big topic of discussion in year five. Wait. A whole new world was seen by how, us nine-year-olds. How so imagine your, your, long, your long flowing skirt, she would put it literally like above the nipel line. What? And tuck her, you know what's in there. That is... That's... Well, in front of people. Like, which one do you that's how she'd walk like... around. That's how oh, she'd okay, dressed. Okay. I guess she didn't, didn't want to wear a Miss, bra. Miss, can I ask you a question? Two seconds. Wow. <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah. Um, we had a... You've brought this weird memory now. I'm trying to think of the song that the 
the, the Catholic RE person would sing and go, oh, let's see if I can get this right. Zimbambu, Lebanamanabu, there's freedom in Jesus Christ. Logan Paul. <laughs> <laughs> He's catchphrase, he's everybody. He's familiar Jesus, because whenever I see him on TV, I go, Jesus Christ, <laughs> it's him again. Anyway. Shout out to Beer Binderman as well from Kevy in Morpeth. Our RE classes, we're literally watching uh, My Name is Earl mm. from yeah, 10 to, <laughs> well, 10 and 11, yeah. Just watch My Name is Earl. Was that linked in any way? He or? was just an old fella who couldn't be asked anymore. He's like, I know you don't care about this. We'll just put My Name is Earl on. <laughs> Oh, Not even attempt. And his name was Bure Binderman, it turns out. Mr. Binderman. That's I a phone jacker character. I assume he's still dead. No. I'm still dead. <laughs> <laughs> I assume he's now dead. Hey, you can't assume out nowadays, Ross. What was his first name? Bure. Bure. I, I, I can't remember how you spell it for the life of me, but his name was Bure Binderman. Bure Binderman. Oh, what's that? No, no RE and just my name is all. That's pure Binderman, that like. Oh, yeah. Suit yourselves. I'm Googling Mr. Binderman Kevy. Backstage, CJ Mr. Binderman, Perry. wow. That's on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> CJ Berry stops Miro from summoning to Binderman's There he is, Bure Binderman. There he is. The legend oh, himself. Is Hang like, on, that's a lot of the dog from this, <laughs> this, <laughs> this, looks like, this looks like the inside cover of OK Computer. Like, he's, <laughs> he's so apathetic, this bloke. It's Mrs. Him. P, me, and BB, which stands for Bure Binderman. <laughs> Binderman's not having a good time. Up the Binderman. He's he looks like, oh. a lot younger by the time, well, well, compared to when I got there. Right, right. So he is a, he's a real boy. Is that like a Danish name or something? Like? I don't know. Oh. Beer. I hope he's still alive. Yeah. <laughs> CJ asks uh, Miro to leave her client alone and let her do things her own way. Miro is angry about not being in the tournament himself, but agrees not to harm Andrade. Okay. What's yeah. happening with this? Right. So Miro wanted to get into the locker room to get to Andrade because Andrade is being cliented or managed, sorry, by uh, C.J. Perry, and Miro doesn't want C.J. Perry to be exposed to the materialistic things that ruin and sc- uh, harm a person, make them change, and all that sort of stuff. She won't let him in to see Andrade. She needs to do this, she says, because she wants to prove herself against the God and all that sort of stuff. And um, uh, She says, if there's any love uh, that you have for me, and I was like, you're married, why is that being completely disregarded? Is that not kayfabe? It's, I thought it was everything all the above. The god's gone, apparently, even though she's trying to work against the god to prove that she's... Sorry, man. I like Joel talking it's... to Jack. I blacked out. Yeah, like, just, I, 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 don't, I don't get it. It wasn't when I was talking to Joel. How dare you? I blacked out again. <laughs> it was, it was what when saying? I was blacking out. I, I, yeah, well, uh, the hand on the hair bit. I don't know. I don't know what was happening. I'm lost. Yeah. Uh, I'm tapping out with uh, this The god line. thing, when he went, well, my god doesn't exist anymore. That's because he was like, because if god did exist... I'd be in the tournament, ripping spines out. And I thought, Miro's class, give him some wrestling matches, man. Yeah. Those promos, when he was just a him versus God. In the white yeah. room. Yeah, in Obviously, the white room. Some of my, my top favorite tier. stuff of last year. Top yeah. tier. Oh. This is what it's descended into. It the just... wedding with Kip Sino. <laughs> <laughs> this is just, I don't understand what's going on. She's trying to prove herself against the God. The God doesn't exist. Miro doesn't want her there. <coughs> Is she also not just trying to... The, 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 the very fact that we're asking these questions means it's not specific enough. But isn't she also trying to prove herself that she can... Because she goes like, I want to win this tournament with yeah. my client and stuff. So so trying to find out who is the god, who is the devil, and <laughs> who is the him, yeah. all on the same <laughs> show. Like, all right, mate, okay. <laughs> AEW loves vague posting. But at least the show got back on track with what came next. Brian Danielson beats Eddie Kingston. Bastard. And the CC, he celebrates with a crowd sign that says, Eddie is a bum. How dare you? Which someone edited and got, they, they got me on the Saturday, uh, <laughs> Sunday morning when I saw it right, on yeah, X.com. Yeah, yeah. Because on. they put Phil. Oh. He, was, oh. he was old. And I was like, oh my God, I can't believe he's held that up. And then obviously you watched the show uh, and it says Eddie. You'd have to find himself if he did that. <laughs> um, <laughs> this was like... Imagine if that happens though. Like he just starts like going off on everybody. Oh. And then Tony's like, Get in, he's fine. He's like, well... I can't do it. Go find himself. Oh, yeah, Tony would just step in, wouldn't he? I, well, I'm just no, I well, would know that because... <laughs> well, would, would, Christian he, goes, go find yourself. Would he step in? Because he sat literally next to someone going off on the rest oh, of the yeah, roster yeah. and nodded along? I'll never get over that. Same punk. Mm. Press conference, yeah. Anyway. Um, oh, it was a really good match between two charismatic and talented wrestlers. Yeah. I don't know what I, I mean. I was also sad that Eddie didn't win, but I think it'll make his latter half redemption in the tournament that more sweet, Matthew. Yeah, but Barmy's wanting this redemption to have kicked in like half a year 
ago. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I know, we can't get everything we want. I know, I know. But, and yeah, it was very good. But I, t- I was like three quarters of the way through in the match, I went, oh, Eddie's not winning, is he? I kind of knew, like, at that you point. Knew. And you're like, oh, but I wanted him to win. I like how Brian, even though we know the character of Brian's all about the art of wrestling and, and excellence and sporting prowess and stuff, there's just certain people that he'll always hate. <laughs> and one of them's Eddie Kingston for some reason. He always slags them up. Have they had? Have they feuded a lot in the past or something? Quite a few matches before in Chikara and stuff like that. Right. But nothing major. So. Brian was in Chikara. He made like a few guest cameos. When oh, they, right, okay. You know, I thought you were going to be like, I was one of the ants. <laughs> He's the, the actual dragon, Brian <laughs> Dragonson. Yeah, I like the story of the match. They, they battered each other at the start. Then it was like a game of chess on the mat. And then they started battering each other on the mat as well. So it was a gnarly game of chess. Yeah. And then Eddie made me feel like I had a heart at the end with like the no. No, don't do it. Mm-hmm. Bosh, he's over. Mm. Gone. He, uh, this should, I'm hoping they like, because it was a grapply start, wasn't it? They didn't just run at each other. So I'm hoping they've saved a bit of, of the ideas for like, I'd love to see this as on a pay-per-view. It should be a pay-per-view match. It's class. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Up, yeah. Yeah. On Monday Night Raw, Drew McIntyre opened the show. Yes, he did. And talks about how these days hypocrites can walk out of WWE only to be instantly forgiven when they return. Oh. Who's that? You can get fired, release, leave, do whatever you want for a while, come back and be instantly forgiven. Mm. But he says he read it on Twitter as well. He could have been told by anybody. So. Yeah, that was a funny point. Yeah, yeah. He, he pointed out there's uh, not just one person there. He mentioned Seth Rollins and Jay Uso. It says there's one person he hasn't talked about yet. And Sami Zayn arrives right on cue. And that drill. was the, the worst moment of the week, that. Because when Sami's coming out, Drew gives the old Rhea Ripley wave, but puts on the Rhea Ripley like creepy little smiley face as well and that that's just I didn't want to see that it, it, it kept me it, just, it, it was just disturbing you'll have to watch it back <laughs> doesn't like, <laughs> oh, doesn't see, you didn't like see doesn't it doesn't suit yeah. his face yeah just, right. it was horrible it was really <laughs> horrible it takes a lot for Drew not to be an attractive man <laughs> <laughs> uh, Simon Zane arrives right in queue and Drew tells him he's the one person in the world that deserved to be screwed over by the bloodline and you can so, see his point of view so uh, you can yeah Sammy says he and Drew aren't alike because rather than making excuses when he lost to Roman, Sammy stayed driven and won in the main event at WrestleMania. He's making his family proud, but wonders if Drew can say the same. Drew angrily calls for a ref. Sammy it sounds like a... what, Ross? Huh? What does that sound like? What, Drew calling for a ref? Angrily. Hey! <laughs> Thank you, pal. <laughs> and then is... Drew wins after Sammy appears to injure his ankle. Later, as Sammy's being checked on backstage, Drew attacks him again and injures his ankle some more. What a get. I guess he's an actual heel. Yeah, but Sammy was Only to Sammy. Sammy was a dick here. <laughs> in the promo kind of was yeah Drew's point you're right Drew was kind of correct about Sammy he was the lap dog I think he called him for the bloodline and they screwed him over and he kind of deserved it and then Sammy was like I'm making my family proud are you making your family proud oh, bloody hell Mad. then he fed that yeah but so- I'm loving Drew right now just a miserable person who is mostly justified. Mm-hmm. That's the good thing about him and Sammy and here, like both what they were saying, Sammy was a bit of a dick, but like they were both based in common sense mm. yep. and logic. I don't know why I said logic like that. And logic, yeah. end of sentence. Like, yeah. Many people don't <laughs> like Dewey just obviously because it's WE, fair enough. But like I like the fact that it's now at the point where it used to be a joke, didn't it? Like, oh, someone's turned heel. And how they turned heel? By using common sense. And it points out how bad the show was at that point. But here it's like, no, the show's still good. It's just Drew's pointing out that this thing is like, no, I, I, this is why I don't like Jay. Yeah. I, I'm the person who, who uh, spragged him in and said, hey, someone's already got the copyright on that. That's why I don't like Jay. <laughs> it was mean. Um, but it's also, they were perfect opponents for each other, like, because the way oh, the match yeah. was laid out, Drew was just being like a pure Terminator and that. And then Sammy was like hanging on and stuff, and the crowd were getting like more on his side as the match went on. And then. It was a good way of not having Sammy lose clean and furthering Drew by having the injury angle and the attack after it as well. Uh, but it, it's clear that Drew has spent too much time in America because in the backstage attack, he says, you think you can talk about my damn family? As if you would uh, care about that if you lived over here. That's yes. that American way, isn't it? Ooh. You have your family in my in your mouth. Take them out. <laughs> oh, Jesus my God. God. Yes. That probably would cause an intense feud. Take them out. Oh, dear. Um, but I do like when Jay Uso arrived and he's like, it's going to be all right, Uso. Yeah. As if he's a doctor. Yeah. Uh, I, I hate when your, when your mom used to go, oh, don't worry, it'll be all right. It's not, mom. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be crap. Yeah, how do you know? Yeah. Like when <laughs> Sunderland went 1 0 down to Millwall in the FA Cup semi final when I was a kid. Yeah, My I'm nana went, sorry, it's yeah, all yeah. right, Jack. Sunderland will score two. And what happened? Uh, match ended 1 0 in Millwall. <laughs> You can't promise a child something like that. You're right. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, I love the fact that Sammy's like, I'm still going to keep fighting. I'm still like Keegan. I'm still fighting for this title. <laughs> I'm still listening to women talk about football. And then, uh, yeah, gets to the point Show where he That can't. was a reference yeah. to... to <laughs> Kevin Keegan, beloved local legend who just, just turned into an old man. Me and Matthew off camera before this podcast were talking about Joey Barton's very sexist tweets. And Matthew was lampooning that as well. But well, that was off camera, so it just sounded like what you were saying was just your actual thoughts. <laughs> I was doing the Keegan impression. <laughs> right, He's right, still fighting right. for this title. Yeah. Also, I don't like women's <laughs> <dominant> football. <laughs> oh, Joey Barton. No, no, why bring him in this? Anyway, yeah, so it's just like, and then, yeah, Drew realised, hang on, Sammy's thinking about Joey Barton right there. He's distracted. I'm going for his ankle. Aha! And he did. Mm -hmm. And yeah, Sammy taking all the beautiful bumps there and mm -hmm. giving it back to Drew. Fantastic. These guys always have great matches. No issues here. Yes. Really good opening to Raw. Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stark are interviewed backstage. Shayna wants to remind Naya that she broke her arm two years ago and put her on the shelf in a video package Jay Uso. Oh. I'll run them together. Yeah, yeah. yeah sure. She's a pint of Newcastle Brown Ale, so she is. The old marketing token that they had back in the day. No bollocks. Shayna Baszler. Mm. I broke her arm two years ago. I'm going to do it again, limb by limb. That was a promo. Good. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then a video package Jay Uso without the says he never thought he'd get a world title match again after Jimmy Costum at SummerSlam. Tonight, he's going to show why he's main event Jey Uso. I can't believe they so blatantly like played or replayed the end into SummerSlam after everything that's gone on the past couple of months. Now it's just faltered and stalled and come to a grinding halt in many respects. I can't believe the end of the SummerSlam was so much forced into our faces here. Do you think they would what like, you mean? Just, just kind of wishy-washy it around it? Yeah, because the whole Jimmy Uso stuff has been crap, hasn't it? Yeah. That well, was it's supposed to be though. That's where it, it completely the... went off the rails. The, the story. Yeah, but it is what happened, I suppose. Yeah, uh, but it's just in, yeah, just uh, maybe I'm conditioned like a Pavlovian dog, and just to expect them just to brush things that don't want you remember under the carpet. The Vince McMahon way. I reckon Triple H <laughs> probably still stands by that SummerSlam main event. He can't. He probably thinks, no, it was a good idea. He can't. Mm. No, it went 20 minutes long and bored people. Triple H loved it. <laughs> I saw someone dragging someone else on Twitter. Ooh. But I'm afraid that it, the per, one of the people is like someone you know, and I think you know He's both. One of the cool I th kids. No, I think you know the victim of the drag and the. Oh, uh, come on then. Do you know Muscle Man Malcolm? He, I am going to reserve judgment until I find out what he said. Maybe. So yes, you do know. Does he, <laughs> does he listen to this? And I'm sorry, Malcolm, if you do. Oh no. But it, I didn't agree with his take, and neither did one of the internet cool kids. He said people. J versus Roman was an was, J versus Roman was a match of the year contender, but people's expectations were just too high. And then someone went, "How does that make any sense?" <laughs> Wait a minute. So we thought it was going to be good, and it wasn't as good as we thought. But it's a match of the year contender. That sounds like a Daveism. Yeah, Meltzerism. I hate the <laughs> I, I hate this death match. Five star. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so sorry, Muscle Man Malcolm, if you listen. I'm assuming he's a big muscular man. I don't want to beat me you up. Hear the noise of him unsubbing right now, but. Uh, <laughs> No, I would. I mean, yeah. So we're allowed to have different opinions. Imagine just innocently listening to a podcast and then you get called out for a bad take you yeah. on Twitter. Well, it's what we mentioned here, then, you know, H Bomber guy. I feel awful now. Sorry, Malcolm. I do. I feel really guilty. Love it you, it wasn't you, a good match, though, I don't think. No, I, I agree. No. <laughs> but. Well, some of them are very low. We'll part. I don't we'll even know him. I don't if it's a three and one handicap match, we'll take him. Malcolm. Yeah. If Malcolm comes here, we'll, t we'll take him. No, but He's no. the muscle man. It's in his name. He's the muscle one. man. Uh-oh. And he I... might come with that bloke that I always mix him up with, Matt McMuscles. Yeah. Matt McMuscles wouldn't harm us. Oh, nah, okay. he likes us. He's, he's okay. a friend of Matthew's. He's in the dark <laughs> order. <laughs> Lovely hair. Oh, yes. Uh, Nia Jax interrupts a Becky Lynch interview and asks if Becky was talking about her when she mentioned a fight on the horizon last week. Becky says she owes Nia a receipt. From like, what, like? Four, five years ago? Jeez. 2019, wasn't yeah. it? Survivor Series season. Yeah. Naya says she'll deal with Becky once she's done squashing Shayna. Naya does indeed she's squash Shayna. Yeah. Well, that's a shame. But leaves the <laughs> ring when Becky comes out to confront her after the bell. Oh, she's scared of Bex. Yeah, uh, as a crowd, couldn't have cared less about this match, but it was a decent, big, small match. Jack's still annoyingly good since she came back. She's been all right. There was the first couple of matches where it was really ropey and she was like fully landing on Rhea, I think. I think maybe that was over. It's so, it's so weird, but, like, like what's supposed to be real and what's supposed to be not, because that, it was reported by a few places, I swear, that, oh, Rhea Ripley, shoot injured. And then people going, no, she's fine. She's just doing interviews. Uh, I I think, but then Stevie fine. Richards, that if you go, no, she's injured, and Rhea's like, just saying nothing about it. Then she came back a week later. <laughs> I like, thought okay. it looked like a bad spot. But since then, Nia's been, who was the match she had a couple of weeks ago with where it was actually her best match? Raquel. Here? Raquel, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. That was, that was a match of the year. That was better than... That was a match of the year. Yeah. 
Yeah, and uh, yeah, just so it, I like now that we at least know who's supposed to be getting a push in the Raw Women's division, which is a bit bloated right now. It should be Shayna though. Yes, it should. I'm be not Shana. gonna die. I'm gonna keep this up because he she got rid of Ronda Rousey. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and some people enjoyed it at SummerSlam. Some people. And even any if they, particular people enjoyed it. <laughs> no, I don't know. I wasn't referencing <laughs> Big Muscle Man. But even if even if they didn't enjoy it, it should still that's a big victory, and it should yeah. still be used to. Like you say, propel Shayna up the card. But what it was used for was the return of Nia Jax when the entire yeah. tag roster got yeah bit smacked down. Zoe's face turn got used to fuel yeah. that. Yeah. Um, do you think Nia will win this feud with Becky? No. Really? I think she might because Becky's been quite given this year, hasn't she? And Nia's on a surely on a road to Rhea. That's the big match. Yeah. Or maybe it's going to be Becky and Rhea at WrestleMania, uh... so maybe Becky will win. Yeah. It's got to be Becky and Rhea at WrestleMania, surely. That's the most obvious one, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. There was shades of the sugar babes from Nia in this match because she did the uh, the, the hold to her head against uh, the ring post. That's the name like, of the which move. Song? I was thinking round, round. <laughs> <laughs> she pushed the button. Freak like me. <laughs> no, a hole in the head. Ooh, boy, you messed me, me like a hole, hole in, in the head. head. Oh, because of you, boy. Such a fool, boy. Sugar babes classic. Head like a hole. <laughs> Black as your soul. Uh, yeah, and I didn't notice this until Matt Kempe records everything. Um, Nia Jax did miss a stink face, oh, which I technically think, yeah. should be impossible, but here we are. How did she miss a stink face? Well, she went to put her, in, put her ass there and Shane's head was there. <laughs> that's on, sh- that's on uh, Shane. Maybe Shane's like, nah, I'm alright. <laughs> I've lost me push, I'm not taking this. <laughs> Shit is good. Oh, the sky is fire. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Oh, you really got me. <laughs> <laughs> Got us the rain in the armor. <laughs> we should die away. Look at the match with Imperium. And then Kaiser and Vinci interrupt to call them Das Losers. <laughs> the baby faces walk off, and Kaiser warns Vinci not to mess up. They're not baby faces. NXT backstage man is now on Raw because <laughs> the way they all went, attention, when <laughs> I'm doing DDP while there, attention, <laughs> um, but yeah, Inhale. they were really unlikable here. And then, yeah, just Who? The, the, the baby faces. Oh, right, I see. Yeah, just the way, like, oh, they, they do they pose. Who cares? Let them pose, <laughs> dickheads. The wrestlers. They don't like them. <laughs> the cheaters. And then Geo stole the show again. He's like, yeah. Oh. You're a lovely couple of losers. <laughs> and it hung there like one of those farts, didn't it? It was beautiful. Mm, it wasn't. A, <laughs> one of those farts. It wasn't the most natural segment I've ever seen. No. Uh, but it's just so great. The comedy stylings now don't mess up. <laughs> okay, boss. So Lauren Hardy come out for their match <laughs> with DIY. Two out of three falls. DIY win two falls to one. Uh, Vinci blames Kaiser at ringside. Of course it was. Vinci oh. was the man of the match here. Um, in the yep. shades of his NXT run when he ran the ropes like prime Riddick Moss, which sounds like a ridiculous thing to say, but it's not. You watch Riddick Moss run those really? ropes. Mm-hmm. Uh, they did the best cross body that Wade Barrett has ever seen. Then there was this moonsault in the third fall after bouncing off the two sets of ropes. He was probably the, the man of the match, the performer of the match. I, I agree with everything you said. I put, oh my God, the double jump moonsault. Yeah. Has, has he done many of them since leaving NXT? And the crowd's, whoa, reaction mm. is uh, makes this Mapu's move of the week, which we don't do, but I thought I'd point out in case you forgot. I'm glad you didn't pick mine. Mine's hey. still to come. Oh, that wasn't. Oh, well, okay, oh yes, well. there was one. There was just one more better this week. Um, Vinci was also pulling out Gargano, which allowed Ludwig to get the cheating first fall. So that feeds into that story quite well. Of yep. Geo is not the not the not the not the crap one. It's, it's Ludwig, yeah. even though he's not. You know what I mean. Um, Vinci then took the fall to make it one one, which of course made Ludwig be look bad because that's his responsibility. Um, he also then held on to Champa, so he couldn't nail his move off the top, mm. even though DIY was just a couple of crafty critters in that moment. I've written down whatever the bloody hell that means. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but of course, Ludwig taking the losing fall in the final one was the right call just for the story. I bet Gunter is not going to be happy. How would the, I can't remember, were the crowd into it? Yeah, the more oh, went no, on. they were. Yeah, yeah. because one, one on. DIY last week in the gauntlet didn't get a big reaction, so I'm glad that. They were in a match where, they, like, they excel at these sort of matches. Yeah, in yeah. fairness, like, yeah, that gauntlet was a long match. Crowd yeah. knew it was like, well, I'm not gonna, you know, not gonna get up early now. I'm yeah. yeah, right. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, crowd would join us. And I put well done, Gargano and the rest, because, like I said, it's been a bit like, guys, it's Joey Gargano and Champa. Joey, like, Joey Gargano. Joey <laughs> Gargano. That's it, Joey Gargano. Sticking to one and them. And uh, crowd was like, Joey, he's changed his name. 
And uh, yeah, and they'd be like, all right, whatever. But now that yeah, getting back into it, yeah. on the saddle, mm. they might get the name right next week. And uh, yeah, good for them for actually making the crowd care. Yeah, okay. has this got them in line for a tag title shot? Well, no, the Creeds are the number one contenders at the minute, actually. Yeah, never mind. But good for Gio saying you've got to explain that to Gunter Ludwig, not me. You mm. lost, you, you wazzock. Do you think? Yeah. Do you think Vinci's, a wah, 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 wah. Do you think Vinci's like a f- got face potential, baby face potential? And what a face! And what a f- body and face. Mm. Whereas Kaiser's like naturally quite a slimy heel, I think. Oh, Ludwig can't be a baby no, face. Yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. no, no. He's, he sneers too much. He's a Slytherin. He's a, he's a frat boy on Northumberland Street, him. He's prime oh, yeah. frat boy fodder. He's got that North face, which is half blue and half black. <laughs> he's got that, that jacket, <laughs> there, that coat. But again, it was another long match on Raw. Long matches on mm. this week's Raw. Mm. Lots of wrestling. Triple H. Do you like a lot of wrestling on your Monday Night Raw? Not really. <laughs> 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 I prefer the skits. <laughs> no, yeah. Ah, oh, well, you're in luck then, because Chelsea Green and Piper Niven make fun of Natalia and Deegan Knox backstage. Tegan pretends to hit Chelsea, and she flinches. Whoa. I didn't really know the payoff <laughs> of this segment. I don't know what the point was. It was for Natalie. Natalie? Natalie? <laughs> Natalia could, could say. Now, come on, get it right, Joey. That, that mutt needs a muzzle towards Chelsea Green. Oh, God. Stole, stole the segment once again with I've, her. With their dynamic is like, Tegan's like... The a rebellious teenager. Pot. And Natalia's like her... <laughs> Natalia's tr- like her uncool mom. Don't listen to them. She needs a mother. Oh. No, Tegan is literally... She would have been the cool teenager, but Natalia being her mom yeah, 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 has yeah. driven the life out of her. So she just stands there and is very bland and boring. Go away, mum. <laughs> oh, I can't do a Welsh one. But I, Chelsea Green again, like she was just Good the way time. she was like, oh, we were just about head out for the night, but somebody told us you have a match. Just that little, you know, little... It's ridiculous, isn't it? So yeah, you're right. Been... I hate having these 15 minute long good matches with crowds <laughs> in the world. I, I love these skits, mate. So <laughs> later on, why is Chelsea angry when Tegan and Natalia lose? I'm not sure. No, I I'll have to get out. me notes when we get it that back part. And I was like, <laughs> and we'll get to it, yeah, but I, I was weird. Almost as weird as the Creeds squatting the New Day backstage. Woods and Kingston praised them for becoming number one contenders. The AA show up and won the Creeds that the road only gets tougher from here. The Creeds aren't worried because they're confident Ivy Nile will neutralize Rhea Ripley. Maxine Dupree is impressed with Ivy's squat. So Gable points out what? that Maxine... It's strength, isn't it? Not squat, whatever. Points out that Maxine has been getting stronger too. She squats to Zawa to demonstrate. Ooh. Recapping the segment may be considered quick the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I was fuming, man. It was so stupid. There's, there's one of these every bloody week, isn't there? And I just put no one cares about the Zawa's perv dance still. I'll, I'll be honest. I think, the so note, I think the notes get a bit more like cynical from here on out because I wrote the bulk of them last night. I'd left it all week. And I thought, oh, <laughs> really? Oh. I'd watched most of the shows, but when I came to actually writing right, the yeah. notes, I was like, oh, okay. I don't know Shit. if it was on purpose, but Maxine's squat was a lot less convincing than every other squat that we saw in the segment. Well, that the Creed's made, a massive... I mean, yeah, come that on. Made me, no, that made me a big fan of her. Oh, she's just trying. Like, you know, the vulnerability. She's mm. trying to keep up with these fit people speaking about being fit. Yeah. But she's not quite as fit as them. She clearly mm. really is, yeah. but not, a, but not, she's just not, a, she's not a physical freak. Yeah, she's right. not a shooter mm. yet, brothers. Uh-huh. You're normally physically mm-hmm. yeah. strength. She's good. good at being, she's really good at her role of like yeah. comedy, trying hard, trying her best baby face. Um, but I hated the segment. Mm. I was just waiting for Tazawa to whip out the American football team's belt, but he didn't uh, this time. I was waiting, waiting for that and the Ruffles crisps. Aye. The Ruffle shovel. Yeah. yeah. Don't, I dance right, Chris. Don't do it to him, Akira. Ah, Kur- Kurosawa. Thanks. Our truth saying. is back in the JD's clubhouse. He thinks he's part of the gang. The big silly goose, it says here. Mm. They kick him out, and Priest complains about Drew McIntyre. Dom reminds him that Rhea told them not to harm Drew. Priest says Ripley's in here tonight, so he's in charge. Did Ooh. Rhea do that? Did she say don't harm... Drew, or was that before? Was that I thought pre, it was before War Games. Afterwards, War Games. just like, well, why yeah. now? Drew's since come out and gone, like, he slagged them off. He's gone, I didn't really want to be part of that team anyway. Yeah. Mm. Weird. Mm. This was too much funny in one bit of Raw for me. Like, because I had the women's tag team backstage segment, mm-hmm. yeah. then the Crees in the New Days, yeah. and then our truth confusing his little TV with a flat screen LCD. <laughs> Which one was the funniest of the three segments? I, I mean, they were all f- thigh slappers. I had <laughs> <laughs> tears in my eyes by the, this <laughs> point. Were you were able to see yeah, the TV screen after all And he this. called uh, JD McDonough Jackie D. <laughs> I, just, I don't know what to do myself. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, just, I think Priest quite likes our truth. Because JD's like, get out. And Priest's like, calm down. Like, <laughs> well, he's just confused. Yeah, I mean, JD last week said, I'll take care of him. And here he is next week, oh, absolutely, completely unharmed. Yeah. 
That was weird. I think they've run out of stuff for Truth to do after one week. I'm assuming they'll be... Hey, he's back. And then Cole was just like, <laughs> he thought that TV was a big flat screen. Oh, it was black I and do... white. You're like, what? <laughs> I do agree that Ro with Ross that there's too much comedy in one, like three seconds Chunk. in a row. But I'm really enjoying our truth like, I like really... them as well. Are we going to do the <laughs> the Sami Zayn Bloodline stuff with our truth and Bloodline? Why oh, not? And the Judgment Day. Oh, I love that. Imagine him like guy lying around and dressing like a goth. He looked fantastic. He starts getting more more wins than JD. <laughs> he like, would. Well, we might keep you then in that case. <laughs> um, I think people would love that. Mm. He could main event at WrestleMania with that story. Like. Yes. At the age of 75 as well. Yep. Incredible. If our truth faced like Priest or someone in the main event of night one of a WrestleMania one, yeah, people would, the crowd would really get behind him, I think. I'd be worried if Priest was like, wait, what if truth comes for me? That's why he's being nice. <laughs> There's no way I can beat him. It's yeah. a former NWA World's Heavyweight Champion you talk about, there. certainly is. That's right. Mm. And then he lost to that NASCAR driver. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God. The Cowie, Gr yeah, the Cowie Girls win a tag match against Italian Tegan. Chelsea Green isn't happy about this and gets on the apron, but they kick her off. Uh-huh. Uh, put, apart from CNC getting powerbombed on their own heads, this was okay. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I put, but why is Natty acting like a face with Knox? I thought their whole shtick was that Knox is being misled by Natty. I think we just assumed this. No, it was, it was that when uh, no. Knox was in NXT, Natty rocked up just to be with her, didn't she? That yeah, was, that's how she, the tag team started. Chelsea's yeah, but accusing, on Raw, she's been like, no, Natalia will show you the way. And then Chelsea's accusing Natalia of you, using Tegan to stay relevant because she's young. But yeah. I think that's meant to be like the heel's point of view, not the real truth. Oh, but it is true. I know, I know. But we're not, oh, we're that, not supposed to think that's no. true. Right, that makes sense then. Yeah. That's, um, that, mm. I might be wrong, but that's what I'm getting from it. Uh, I put uh, also since he's finished ruled. Yeah, the, the innovative stuff continues to happen from the Cowie girls. The, the shoot elevated moonsault to Natalia's face. And as you say there, I don't know what the name is. I'm going to call it the double drop, but it's this handstand assisted <laughs> splash <laughs> thing. Yeah, I think it has a name. You know the one where, nice. you know the where the double dose. Because Casey's really small when she gets thrown at someone. Is that the microdose? <laughs> <laughs> It's the key. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> You've got the key. Mm. But I was ready to it, say, it like... The rhythm of the night <laughs> off the top. I was ready to say, like, what a shame this match happened because the, the team who shouldn't be getting the push got the win against the team who should be getting the push. Oh, no, I'm pleased about the Cowie But then the team the who play. should be getting the push did get the win, and I was shocked. So fair play. We are the Cowie girls. We are the Cowie girls. You are the Cowie boys. <laughs> We'll let that linger. Yeah. <laughs> Cowie Rhodes is here to talk about this. <laughs> what do you guys want to talk about? <laughs> Jenny says that. Just look at the floor the entire Because I'm off my tits. <laughs> <laughs> really talking of him on a stroke walls. Adrenaline! In my soul! Can you just keep playing my music, please? Oh, just minute, like... Has anyone got any water in the crowd? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He says he was terrified of the man he first saw use mist as a child. The great Muta. He goes out Nakamura, who doesn't come out, but appears in the Tron instead. Nakamura talks about how he wants to open Cody's eyes and show him that their two paths are the same. Nakamura never got to finish his story, so now he'll finish Cody's. Cody says, I don't respect you, Nakamura, until you stand in the ring with me. Also, have you got any water, pal? <laughs> Parallels between this feud and Sammy and Drew. Are our paths the same? Are they different? Mm. You know, They are pretty similar, but they're just many years apart, and we haven't thought about one of the paths for many years. Yeah. <laughs> but I, but I'm, yeah. I'm enjoying that they've referenced it because yeah. in Vince's WWE, they were far more willing to ignore their own history. But Triple H enjoys a reference to things that have happened. He certainly does. He's a studier of history. Yeah. I also like the fact that it's like now finishing the story is just the term we use for, I didn't win the world title match that I probably should have won, that everyone <laughs> thought I would. It's like the incident. It's like a euphemism. Like he didn't finish his story. You, you know the poo girl at Leeds <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to see what they call it like after he loses again though Cody at Wrestlemania to Roman what they're going to call it then he's yeah. not going to try and finish a story for a third year in a row is he Cody ever after <laughs> Jeez, I was thinking right because I was researching some stuff for a script I'm writing and I got reading about the first Bruno San Martino reign the, the massive one um, and if Triple H could do you think he'd have Roman beat it but it's like it's like seven years long we're nearly halfway. <laughs> yeah, I guess we are. <laughs> we're nearly halfway if you count the Universal one. Yeah. But the World one he won later on. Well, Sorry, the WWE one he won later I don't know. Well, right now, hasn't WWE been insanely profitable this year and last year? It's like, well, why stop? Maybe maybe you'll have him beat Bruno's record. 
That sounds mad. I mean, it's crazy. I, I mean, think he's def. I'm putting money on Roman this year because I'm going to assume that everyone will think Cody's going to win because, you know. Just the, loses again. The betting. Because when Roman gets to WrestleMania, I forget what actual number it is, but he's only like 100 and some odd days behind Hogan's in like the oh. next first one. Like, his, Hogan's only like 1,478 yeah. or something. Yeah, when he beat Shigi, lost to Warrior. Yeah, so they're not going to get, get that close and throw it away, are they? No, I don't yeah. think so. Plus, you're going to need someone like incredibly established. But it's, it's like a legendary title reign. Bruno's perhaps. reign worked so well because it was the 60s and because he's a baby face and people didn't know wrestling wasn't real and they loved seeing their hero win and all that sort of stuff. And he was Italian and it was the East Coast and there was those of Italian American immigrants. But <laughs> can you do it for that long in the modern age with a heel? I mean, people have said for years. I mean, again, Triple H loves history and he loves like. Well, people not on. click on it on it though at some point and go like, "This is bollocks." This. If they keep up the you same, you say match, that, but like oh, yeah. license to print money at the minute. <laughs> if we're sat here in three years with the same Roman Reigns match happening, which has already been done too many times now. Oh, referee goes down. Oh, the bloodline comes in. Oh, he gets a spear and wins. If that keeps happening, then we'll get. Then they'll start losing lots of money. They're not going to lose any money. Of them. No, no, no. <laughs> I mean, you say this, but again, right now, everything is going very well for them. It's so just, why it's stop? Us sad acts who sit there and watch all of it that complain, isn't it? <laughs> this is, there's been times when you've heard like the Bruce Pritchards and Eric Bishops of the world, he's been to say, to complain about people going, oh, and well, they said this wasn't very good. And, he, and then they go like, well, uh, yeah, the, the critics didn't like it. Yeah, it made record profits and all this other stuff. And this is one of those times. Mm. Even if Roman's having the exact same match which you kind of already at after the LA night mm. one and sorry does it matter well to us as enjoyers of the product it does but I don't think they'll care as you say I like to believe that Triple H values us as human beings uh, watching oh. his shows oh no <laughs> <laughs> he definitely cares more about the fans than Vince did towards the end yeah but does it does it <laughs> weigh up against, thing to say, does like. it weigh up against <laughs> the true. big bonus he got when the merger happened uh, <laughs> right <laughs> Jay Uso asks Adam Pierce how bad Sammy's injury is, but there are no updates. Jay wants revenge on Drew, but Pierce wants him to stay focused on his title match later. Jay leaves, and Gunther turns up the chat to Pierce. And we she, never should check him. the WCW hotline. And that wasn't followed up on later. So what's Gunther? Uh, what's he doing? Yeah, I'm glad that like Miz wasn't there as well this week to follow up because that was bollocks that last week. Oh, my challenger will be the first person I see. Oh, it's the Miz. I've just beaten you. It shouldn't be him. Yeah. So I'm glad to tease somebody oh, else. There was a brilliant one of them on NXT this week in the medical room. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, Two beds down. No, I was great. Couldn't see it. Yeah. Despite, despite our troop cheering his stable mates on, the Creeds beat JD McDonald Google Me and Dirty Dom in a tag match. They do the old belt motion afterwards. You know, the old belt motion. Mm. Julius Creed will be the man to, to, to beat Roman Reigns. I'm going to go Brutus. <laughs> <laughs> Every match so far has been all about Julius. Brutus has been like the Claude Makalele, the supporting role. Julius has been I and Robin, Didier Drogba, Damien Duff, one of those all three of them at once. Yeah, all of them, He's one body. The three, yeah. um, but JD was flying around as well. He did a moonsault of the floor. There was a tope with a horrible landing. He was getting this. He wasn't just taking the moves this week. He was doing some as well. Mm -hmm. um, but it was a nice and easy win as it should be if the if the the creeds are going to be a serious thing. I I don't. I love the creeds. They're brilliant. Julius is the one in backstage segments and interviews and stuff who gets all the lines. But Brutus is the one with the much more natural delivery. And it's like, they I think Ross is right. I think they do want to push Julius. Because despite being, in my opinion, the less good talker of the two, he's the one that's getting more of a spotlight on him. And I don't mind that in the ring. But it's weird backstage for me when Brutus is just a cheeky lad and I like him, to mm. use a Joel Holland phrase. <laughs> <laughs> Joel loves the term cheeky lads. It's the name of your FPL team, isn't the name it? name is Fantasy Team. Yeah. Everyone makes fun of that name. Why? It's crap. There you go. <laughs> It's and because he wins funny. and I hate him. <laughs> Although I, had, this... I had a good week this week. Did you? 50 points with two games to go. Oh. Up to sixth. Hooah! Who's supposed to? Matthew Stewart. Oh. He uh, lives up in Scotland. Saw him at the Christmas party. Yes, we did. He's smashing it. He is. And he's a lovely lad. So I can't even hate him <laughs> like I did you when you were winning. <laughs> oh, because you're not a lovely lad. Joel is a lovely lad, really. It's just, it's just the name. The team name's awful. Yeah. The cheeky lads. It's just a bunch of cheeky lads. Oh, <laughs> oh it's when he does that. Oh, look at him go. They're having lads. fun, Maggle. <laughs> uh, commentators love this match. It did a very good job putting it over. Cole says, I've never seen that before, like ever. Um, when Creed did the thing they did last week in front of Cole. <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever. That combination of Batista doing crossbodies uh, and Cole going, I've, I've never, never seen, seen him do that. <laughs> Uh, Wade yelling, I feel a need, a need for Creed. Yes. <laughs> yes, lad. I've got a need. 
a need for the tag team tandem of Dom and JD to have like an NWO second tier theme. Yes. Uh, the yes. need one. And a name, maybe? Yeah. Like, oh, I can't think of a mini Judgment Day. That'll do. Judgment Hour. Oh, yeah. Judgment mm. Day minis. Yeah. <laughs> mini Judgment Day rolls. Jelly roll. Serious jelly Monday. roll. I got a, I got a DM saying apparently jelly roll is uh, oh, the rapper. Right. vernacular for the vulva in the jazz community. So in the jazz community, <laughs> they what? Why the they jazz? In the I'll find the what? DM I got on Instagram. Can we do the AJ Styles? <laughs> the jazz community. In jazz clubs, there's blokes sitting around. <laughs> what requests? Where are we? <laughs> Come on, it's from Andrew D. Asher. Thank you. Hello. Andrew. He says, uh, listen to the most recent pod, probably been mentioned before, but Jelly Roll is jazz slang for a vulva. So it's well funny how many times you casually say it up the podcast. Is jazz slang. I don't know. Does that refer to the. Wait, hang on. Oh, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Hang on. <laughs> it's the jazz community. Double bass. The jazz community. I thought you meant like the music. A little bit of jazz. flute action, you know what I mean? Right. <laughs> I don't know what jazz slang means. I reckon that's I think we're veering apart to known here. We should move on. <laughs> we'll just say we're all big fans of the J roll, all right? <laughs> Uh, oh backstage, Adam Pierce warns <laughs> Seth, <laughs> Seth <laughs> Rollins. He said that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Seth Rollins that he invited CM Punk to next week's show because he wants to sign him to an exclusive Raw contract. Ooh. Good man, management from Pierce. Yep. He's confronted it early. He's told him privately in front of a camera. Yeah. I hope Punk being an arsehole is already kayfabe. <laughs> yeah. When yeah. Rollins like, when he shows the world his true colours and it blows up in your face, ah, I'll be laughing. I think he said that. <laughs> and it sounds just like that. It was quite interesting. I had to rewind it to um, work out what Rollins said here because he said, if. Once Sam Punk proves that he's an arsehole, stay out of my way when I fix it. And I'm like, oh, he's going to feud with Punk? Yeah. It's the WrestleMania feud, isn't it? Mm. Surely. Ooh. No title. No title? Oh. No title. Oh, again, no. Title, yes. Get him up. Get Punk away from the title. Why? No idea. Take the title of the equation. Just as too much of a risk, isn't it? Not a fan. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Just as soon as he gets it, he'll start being... <laughs> he'll jump in the crowd, it'll all go wrong. <laughs> yeah, he won't do that, will he? Plus a kiss to Adam, who's on his third drink. <laughs> And then uh, Jey Uso shows up and tells Seth he's looking at the new World Heavyweight Champion. Seth doesn't agree, but they bump fists. Yut. <laughs> Seth beats Jay to retain the World Heavyweight Championship. <laughs> Seth shakes Jay's hand afterwards, but Drew attacks Jay on the outside. Seth tries to make the save, but Drew fights him off and puts Jay through the announce table. And then says, the truth will set you free. Our truth's coming back. Our truth, yeah. yeah. Tab smoke and our truth from 2011. <laughs> <laughs> And then he'd breathe it on. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be the pyro for the JD Zebra yeah. when he tries to just having a, like 10 tabs in his mouth at once. <laughs> <laughs> Dry ice. It's one of the W, isn't it Bobby Guns who used to actually do that? He just have a tab on the way to the ring. Yeah. And that was his heel. His, his thing was like, smoking kills. <laughs> and so does the Bobby Guns. Oh, <laughs> yeah. He was mint. Was he good? Oh, yeah. Still is. Fair enough. Oh, he's still good. Fair enough. Uh, this match was everything it should have yeah, been. Yeah, but now he does it, goes smoking. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, how's his cardio? Yeah. yeah. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> You've been running rings in the ring, have you? That's right. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Right. so Bobby, could I outrun you? No, man. No, no, no. <laughs> Uh, this match, there was everything it should have been, like just two big yeah. sweaty baby faces just having a ding-dong battle to end them all. Hello. Yeah. Uh, but the only thing that let it down was just that I never felt like Jay was ever going to win, even after the double shoot spears and splash combo. Easy for me to say. But I did like the smash and grab aspect of Rollins winning like he did. Mm -hmm. I agree with everything he said, Ross. You're doing such a wonderful Cheers, job as always. Yeah, it was a really good match, but you're like, Chase, just the winning. But that's not the point, is it? It's just a the lovely closing little stretch match. was like mm. cool and good. Yeah, uh, and Seth, Seth with the high boost of Swan on a moonsault. I saw that, just did that casually. Ooh. I just had a flashback to me talking to you at the Christmas party, being like, it's just a bit sad, isn't it? That CM Punk's my favorite wrestler. Wish it was someone cool like Hayabusa. <laughs> That's who I mentioned. You did say yeah. that. Yeah. You're like, you're so conflicted. You're like, do you, can you, as a CM Punk fan, not go, I love CM Punk, me? Yeah, yeah. Get flack for it, though. Because everyone hates him now. <laughs> She's telling the shit up. Say, who, who, who's your favourite? And where is it? Ah, oh, they're crap, them. Should hear the stories I've heard about them, huh? I just, just think walk that off. nowadays, because I used to be like, oh, my favourite wrestler is like someone from when I was a kid. But now, when I look at it honestly, I probably enjoyed more of CM Punk than any other wrestler ever. Even Hayabusa. <laughs> <laughs> I pointed to the sky, would... I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> right. I love you so much, man. Okay, let's carry on. <laughs> so you did the Hayabusa moonsault? Yeah, no, no, so it, Hayabusa <laughs> does the uh, Springboard Swanton and then follows up with the Springboard moonsault. Right. And he did it. Because he's my favourite wrestler of all time. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and that that was raw. <laughs> it was only was was more, more, was. more going on than there is at SmackDown at the minute. I'll see. Yeah. It, it flew by. But that was there was lots of there was like four long matches there, wasn't there? Long TV matches, as you yes. say. Yeah. I'm enjoying all the seeds that have been planted as we head a lot. We're not quite on the road to WrestleMania, but we're like leaving the estate that we live in, about to get onto the slip road to get onto the road to WrestleMania. Yeah, we're checking everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We're pulling off the Michinoku driveway. <laughs> oh. Going down the oh. A Town Down onto Route 619 before. The, oh my oh God. It's as if I've just recited an intro for a video I'm doing over Christmas. <laughs> <You> don't miss. <laughs> I thought you were just coming over. I was like, wow. No, bloody hell. That took me 20 minutes to think of all that. <laughs> down the Michinoku driveway. We're having a break. I'm starting a video with it. Remember the beep beep? I made me mum's car. Yeah. Beep, beep. Gee, Jesus, yes. I'm starting a video out over Christmas with that meme. Start a video with that. Owen's on the editor. If it's crap, blame him. Um, then what happens? <laughs> What's the video about? That's it. Driving on the road to WrestleMania. Beep beep. Oh, the literal road to WrestleMania. Yeah. Yeah, right. I'm assuming. I'm not going to spoil everything. Oh, that's lovely, that. Thank you. Enjoy your soup there. Yes. It's bloody you freezing. Want some, do you want a break? I thought it would break. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's going to be left in, isn't it? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> NXT. The show begins with the last chance Iron Survivor qualifying match between Roxanne, Perez, Keanu James, Thea Hale, and Fallon Henley. Perez and James pull each other, sorry, put each other through the announce table, which allows Fallon to beat Thea and qualify for the match at deadline. <laughs> Everything gonna be alright. Everything gonna, gonna be, be alright. Right. Everything gonna I love her theme right. tune. I really like her theme tune. Oh, unironically. Okay. Everything is gonna be alright. It is. Yeah. yeah. What did you think of the match, Ross? Um, I thought it was well, very well put together. There was lots of like nice sequences, like pinning sequences, and then two lasses do something, and then two more lasses yep. take their place. There was a shoot uh, torpe from Thea Hale that was very well structured with the people outside. The table spa I thought was hilarious with Roxanne and Keanu. The oh, 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 oh. And then they both go down on chili. Um NXT Anonymous, we learned at the start of the show, is, an, is now redundant because they film everything all the time, apparently. The shoot fight between Rox, was it Roxanne and Kiana, I think, at the start of the show, ah. the show when they were training. Mm. Um, and, all, and also, Tate and Paxley are still stalking Lyra Valkyria. We, mm -hmm. we learned that backstage through a door. That's how you know she's not going to be there. Ooh. <laughs> she's mesmerizing, though, that Tate and Paxley. I wonder, where, <laughs> I wonder where this sort of gimmick change had come from. And because last week I didn't believe you two that it was Tame Paxley. That was so I, great. I went on her Instagram and this seems to be more true to how she dresses in real life. She's a bit Goth, of, e isn't a she? bit of an emo, uh, yeah. So I was confused by her original gimmick, which was lady who goes to the gym. All wrestlers go to the gym. Goth's going to go to the gym. Goth's going to go to the gym. Just at night. <laughs> <laughs> um, no doubt Thea will blame her loss on Mr. Chase. I was, think I was thinking at the time. Because mm. at the time I was thinking Mr. Chase is innocent. Now we know. We know different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was good stuff here, but yeah, it was for the, the table top, which the crowd loved, because they're not plants. Stop saying that. Booker, uh, right in front of her dad as well. Yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah, it was just, whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Completely covered in your Kiana went through first. She jumped backwards. Yeah. And Roxanne was like, all right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> On TikTok, the metaphor and the AA exchange weird dance trends or something. Yeah, what the um, what is that? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, we cool. can do yeah. it better than you, but I don't know. I didn't don't suggest it. that, because they'll try and make us do it, won't they? Phrase uh, me like, oh, guys. <laughs> I think if you're over the age of like 25, this is just like an alien. I didn't understand what was going on. I mean, I got it because I know what, how things work in TikTok, but do I didn't you? go, well, yeah, and they're like, oh, we'll do this and we'll do this song and dance. But I'm like, I don't care. Right. I've done oh, a lot I can't have that white hot feud sorted on, on TikTok. Mm -hmm. I've done a lot of cringy stuff on my YouTube life. Don't say that. But no, I know I have. But one thing I can't bring myself to do is the whole mime and TikTok thing. Yeah. Like we did a few here. I hated it. I couldn't it. do it. I couldn't bring myself to do it. I need, I need to be drunk. It was, it was, it was, <laughs> Fraser would bring me in here. Come on, Jack, we just need to film three have a gun. TikTok yeah. things. <laughs> I think it's hilarious how it's just become like a, a thing that everyone does because you're like on like Facebook Reels, Instagram, it's just like the hottest person you've ever seen in your life. You're like, wow, clicking badly mime along and badly dancing to the, the worst song you've ever heard in your life sped up at 1.5 speed. You're like, cool. It's changing pop music. Songs are getting shorter and more like just aimed at TikTok. Have you seen sure. those clips of like people going to see someone because they know that that one song or that one bit right. from TikTok. So they'll do the chorus and then everyone <laughs> crouches oh. up. That's all they know. And they're kind of, <laughs> you can keep on singing, you know. And like, we have no idea what the next bit is. That's I watched the Barbie film. And oh, was not it great? Uh, oh. And right to, <laughs> I don't know. I, it wasn't for me. 
I appreciated oh. the like the feminist message and everything, but I felt like there wasn't much of a story to go with it. It was just I thought mm. in the last bit it just became characters saying their points to each other. And I'm like, all right. Um I thought Margot Robbie and Ryan Gosling were good and funny in it. Anyway, um, when that song kicked in right towards the end, it was that Billy Eilish song. Was like, ha, 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 ha. I was like, I've heard that a million times on like, oh, right. and it, it like I was like, oh. I thought it was fine. I, I'm gonna, I feel like I'm gonna get in trouble for not enjoying Poppy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I've still not seen it. Kayla won't go with us to see it. No, you want to yeah. see it? I want to see it. I I, a lot of people say it's good. I enjoyed the bit where they're in the real world and things aren't what they think. That, yeah. that was funny. But then when they go back to Barbie land, I was like, oh, okay. Anyway. Yeah. What's your film of the year? So Jack far, on film. I really it's enjoyed, like three weeks left. I really it? enjoyed Asteroid City, but people didn't seem to like it that much. I've heard people say good things. Mm. My mate said, you better watch it, and I didn't. So I hated it. But I've now. not seen Killers of the Flower Moon yet. Uh, uh, no, nah, I mean, I've just like... Was Cook Game Bear this year? Was that last year? That was last year. Last year. Times. Times. I know, right? Yeah. Crazy. Last year had like... That was the year I got into films, <laughs> and I had loads. I had the Everything Everywhere, Banshees of Inisherin. Mm. Yeah, that was great. Anyway, yeah. Who's this year? What? Cocaine Bear. No. Cocaine Bear was this year. Whoa! That is my film of the year. There you go. Sorry, what a Ross. great film. Was it good? CGI far ex- it exceeds anything you expect heading into the film. Oh, good. It's a wonderful piece. Great story of a lady who runs a park. Well, she's the ranger of the park, and the bear's there. Kids take cocaine. It's great. <laughs> right. What man, get, man gets eaten up a tree. <laughs> gets eaten up a tree? Yeah, he's up a tree and he gets eaten. Oh, is he pulled what? down. Yeah. Oh, the bear, wow. yeah, the bear's on cocaine and he can do anything. <laughs> he can fly. Does the bear talk? Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, it's a real bear. It's a real bear. Yeah, it's a ba- real story. Yeah. I, I, Everything that happens in the film is exactly how it happened in real life. <laughs> Cartel flying over, cocaine drops down, bear has the cocaine, bear hunts down little kids and humans and whatnot. Bear gets pushed off a cliff at the end and dies. Oh. oh, sorry for the story. <laughs> I'm still upset the bear dies. Oh. Was that really this year? It feels like so long ago since I, I watched it. It says it was released in <laughs> February, yeah? Right. Gosh, February man. doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's true. The year begins in March. Exactly. Mm. Lola Vice, Electra Lopez, interrupt an interview with Alea Vicaria. Lola points out that she can cash in a title shot for winning the breakout tournament at any point. Lopez suggests that she could go after the women's tag titles instead, which Lola seems a bit annoyed about. She was a little tiny, like... All right, leave. it's my title shot. Mm. And then Tatum Paxi appears. Sorry, terrible. Tatum Paxi appears and defends Lyra, setting up a match with Vice later on. Why hasn't she got a title match at Deadline? I don't know. Who? Lyra. Lyra. Oh, is it? Oh, why is she not defending it? Yeah. Where? What, what's happened? I was thinking that. Yeah, like, actually. I hope that Lola does cash in and has a title match at Deadline because I reckon a big PLE like this one would need a, right. need a title match. You think so? I'm really excited for Deadline. <laughs> I love the Iron Survivor match. I'm a big fan mm. of the Iron Survivor. Mm. I like them last year. I f- when they kept mentioning the penalty box this week, I was like, oh, God, what does that even mean? I had to go back and watch it just to refresh the memory. Yeah. Oh, you've got that was about what, it. what a gimmick it is. It's mm. a great match. Unironically so for people yep. who listen to this. Uh, Wesley arrives on crutches and reveals that he needs surgery and will be unable to face Dirty Tom, the North American title at deadline. And look, I'll just obviously skip the uh, pause for a second. As you're saying this, I'm thinking, wait, he's only just come back. This is a setup, isn't it? He's going to go, yeah, right. Yeah, nothing's going to stop me. I want to get you with a full sense. No, he appears to be legit injured. Eight to 12 months, apparently, he'll be out for. Man, that sucks. It's, it's a shame. Yeah, it's massive. Real he's tears. only just come back. Yeah. 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 Dom interrupts to mock Lee and brags about having the night off on Saturday, but not so fast. Rey Mysterio appears on the Tron, reveals that Dom will defend the title against Dragon Lee, the number one substitute everywhere. That was the Ray most Ray corner. sound and Ray's ever sounded in his life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was say, I'll see you there, <laughs> son. <laughs> Good luck. Good luck. You'll Watch try for your knee. Dragon Lee will be there. Dragon Lee. Dragon Lee. <laughs> <laughs> then Dragon Lee arrives and brawls at Dom and runs away. And it's like, oh, okay. Wow, that again, that just sucks. For yeah. Wes. yeah, it's horrible. Well, I know we laugh at the gimmicks in NXT, but I do. Yeah. Wesley is good, and it's just a shame. Uh, he always, I feel like no matter who he's wrestling, he always manages to get the most out of the match. Like the Dijak one that time. Yep. And no that one, was this year. No one was really looking forward to it, and then it was like maybe the match of that night and stuff. It is a shame. Yeah, but what what a move it would be to have Dragon Lee if they are like hell bent on pushing him on the main roster to be the guy. To be Dom and then be on the main roster with the title that Dom Ooh. has. That would be a step in the right direction. <coughs> yeah. Joins LWO, maybe. You know? yeah. I just assumed that Dom was winning because when there's a late sub like this, you normally expect the champion to retain, but mm-hmm. you never know. Anything can happen. <laughs> can. In, in the, the WWE. Yeah. 
Gary James in the medical room. Oh, God, here we go. Who is the blonde lady? Oh, don't Disney? worry, Emma, don't worry. <laughs> Not again. When her lackey arrives to check on her. Last week, we thought it might have been Tip Strats or Carmen Petrovic. It's actually Izzy Dame. Izzy Dame. Izzy Dame. Izzy Dame. That sounds like I an is, insult from London. Uh, Izzy, da- Izzy, Izzy Dame. Izzy Dame. It's blood. Izzy Dame. Izzy bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> you know thanks, Izzy? Fa- Sorry, thanks, Izzy, for having her back. And says next time she sees Roxanne, she'll end her. Roxanne is actually sitting feet away. And they have to pull apart. Fro- yeah, and, and, and Two it really beds is, down. <laughs> and it really is a cameraman moves, and then there she is. You what? Moment. What do you say about me? Uh, oh, is, man. Is, is, he, is, he have, come, is he having a laugh? And then for some reason, Ava Rain, Ava Rain, yep, yeah, that's right. Ava Rain shows up and says, well. She's the general manager? She'll make the match official for deadline. <laughs> She's assistant to the regional <laughs> And it's later revealed to be a steel cage match. Yeah, because Ava Rain comes out of Shawn Michaels' office later on. She's now an authority figure. Yeah. She's the go between the locker room and Shawn Michaels. Yeah, she's, she's a prefect. She's the Brian Danielson. She's the Brian Danielson, Danielson <laughs> yes. But it's twice, it happens later on with Carmelo Hayes, where she's like, mm-hmm. I've made this match official, like Adam Pierce would say on Raw. Yeah, everyone now knows that if you want to get a match booked, go and speak to Ava. It's a good role for her. What's less less wrestling. There? No. There's no sense. Why did it? Why? When did it happen? I don't know. Why? How? Well, is Shawn trying to get the rock in NXT? Is he trying to, like, butter him up? I don't know. Probably. Drake and Dwayne's complained. Yeah, my daughter's not a creep who's part of a cult. <laughs> Let's make her more of a general manager. <laughs> <laughs> also, What's... can you make everyone buy copies of Black Adam on DVD? <laughs> <laughs> it was weird as well how last week when this match was set up in the locker room, Alvarine was there and she did say like, why don't you two settle it in the ring there? But this time... She seems genuinely hurt that they're feuding. She's like, guys, will you stop? All right. It's the first time she's but had emotion. Why would she be? Emotion on the main, on, on that, on that next yeah, the first She's got no dog in the fight. No, I don't get it. Hilarious, though. But yeah. she just cares yeah. about her subordinates, obviously. Yeah. Subordinates. Yeah. That's what Dwight Schrute would call his co workers when he was the assistant to the regional general manager. That's right. Um, yeah, yeah. It we, made no sense, though. No. You know what? That'd make any sense, but luckily. After this, we get a hype package for the men's breakout tournament. Come on, I've written down everyone. There's three highlights for me. Do, in this do, one. Do, do. Three highlights. Riley Osborne is a live wire, and he's going to cut through all the competition. That's not what live wires do. And he's English. It. It's uh, B Priestley's fella, isn't it? Oh, IRL. Is that him? He's also in Chase U later on. Yeah. I noticed, yes. Uh, Keanu Carver didn't come here to break out. He came to break bodies. Yeah, it works. Okay. What are you, what are you, what are you Joe, snarling at that for? It's just because I'm imagining the do 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 and these stupid names. This segment was relentlessly funny. Like I was laughing, yeah, and I mean, then I didn't have time to recover when the next one came in. I was just yeah. like, oh. The amazing. names: Tavian Heights. Pick number one. <laughs> so Tavian get Hyde. with it. We're coming from the top, uh, and we ain't leaving until that's where we stand. Exactly. What? Wait, what? Yeah, no, that's he's... why he's my favourite. I, 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 <laughs> I made sure that he doesn't say we're coming for the top, and we won't stop until we reach the top. But he didn't say we're coming from the top, and we won't stop until we're we back at the, the exact same place we were when we started. Yeah. yeah, all right. He wants to jump off the diving board, but land on the diving board. <laughs> on the diving board, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. right. on high. Or, awkwardly so going down your... the ladder. So it's, just, it's clear that they've <laughs> ran out of names. Mm. So t- I don't know if Tavion's a name. It doesn't. Yeah, I think Tavion's is a Tavion name. a name. Yeah, I think. So. I've never right been. Ex- I think it's like <laughs> American. It's American one. I've never been exposed to a Tavion before. Mm. But Tavion High School. Until now, it sounds like something that should be on GTA Six. I've heard like I've heard like I'm sure like NFL players and stuff called Tavion. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Dion Lennox, a competitive theory, a ferocity, a passion, work ethic unmatched. Mm. Don't care about <laughs> so him. he doesn't even say a sentence. He says his name and then. This is just words. He wears quality. He, he wears glasses. He's a nerd. Yeah. He's yeah. Keanu James, but in man form. I think the next one's the one I'm most excited for. Yeah. Outside the ring, Luca Crucifino is referred to as a legal eagle of the law. Wait, pause. <laughs> yep. Not a legal eagle. Yep. A legal eagle of the law. Right. Well, I guess like, he I'm, could be a legal eagle of like bowls if you want to stick to the rules. And, yeah. 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 What he's about he's a, the law. Can you be a vigilante legal eagle? I don't get Of course like, you can. can you? Dog the bounty hunter is one of them. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And me. Okay. Yeah, fine. <laughs> And that'll translate inside the ring when he files a motion to win. Yes. This was so new. Catchphrase. So new generation. He's got a job, but he wrestles. And I've got a theory about uh, uh, him. Um, Luca Crucifino. Right, Italian name, lawyer. He was involved. Who's going to need... Was he with them? He was with them when they had the thing with... um, It was a year or two ago, but he was on NXT. He's been on before. Only you would remember this. He's been sat in the PC for two years at this point, but he was involved in one of Tony's storylines. He's the the mob's lawyer. 
Right. Uh, that was my theory, but it's just true. Yeah. Fair enough. Were, don't call a mob lawyer then. If, mm. got, if they're lawyered up, don't be calling them the mob. True. Um, Miles Bourne is the last of a dying breed. Oh, no, Miles, he's a nice lad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in uh, 23 <laughs> Paul <Bees>, yeah. <laughs> he's not going to win the tour. No, he's not. He's just there. Sweeping through the trees. Yes. Uprooting. Pick changing number three the for me. <laughs> that is where... So there's what? Trey Bearhill is bringing. Trey Bearhill. Have you seen what he looks like? Sweeping through the trees. Joe, Bear. can we get a picture of Trey Bearhill? On in my, the I can't remember, but in my mind, he looks like the Rocks character from uh, Moana. <laughs> like long, long, flowing, long flowing rocks. Nearly. Sweeping through the trees. Well, that's him out of Nassau. Oh, oh, no, he's got a different I gimmick. I love that album. He's got a different gimmick now. Oh, my. He's a bit more rustic now. Yeah, very much If you so. change the thing to this, oh, he's just so happy, isn't he? He's sweep, now this he's is sweep. pre pre gimmick, this. This is like me and Mark Callis days of, of Trey Bearhill. Uh, uh, but if you go to like ch- they change it to this week on the old tools at the top there, because it's 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 a look, so it is. If he's going to be on there, uh, please be on there. It must where's be on the top that. first one. No, that's no, not what he has. Click on work. that six way, se- uh, eight way. Sorry, but, uh, second row <laughs> to the left, to the left, to the left, to the left. What? He's on there. You can't really see him though. It doesn't matter. The moment's gone. There he is though. He's 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 very wild. He lives in the woods. He does. He's a bit liar. He's wild. Kenya. Bear. Mm-hmm. Coke. Uh, <laughs> Ob- Obafemi is the ruler, the destroyer, and to every single man he will allocate his judgment yeah. accordingly. This was a throwback gimmick from Obafemi, the way he was talking and whatnot. It was, it's from a bygone era. <laughs> Professional <I'll> say. <laughs> well, you say that, but he's doing the same like Nigerian accent Apollo Crews was doing for a while. That was from a bygone era. Yes, as well, it I was. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Unless it's his, if it's his real accent, fair oh, yeah, play. Yeah. When Apollo was doing it, whoa. Bless you. Bless you. It just says, this was absolutely amazing. I was not ready for this. It was phenomenal. On Trey Bearhill, though, there's a natural feud from already because he speaks about upro- uprooting trees. Oh, oh, my God. Oh. Keep him away from a certain E.T. Yeah. Eddie, Th- Eddie Thorpe. Yeah. E.T. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Really exciting future. Can you believe NXT. that wasn't the main event? Unbelievable. Keep your eyes on the legal eagle. Trey Bearhill and Tavion Heights. Yeah. Hey man, the legal eagle of the law. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry, the legal eagle of the law. <laughs> of the Thank you. Law. Let me confuse the illegal eagle. <laughs> and, and Miles. Come on, Miles. Yeah, I'm, Miles I'm, I'm, rooting, I'm rooting for Miles. Yeah, but, but Miles, is, he's a bit of a dick at the minute, isn't he, with the shooters mm. of Charlie, uh, sorry, Willy Wonka and uh, Drew yeah. Gulak and all those lads. So He's got a good heart. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's what he tells us. Lola Vice wins a quick match against Tatum Paxley. Lola celebrates while Tatum caresses one of Lyra's feathers in the corner. Ooh, uh. I nearly didn't notice that. I thought it was her own hair. <laughs> I think she. I thought so as well, but I think it was one of the feathers which Lyra doesn't wear anymore. Oh, because she, she's just a sporty lady now. <laughs> she's not a whimsical forest sprite. She must have been there yeah, down to the forest to the site where her victims were claimed or whatever the gimmick was, and plucked a feather out the ground mm. where the, the the victim once was. I don't know what a gimmick was back in the day. Raven this, lady. Yeah, she put that there so oh, I can find this later on. And she was, oh, I've taken the feather now. Oh, bollocks. I was starting oh, to well. think when I was watching this week's episode of NXT, like, it's quite funny, but when's it going to get to... Re- I wasn't ready for all these segments in a row. Yeah. I think Tatum Paxley is just, yeah, mesmerizing. What a performance. Mm-hmm. The entrance, all sorts. She yeah. had like a half job or entrance where she was already in the ring, but got to do a, like a pose and yeah. the music was playing. What a pose it is. Mm. Uh, there was a shoot black mask from the win, obviously, for, for Lola Vice. That's a big maneuver. Uh, there was a double leg takedown from that shooter, Lola. Then there was a nice switcheroo from Lola to set up a knee bar, which went nowhere, but it was smooth. Go on, Lola. So Lola was, Lola's doing well. I love hearing your, your description of all that. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, Lola. We see footage from last week of a beaten up Nathan Fraser. You should see the other guy. Oh, I was going to say, recovering from his match against Ilya Dragunov. <laughs> and he says that, and Axiom says, I, I did. <laughs> Lol. And jokingly gives him a spare mask. You're going to need this. They Lol. watch this podcast. What's the thing we keep saying every week? Put the guy in the mask. He does have to talk. Yeah. You literally said that last week. Yeah. yeah. They watch. Hello, Hello Axiom. Hello, Jordan. What's he called? Russo is his second name is the head writer of NXT. Oh, yeah. Surname is Russo. It's no. like the Jim Russo yeah, or something. Yeah, Come yeah, on. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. Russo. Uh oh. <laughs> Hopefully it's not a relation. <laughs> Explain so much. Uh, he admits he thinks Nathan got what he deserved. Nathan isn't happy, but they agreed to a friendly match for old times' sake. Johnny Russo. Johnny Russo. Oh. Joey Gargano. <laughs> Johnny Russo. Mm. Hey, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone do the bad booker movie. <laughs> <laughs> I never, it wasn't one of the ones I watched that much, but was Johnny Bravo's best mate a little girl? Yeah. Was she his pal? Was I he can't like remember I her? think she would annoy him. Because he's right. like, I want to find out all the cool mamas. And he's like, okay, you have to babysit this kid. He's like, no. <laughs> 
That's just a, an that's Elvis a, rip-off, a, you think about it. It's just like I mean, all is. the like knockoff things. Just like, yeah, this, Elvis. Yeah, the new cooler John Elvis. Elvis. impression you've got there. Nice. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> it is just Elvis, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, mum. The one that keeps getting brought up online com- consistently is when he's they, they, some evil goth woman like presses a button and he, like the shackles come in. So he goes, my mama warned me about women like you. I was hoping she was right. <laughs> <laughs> the bloke I don't know why that comes up in my The bloke who played Elvis last year still talks like Elvis. It's a hard thing to he give claims up, really. that his he claims that his voice has just always been. <laughs> well, when I watch Matthew Mahoney, hey, it takes me you know Mahoney. A, a good day to stop talking about. <laughs> we've definitely I've got to, we've definitely done this before. I know, but, we, but watch his stuff. It's just like okay, it's gonna take me a while to stop acting like that. But yeah, I guess so. But he's like, oh, I'd like to thank my mama and my daddy. I'm like, all right, I think his name's Austin. I'm like, all right, mate, you're not Elvis though. I don't know. <coughs> anyway, Axion was good in this segment, so he was. <laughs> Yeah, just so he actually was just not talking about like Elvis. He, he can't afford to lose. He basically does how deep his voice is. He's like a Spanish Elvis. Mm. Um, El, El, yes, yeah. El <laughs> Elvis. Uh, but yeah, he can't afford to lose his money maker, which is funny, lad, because he wears a mask. Yeah, and we can't see it, so it's really. This funny. is the most likable Nathan Fraser's ever been. Mm. I liked his admission that he oh, should see the other guy because we know, and he knows that we know that he got battered. And his mates there taking the Mickey out of him, and he's like, "All right, we can have a match." I would just, I, I, I liked a slightly more humbled Nathan Fraser. Yeah. This was an English thing because if you're in your lowest, you want your mates to be taking the piss out. Yeah, of you. it was. You know what? If, if actually come and go, "Oh my God, are you all right?" You're like, "Oh no, it must be really <laughs> bad then." It was unusual because that's normally what wrestling would have, yeah. like. Like Jey Uso and Sami Zayn, he didn't come up and go, you're crap, you. <laughs> Maybe you shouldn't have them. But I liked this segment, and I liked Nathan Fraser in it. Wow. We'll batter each other, then shake hands at the end. I don't know why I'm making myself like Cliff Richard. <laughs> <laughs> Never take pictures with overweight people. Yeah, really. <laughs> you're so ugly, I can't take a photo if of you right Elvis, now, Nathan. If El Elvis was going to reside on my fridge, he had to look his best. <laughs> <laughs> Up oh, the back. Alice and Hammond. Mm. <laughs> oh, yeah, she mocked him, didn't she? Baron Corbin is interviewed in the car park. Get out, Baron! Uh, and laughs at the suggestion he needs security to protect him from an angry Dragonoff. He says he has Ilya exactly where he wants him. He does. Mm. I was shocked he wasn't attacked by Ilya yeah. in the car park. It's where it happened. Captain Fate, right? Yeah. Yeah, but then NXT Anonymous shows us more footage of the night Trick Willie was attacked. Oh my God. <laughs> Trick oh my is God. seen chatting with Carmelo Hayes, but when he leaves the room, Melo sends a mysterious text. And what dun, happened dun, at dun. the start of the segment where Trick was attacked by Lexus King? He receives. Lexus is on the phone. Yeah. He receives a text. Oh, and we're not supposed to put these... De- this is what you meant last week, <laughs> with the bait and bait. It's- wow, what does this all mean? It's exactly what it says, that they've already said already. But I hope they're not going to change history because Lexus King admitted to being behind this mm. but didn't say he was the one who attacked Trick. But now it seems like the roles have reversed where it's Lexus who did the beating and Carmelo who put the hit out. But but I don't think it is because they made it way too obvious that that's what's happened. Yeah, can this end already? Yeah, man. I it's think getting, It's almost comical now. I've got a... I'll wait until the end, but I've got a prediction for what's going to happen at deadline. Ooh, can't wait mm. for it. And then Joe Gacy oh interrupts the announce team from the front row, showers Vic Joseph with praise, the point where he's so put off by people saying positive things about him that he, he needs a break. He turns British. Uh-huh. I yeah. thought Booker was going <laughs> to punch Joe Gacy. <laughs> I just don't understand what we're trying to do great, here. I yeah, I, the I, last I, three weeks, we've seen Joe threaten to top himself off the top of the performance centre. We've, uh, <laughs> we've seen Joe hide under the ring and then come out and steal the ring bell. And now he's showering Vic... I said Vic Reeves. He's showering Vic Joseph with love. Yes. <laughs> don't like the dove it. from above. <laughs> I it's don't get it. Bizarre. It's crap. Yeah. And what we've got to say it's crap when it's crap. Yeah. And this is crap. Well, I feel bad for Joe well, Gacy. Wait, Jack, what do you think? I think it's pretty good, actually. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's not bound by the rules of a wrestling universe. He's on the roof. He's under the ring. He's in the crowd. No one can contain him. I'm trying. It's really <laughs> bad. Really, really bad. Yeah. Alfred Academy take on the metaphor in a six-person mixed tag match. LL slams OTs, but AA managed to win in the end with Gable submitting Da. So this made me think, and I, I don't think I'd predict her if I was doing a predictions contest for it, but it definitely made me consider, is Lash going to win the Women's Iron Survivor? Because the reaction when she slammed Otis and the camera cuts and the pause in the action for everyone to take in, wow, I thought, ooh, this is something. More interesting than the result of the match, maybe. 
She's the fourth favourite in my eyes. Just the way the segment oh, goes later out on. Out of five? Yeah, out of five. Oh. <laughs> okay. so you've got Tippy Strats is in the mix. Is the one of the one of the top three. Mm -hmm. You've got Blair, not Blair, not Blair. Oh, Who's the other yeah, one? Blair. Yeah, I know Blair's there, but it's not, not the top three. Who? Mandel, Peter Mandel. Peter you've got Mandel. Blair, who's the other one? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, there was... The, uh, whatever, we'll get on to it later. But yeah, yeah, she's she's really like the, the, the step down from the favourite. Well, panel. Fallon's in there. Yeah, Fallon's at the bottom. No, I think she's going to win, you know. Oh, I really do. Fallon. Lads, don't. Fallon. Right now, I really want her to win, so next More week like, like Fallon. Fallon. You No, she's going to win. Fallon no, Henley. Every thing going to be all right. <laughs> <laughs> That's she's what she'll have to say to herself when she loses. Right. Oh. But right, there was so much to like in this match here. The main man, Mensa, was step for step with Chad, which is very, very good for him. Otis being creepy towards LL once again means mm. he deserved to take what is my move of the week, of course. Oh, my. Oh, oh baby. The scoop slam. That needs to take place on everything WWE do when they instead of showing Hogan and Andre, show <laughs> Last Legend and Otis. That's the very first thing you see when you watch a new program. What a slam it was! Um, I like the quick switch Otis did after failing to catch the main man Mensa. He sort of wanted to catch him, but he's, he fell on him. It looked devastating. It looked really yep. good. Uh, Maxine again was fantastic, like sort of being good but not quite good. It's, that's what she's supposed to be because mm -hmm. she's learning. I liked her uh, when Gable like. Was it Gable? One of them threw her over the top rope. She, she was like still on his shoulders, wasn't she? Yeah, Jumped. and then he went, that's my girl. And she was like, I did it. And I was like, oh, oh baby faces. And then the whole was a lovely finish from Gable reversing a kick into an ankle lock, hmm. which was smooth. It was Dar's yeah. like scissor kick, wasn't it? Yeah. And he, he caught it into an ankle lock. His Oasis reference, kick. I forget what his name is. I thought it should be called. Does he call that one as well? Because he's got the champagne super knee bar. Hmm. Yeah, it's it's something called. about no, maybe it's a, I don't know. Whatever. Nova Roller. It may, uh, well, Liam maybe. Gallagher's next band had a song called The Roller. So maybe it's... Mm. BDI. BDI. Would well, you know why he called them that? No. So they'd be near the Beatles in people's... <laughs> oh, like, really? Yeah. He was obsessed with like referencing the Beatles. He loves songs, John Lennon. He wishes <laughs> he was John Lennon. Yeah. Yeah. They've got a good song, haven't they? What was that song called? About 10 years ago? The Oasis. Or the Beatles? No, no. BDI. BDI. I don't That's know. The name of them. Second chance at the Apple. Second bite at the Apple. No. I don't know. I, it's not a way. You know, if you put it on, I'd probably hear it. I'd probably recognize it, but off the top of my head, I it's a toe tapper. Right. Well, tapping out is exactly what Dar did with the ankle mm, lock. Yes. So, yeah, it's nice that they're establishing, yeah, don't worry, guys. Gable can beat Dar if it's just one on one unfairly. It's like, yeah, we, we know that, but that's not a problem. This is a nice, fun six silly bollocks match. Yes. Uh, we're back in the man's pub. Hank. Oh, that made a weird noise. Ooh. When I did that, oh, my, yeah, sleeve, I heard my that. sleeves went, it was my sleeves. <laughs> Your wizard sleeve. Bloody Why hell. does it sound so moist? I yeah, know. God. What's it's in not. there? It's not. <laughs> <laughs> Hank and Tang went to speak to Gallus, who threatened to kick them out. The baby faces want to improve as a team, so they decided to challenge the most decorated tag team in NXT history. And it's like, mm, not sure about that. Belt. Is that because they've won the UK? Are they counting the UK belts? As I well? think it's oh, of nice. course they are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think they might have been champions over lockdown. Are they using that? When they well, were, they were, they were the team champs, tag yeah. champs as well. Oh, yeah, they most were, they decorated. Were. Um, hmm, hmm. Gallus don't take them seriously, but Hank and Tank mock Scottish things to provoke them into accepting a match, and it works. Hank was so brave in that sentence because he's like, Let's get these bam pots some haggis and watch the Glasgow Rangers game. Whoa. These are Celtic boys, yeah, not boys, the yeah, yeah. boys. No. Mm. Celtic Bahoys. And Wolfgang, Wolfgang, they sparked him out straight away. Yeah. Don't you mention that team in here? I liked his line at the start of the program. He's like, you can leave through the door of the windy. The windy. <laughs> Americans again. Comment down below if you understand a word he says. <laughs> <laughs> the windy. Yeah, all the bits here. Should have said, are you looking at me or chewing a brick? Yeah. You learn to walk before you run with the Gallus firm. Oh. They're calling themselves a firm now. They, they, they love They've calling them a firm. Yeah. 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 Because that's what, football hooligan that's groups That's right. Yeah. Three lads who haven't won a match in months. <laughs> <laughs> Coffee will put on one of those like streak up coats that football firm people wear for some reason. Mm -hmm. The other ones where you sort of like, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Are you in the firm? <laughs> I <ain't> prove it. <laughs> <laughs> Inspector Gadget coat. That's what oh, there we go. That's yeah, yeah, the yeah. vibe, yeah. They very much <laughs> yeah. wear... Are you into Inspector Gadget, pal? <laughs> <laughs> they very much wear like 2000s football hooligan attire. But I don't know what the kids wear. These are like... Zip up hood masks and yeah, stuff. Yeah, I don't get it. Bizarre. Stone Island, in it. Yeah. Get the badge in. Again, I will be staying away from Sunderland on the day of the derby. <laughs> Being nice in general. Yeah, well. 
Ross likes Sunderland as a city. Ah, excellent. Yeah. Had three happy years there. Mm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a poo hole, but when you're there, it's your poo hole. Yeah. Oh. That's just England, England in general. The people are largely yeah. friendly. It's good. But they're all got rat tails for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen so many rat tails in one place in the Sunderland circa 2011 to 2014. Oh. Baron Saxton hosts an in-ring interview with the five entrants in the Women's Iron Survivor Challenge. They all give a speech about why they'll win on Saturday, but end up arguing with each other. Byron gets angry. You said you wouldn't do this, <laughs> but Fallon doesn't care and attacks Tiff, and everybody <laughs> brawls for the second all big old brawl this episode. Yeah, uh, this is why I think Fallon's going to win. She was the main character of this segment, uh, in my opinion. It was the cinematography. It's the way the camera lingered on it, <laughs> like in Seven <laughs> Samurai. Stop it. Okay. Um, oh, because of rye whiskey? Because uh, it's a Kurosawa film. Oh, uh, but she's a bar lady. Oh, top shelf of NXT. I, I, I now... Oh, yeah, she's not the shelf. She's top what's shelf. on the shelf. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Sure. <laughs> I now really want her to... I'm fully supporting her now because of you lads. I oh. Doubting her. Oh, okay, good. The yeah. winner of the match wasn't even in the segment. What? Because if you scan the QR code that was on Byron's plinth, Uh-oh. I wouldn't dare. You got uh, apparently a do, virus. I didn't do it myself. Oh, like, yeah, I was too scared. But apparently, Cora Jade, the voice of Cora Jade, is heard saying, <laughs> "See you at deadline." Mm. <laughs> it is. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I, so is she gonna? She's, yes. She'll whizzle wazzle Fallon out of the match. <laughs> Like Edge and Kofi? Yes. Oh, Bollocks, no. I don't believe you. If there's going to be a substitute oh. on the show, she'll lock herself in the penalty that, box. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. Ross, Ross, are you mean to tell me there's going to be a substitute in the PLE and it's not Dragon Lee <laughs> doing it? No. I think Ross might be right. I thought Cora was going to cost Roxanne in her cage match with Kiana. But, but it's a cage match. That was silly. That would How be a great way for it to appear, though, if it was like Dragon Leslie, like <laughs> the female Dragon Lee. <laughs> <laughs> Just whaps up them. It's Cora Jade! No! Yeah. Um, I thought Tiffany Stratton was unbearable in this segment, but it was a good thing. She was like Gillian Hall back in the day. Oh, I nails was doing the same, but that was, nails on a chalkboard. It's supposed to be right. Yeah, and Kalani Jordan. I know she's like brand new, but she needs to find a way that it makes like she's not like memorizing the script when she's talking. Yeah, I mean, you say that, but some of the bollocks they've given these poor women. <laughs> but it was another another thing of like old men write women's wrestling. They're bickering. Yeah. Oh, these yeah. These women. Yeah, Kevin Keegan's uh, fingerprints were all over this. But then <laughs> Fallon said, well-behaved women don't make history. Or something like that, that, that quote. And then smack Tiff. That is a good line, actually. And I was like, she's winning this title. She's she's still fighting for this title. And then Brian Byron just be like, oh, girls, girls. <laughs> <laughs> he, when he lost the plot, it was quite funny. <laughs> you promised me this wouldn't happen. Yeah. Oh, no. Action with Nathan Fraser's match is interrupted by the Iron Survivor entrance brawling down back to the ring. Mm. Oh, the nice first way of, to do that. The first of two times this happened. Yeah, uh, Bland, uh, Blair Davenport. Bland Davenport. Ooh. Oh, he's shooting. I didn't mean to say that, but <laughs> now I've accidentally said it, I'll do it for real. Yeah, she'll, Bland... she'll attack you with all of the, the <laughs> violent vigor <laughs> of a, a lady scorned or whatever yeah. vernacular they give her, yeah. which isn't nice. <laughs> you can just make up a promo and it's like, yeah, that's what she said. <laughs> I, I but bland, so boring, crap, Davenport. I feel so uncomfortable oh, when he does this because she was so nice to me. <laughs> She's a really nice lady. Lovely yeah. lady. Well, what was, I know. Like, <laughs> but it's what they, what they give her is bad. Like when she was on yeah. a couple of weeks ago, you don't know how vindictive I can be in this mortal vessel I call upon. Oh, yeah. God. It's, it's Sabian adjacent. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Uh, Bane at the ramp, but Nikita Leon's music hits. She comes out and drops blur with the groupie kick. <laughs> the groupie, the groupie kick. The groupie kick. That's what's <laughs> um, I'm going to now refer to it as a groupie kick. Uh, I, I really laughed because <laughs> Davenport, unlike everyone else, recognized Lions as music. <laughs> like just, oh, I know who that is. And I was like, I don't. And, yeah. And then, yeah, it was Lions. I liked how shocked everybody else was, though, because like, di- why did they do the little tease last week where I sat in the crowd and everyone's like, oh, my know, God, she's yeah. here. I can't believe it. The bait and bait. <laughs> it's another yeah. bait yeah. and bait. Um, but yeah, I like the start of the Axion versus Nathan match. And when I the attack happened I was like yeah it is a good way to get it on the premium live event mm. but then you learn it's just going to be on the kickoff show oh is that the kickoff yeah, show yeah it's the kickoff match on ah, Saturday okay. <coughs> well, so once again NXT <coughs> doing the big stuff on the kickoff show like mm. they did at Wrestlemania weekend with Chase U beating the tree men and so, lady the one um, people to watch a free bit I guess on the network mm. and go oh boy I'll keep on watching so Axiom and Fraser is the pre-show match the pre-show right, match yeah. okay. the pre-show stoppers mm. I think they'll be good. It's quite mm. a, um, for an NXT special. It's quite a long card because you've got the two twenty-five minute Iron Survivor matches, and then like three other ones as well. One's mm. a cage match. Yeah, Jesus. Yeah, get your money here in the mm. award-winning WWE Network. Mm. Uh, Andre Chase oh, gives a speech <laughs> to the student body. 
He wants to make it clear that the person responsible for the misuse of university funds is himself. Everybody gasps, even though he admitted it last week. There's that bait and bait again. Thea Hale asks how much money he owes. Andre Chase admits it's hundreds of thousands of dollars, plus interest because he used a third party. Chase vows to get the university out of the mess and restore it to its full glory. Delightful Hudson asks what else the students could do to help other than sell his trophy, which he'll never do. Oh, yeah. Uh, various students suggest ideas, but uh, such as... Uh, a bake sale and a car wash. And a car wash. But Thea Hale is distracted by that total hottie, Riley Osborne. Oh, yeah. And she's so distracted, she looks at him and then music plays as if to give the impression that she's like, like, wow, love entrancement. But I'm like, is she remembering a past life? I don't, I don't think it was done that well. She didn't, with you. Her face didn't say, wow, he's such a total hottie. Her face was like zoned out. She was like, oh. I remember him. <laughs> yeah. He killed my family. It was like that type of like flashback. <laughs> I don't think it was that clear. I didn't until... understand what his, because she like notices him when he gives his suggestion for what the students can do to help. And it's weird. Like He's like, is there possibly a crash course on how to avoid these sort of situations. Yeah, well, how is that helpful? It's already happened. Yeah. There were so many bits in this that made it feel like it was about to be the intro to a Comrade Thompson advert about like, <laughs> getting yourself out of debt. But it was inspirational at the end where oh. Andre says he got me into the mess and he's going to get them out of the mess quick, as quickly and efficiently as possible. Uh, which was nice to hear and reassuring to hear. Yeah, quite which frankly. means he's going to burn it down. How has he still got any authority at all? He stands there so confidently going... Uh, I did. I blew hundreds of thousands. He of wasn't confident here. He was. He, but he was talks it. with quite. He talks with that same authority though. He's like, now, now, who's got any ideas? How can we fix this? I'm like, we don't know why he did it yet. Why did he mm. spunk all the money on okay. gambling and whatnot? And we students. still don't know why we're treating the Italian mafia wrestlers. Sorry, not the mafia. Sorry, legal eagle, but <laughs> like they're the good guys if they're causing issues like this. Oh, come well, they didn't on. allowed this man to build enough debt thing. where they can, like, oh, all right, we'll take university then. That's, I, I look at them more as like, oh, you guys. What, what are they really like seeing it? the effects of crime mm. in this? Andre went to them. They didn't go to Andre. Oh, that's all right then. Yeah. yeah. It's like Tony Khan of Ric Flair. <laughs> <laughs> that's way worse than this. <laughs> um, but yeah, it is. it was a heartbreaking segment. But I still think there's more to this than meets the eye. Why, wh mm. why did this happen? This wasn't just Andre being a gambling addict. I don't believe that for a I second. I like to think there's going to be more. But previous storylines don't fill me with confidence, specifically yeah. the one where Tony D was in jail for crimes. Oh, and God, Joe, that storyline. And Joe Coffey was there and said, and there was that weird bit with Stax betraying him for no reason, but then not betraying him, and it was oh, none of it was ever explained. Because Stax, Stax planned all of it, even though he couldn't have planned all of it, yeah. I think was how we got there. All right. But obviously our thoughts and condolences are with all the students who started the university after... Uh, the investigation took place because now they've lost all their student finance. So. Yeah, what a weird speci <laughs> specificity. Like, why don't I just say none of the students, you'll not, none of you will be able to get student aid anymore. Why only the ones who've joined after the investigation? What's with these? It's not real. Does Sean think it's real? And it's gonna, real. Oh, I don't know. It's, it's realistic. It doesn't need to be. <laughs> it's a weird storyline to get specific with. Wow. I would love to, if Michaels was in, like, oh, on the brink of going to uni, like, it's either get an education or wrestling, the old thing that parents say to American children around the world. Uh, if we got to, like, he's, joined, he's enrolled uni and then something like this happened and that's why he became a wrestler. Mm. Imagine if that came out. Because we all mm. know that NXT is just the life and times of Shawn Michaels and the different characters. Mm. What is Michaels' background? Did he Was he an amateur wrestler, like, all of them? Because he wasn't particularly, was he? I don't know, I can't remember. Dowd, Every, Dowd. Everyone always said that if... Um, if Brett clocked onto the screw job earlier in the match, he would have just battered Sean. Like, Sean would have stood a chance, apparently. Brett would have destroyed him. Yeah, I've got no idea. <laughs> were, you just, were you just imagining that? Like, oh, wow. Sorry, sorry. The, the, the that would have been amazing. It would have been a drool. That was, oh. <laughs> he said Brett Hart's name. Just think of something. Imagine if Brett... Right from the finish's point. Imagine if he battered him in Montreal. Wow. <laughs> Brett sees the screw job coming and Sean just beats him up. No, no, not Sean. Other way around. Other way around. <laughs> Oh, it'd be hot. The Montreal punch job. <laughs> uh -huh. Trick Williams has been watching the show and confronts Kamala Hayes about the footage from earlier. Hayes wants to focus on his match first. Trick says this is his last chance. Meanwhile, Lexus King is sadly interviewed and laughs about the situation. He says he wouldn't dare interfere in Carmelo's upcoming bout because he would never cost a friend a pay per view match. Oh, because mm. that's what happened to Trick. Remember? <sighs> you, yes. He knows what he's doing, doesn't he? The Lexus King. I. Uh, he's boring as bollocks. No, he's just not look good to listen to. 
He should they give him the Nakamura treatment. Everything he does is pre-recorded with lights and noise and subtitles. <laughs> it was good then, wasn't it? Yeah, because when he's there live, he's got nout at the minute. Oh. But yeah, it's clearly Lexus and Mello are in cahoots. I'm on board with that because Lexus wasn't ordering food on his phone, was he? Mello wasn't ordering food. Oh, is that where he went? He followed him outside. He was going to pick up Booker's door dash. <laughs> oh my God, he's been attacked with a door dash. <laughs> Eddie Thorpe is also interviewed ahead of his last chance Iron Survivor qualifier and says he's still pretty banged up but needs to win. By getting in the Iron Survivor challenge, he gets a chance at revenge <laughs> on Dijak. Mm. Talibate wins the match. <laughs> <laughs> he likes Thorpe. trees as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he, he loves them too much. <laughs> Beating Thorpe, Mello and Joe Coffey. Again, part of the firm who don't win anything. Firm. He uh, cuts a promo afterwards, but is interrupted by Dijak, who kicks Thorpe <laughs> as he's being helped to the back. What a dick. And then Bron Breaker interrupts, but is interrupted by JB, who was interrupted by Trick Willie. Trick says he'll whoop everyone, but Dijak says the only person he should be whooping is his so-called best friend. Uh, Trick starts a brawl, and everyone gets separated by security. Mm. Trick needs to tra- or have them trademark the word whoop now. Because that's going to work on the main roster when he's going to whoop that guy, whoop, whoop that oh, guy. Uh, so yeah, we can't have another yeet situation happen again. But I thought in the match itself, I thought it's the best that Eddie Thorpe has looked by a country mile. Like I thought his offense so far, like in this match, has been really basic. And like when he puts, <coughs> there's no real stank on what he does. Mm. But in this match, there was lots of stank. Like his lovely spine buster on Mellow after some stuff off the ropes I've written down. Some analysis. Stuff. Um, obviously Mello was really good Coffee and Bate were also there but then Coffee wipes out Eddie on the with the shoot spine buster on the stairs then there was a double missile drop kick mm. and he was looking good and then I thought Tyler was good in the end That was that's all I've got written down do you notice Tyler's nameplate when he came out at the graphic it was made a hem like a hippie it was one, proper it? like it was like how oh. you describe him like as a character in the magical faraway tree or whatever like it's all like leaves come no. up and stuff it's, it's good wind in the willies but yeah. you know why he won the match though it's because med- meditation has allowed him to get a new view in his career. Mm. That's why he won the match. He's normally very calm. But now he knows. <laughs> he's going to I was him. even more calm. Yeah. Um, I wonder if he's in the match to take the falls and that. I know everyone takes falls in these matches, but I don't know. I reckon Trick Willie will get screwed. Trick Willie. Oh, should I say my prediction? I think that it'll go to sudden death. Uh, when I was reading, I like Ross, I had to go back and remind myself of the rules. <laughs> There's a sudden death overtime between like whoever's tied at the end. And I reckon it'll be like Bron and Trick. And that's when Hayes will screw him. Yeah. Right at the death. Who knows though? That would make sense actually. Yeah. I think I it's got to be, it's gotta be a Hayes heel turn. I don't want the story to just be, it was Lexus all along and we're still friends. I want heel Hayes. It would be a bait and bait, though. One of the best bait and baits we've seen so far. Oh, we've seen Tyler Bait as well. Whoa, <laughs> what's a clue. He's in the match for the swerves. That's why. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Camilo Hayes asked Avare <laughs> for a mysterious favour backstage. Which is then immediately explained. She says, consider it done. Mm. Like a GM would do. Yeah, she's the assistant to you. How has this happened? She's got an offer rain <laughs> raining over the yeah. Cool yeah. And Trick asks Mello once and for all if he asked Lexus King to take him out. Mello says he'll prove his innocence by beating King at deadline. Wait, what? And if Arva can get the match booked. Trick says, fine. At deadline, Mello opens a show, but Trick closes the show. Mello doesn't look pleased. How does that prove that? I can explain. Don't worry. I think it's quite simple how to explain that. Why would he, if he was in cahoots with Lexus, why would he then batter him in a match? Yeah. And why would all, why would he also forego his slot in the main event if he didn't like Trick? Well, part of the plan. Mm. It's a bait. At the moment, it's a bait. Mm. It's a bait. A bait is on. But mm. is the bait a bait or is the bait a swerve? Mm. Find out on Saturday. I'm on the edge of my seat. I'm really excited. Oh, <laughs> I am excited for all these twists and turns heading into deadline. <sighs> Eddie Dragunov and Baron Corbin have a face-to-face in the ring ahead of their top match on Saturday. Ilya says Corbin has made this personal, and he'll pay for it. Corbin accuses Ilya of walking out on his son. Dragunov says maybe there'll be no title match on Saturday, and said Corbin will be leaving tonight in an ambulance. Corbin continues to provoke Dragunov, but Ilya hugs him instead. Aww. He tells Corbin that the only one who can destroy the dragon is the dragon himself. Oh, Corbin looks that. concerned. The man's Iron Survivor entrance brought back down the ring like we just yeah, saw like 20 hell? minutes ago. Talbate stands tall, full of hemp. To end the show. <laughs> <laughs> I really hated it. I, I felt myself shriveling up into a ball 
when Elia was like, the only person who can hurt the dragon is the dragon himself when he hugs him. Because Corbin, I thought Corbin was really good in this segment. Like, he was just He's being really real and what he was saying. Like, you could tell it was, like, you know, sort of based in reality, if you want to believe that sort of thing. But his delivery didn't feel like he was, like, reciting lines. He was just, he was on the ball and then. He's been all dramatic on the other side of the ring. And I'm like, I know who I'm cheering for. <laughs> Not you, you Actually, weirdo. <laughs> Ilya's told, right, your best quality is your intensity. Sometimes that works really well, and sometimes it's too intense. Some intensity is nice. Uh, too much intensity is not nice. So to see like him going, hugging him and going, Z-Dragon, Z-Dragon. It's like, all right, calm down. Yeah, like, dial, dial it down, down. like you. But, it could yeah. be old Ross Geller. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, the noise the crowd made when he did the hug just showed that no one was understanding what was going on. <laughs> yeah. It was the, the, the hug pop. <laughs> oh. You suck and you abandon your family and you stink and I'm going to beat you. Hug. Well, I thought okay. it was to show, and I don't think it was effective, but I thought it was to demonstrate that Ilya's not going to rise to Baron's mind games. He's going to hug him instead. But like, mm, That's why, what we want to see in a wrestling why not show. Just, why not just batter him? There was no, like, claws, like the match will be off if you don't, you know. That was weird. It's one of those ideas that was a lot better on paper. Mm. Yeah. If the intensity is going to be, I'm going to eat your skin on Saturday, it's like, hooray. It's like, I'm, I'm, I'm so intense, I'm going to hug you and do now. It's like, intensely do nothing. That seems a waste of energy to me. Mm. It's like, I'm going to have an energy drink and then sit down. Just sat on the sofa making all the blood go in your head. Ooh, what's on, TV? <gasps> what's on the television? No. <laughs> what, in his cold, cold, lonely apartment? My oh. cold, lonely apartment. Oh, no, I don't have a TV. That's right. I sold it. <laughs> to our <truth>. For pills. <laughs> And as I'm doing this, I've just been sent a message from a friend of the podcast, uh, huh? Jake, who's just, who is the elusive Jackie Jobber? And it's on Ask UK on Reddit. Oh, God. And it says, growing up in the black country, it no? was pretty common in our house to tell someone that they look like Jackie Jobber. Oh, God. If they were looking a bit scruffy, hair untidy, shirt button wrong, things like that. I'm now 30, so last night I dropped this his line... So I dropped this line for the first time in front of my wife, who's Ukrainian. She immediately asked, who's Jackie Jobber? It suddenly hit me that I haven't the faintest idea who Jackie, perhaps even Jackie, i.e. Jobber is. I did some Googling, as I did with Gordon Bennett, when his name first cropped up, and I couldn't find anything zilch. Does anyone know this elusive Jackie Jobber? Is it a UK-wide phrase? Is it a local black country saying? Or did Jackie Jobber once slight someone in my family, and we now forever curse their apparent unkemptness? <laughs> Did you know you were a thing in black country? <laughs> I've, I've, I've never heard that expression. And I feel like with my YouTube name or whatever, being Jack the Jobber, if it was an expression, this many years in, I would have met someone from that part of the country who has heard it before. I feel like it would have been mentioned to me. Tom would have mentioned. Tom's from yeah. the black country. Yeah. I don't know if Worcester... Ca they're really specific about what counts yeah, as the black I'm country. Yeah, I'm sorry. He's from the West Midlands. He's near Birmingham. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Sorry, I see you. <laughs> but like, yeah, no, about all the replies are like, nah. I've lived in that country my whole life and never heard of this. Is it a family thing? So it's just maybe it's just one family. Are you just reading your group chat? No, this is Ask, slash Reddit, ask UK yeah. Reddit. But he's a friend of the... Oh, someone sent this in. Oh, yeah, someone sent it and goes, he... someone says he knows about our Jack. <laughs> oh, is this someone I know? What, it's you? Oh, no, no, sorry, no, no. no. Jake. J uh, what was his name? Jake's thoughts on. Right. He messaged me all the time, so... Oh, he just messaged me? I thought he messaged all you guys as well. Oh. He's my friend. Nobody tells me. He's in the dark I'm order. <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. That's cool. That's like Homer Simpson finding out he's a Japanese uh, commercial. Yeah, Mr. Sparkle. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I've never heard of this before. Yeah. No. Oh, crazy that. If you're from the black country, can you get us a message about that? Uh, and we'll move on to AW Dynamite. Mm. John Moxie beats Roosh with a sleeper hold. It's the bulldog joke, isn't it? In okay, the yeah, CC. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was all hyped up for this. John Moxie Roosh. He had like the body scissors around it. it was, oh, I guess, yeah, you did. No, you are right, it, yeah. No, but it, it was the, But it was Moxley's unkempt, yeah. quite his Jackie Jobber version of a sleeper. <laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah, I saw a lot of people not happy with Roosh after this match, so I'm intrigued to hear Why? what you guys think. Well, oh, okay. Not no. selling. Well, Roosh's thing is he's all <laughs> action, no no selling at all, but I, I like that because it gives him a sort of a different style of uh, presence and ring style in AEW, and I don't want it all converging to be the same. But the finish saw then I'm actually fighting for his life, basically put him on the bulldog choke and then put him in the you know, sleep or whatever. And then Roosh like, no, 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 no. Tap, tap, tap. All right, cool. Then Roosh immediately got up and protested, protested the ref. And then Moxie's still on the floor going, oh, that was a fight. And people were just furious with him. Well, rightly like, so. Hey, yeah. What a day. Like, wait a minute, hang on. It would make sense if he tapped immediately and you can go, oh, he's preserving strength for the rest of the CC. That makes sense. 
but he did that. Rooster and then, and then, oh, I'm I'm back from being KO'd. Who does he think he is, this yeah. Rouge fella? <laughs> does he think he's Taz? I know. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I remember noticing that about Taz. He didn't really like selling much for these WWF no. types in 2000. And that's what Rouge is a bit. Oh, that is that is a shame. All offense, no defense. If I was a wrestler on the same roster as Rouge, I don't think I'd like him. What's your gimmick? I'm the strongest and best one. <laughs> right. <laughs> Right. Okay. <laughs> hey, Roosh, any ideas what should we do for you and give you an idea? How about you put the title on me? Yeah. And then what? Then I beat everybody. It will be interesting <laughs> if he does get his dream match with Adam Copeland at Wembley, just to see who loses and how. Uh, I'm all he lost today on this show we're talking about. Sorry mm. about that, Adam. But it's yeah. to his friend Jay. Mm. Yeah. But then I thought, apart from that ending, which was bollocks, like now you've mentioned it, it was a, I thought it was a pretty good match. I like, oh, yeah, I like, I like the, the landing on the shoulder from the belly to belly throw right at the yep. start, which played into the match. It was just a story of a, a, a I've written down a cow man being cocky because, oh, uh, and a brawling man not taking kindly to the cockiness, not mm. taking any bull. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, is a cow man not a bull? A bull, a bull yeah, a bull. The cocky bull. Mm. Look, if he wants to be a cow, he's a cow. The cocky right? bull story. Mm. The, the cow girls. Cocky and bullwinkle. <laughs> <laughs> it's good, like, just, yeah, because it fits. John Moxie's going, I'm beating up, I'm tired, but I'll take some pills and I'll be even more <laughs> tired, to be honest with you. That's just how it works. And then Roosh is like, I'm fine, mate. <laughs> I'm just going to beat the hell out of you. So yeah. that was nice. Like two, like a uh, kid smashing two toy trains together repeatedly. I'd just get rid of Roosh if I was Tony Khan. I saw like a bunch of people saying, like, wait, we, hassle, don't we need team players on this program? Yeah. What's this dude just... Maybe he was annoyed because he was doing the tranquilo pose that has to stun every opponent. But Moxie just went, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> him the BBC News presenter. Got a big pop as well. <laughs> you did, I he did give him the BBC News presenter. Renee interviews Roddy Strong in the Kingdom on the stage. Strong again reiterates that MGF is the devil and will stab Smojo in the back. Roddy says he will no longer suffer the consequences of his decisions <laughs> and... After we had the r pop last week, we get the Linda McMahon pop this week. Shockingly, stands up from his wheelchair. Mm. Praise Jesus. Yeah. And Taven throws it off the stage. <laughs> and like Zach Ryder. Kind of near. It goes near a cameraman. I was like, oh, careful. I was. It was very good. Pro, it was very funny the way he's just saying he's do, do, no longer suffer the consequences for his decisions. But the bit where he's like, the wheelchair has held me back for far too long. <laughs> far too long. And that's the end. I was like, what's happening here? He is <laughs> what does that mean? So you can't think of anything to say to end something. So I'm going to say it again. <laughs> again! I, it's grown on me a lot, this Roddy Strong thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I just wonder what, what's next now he's, now he's not in the wheelchair. You can always go back to it. He'll be a devil man. One of the henchmen. One of the henchmen, yeah. Ah, the devil's not in the wheelchair. That's right. Yeah, because mm. there was a picture that came out from, I think it was last week's collision. Not the one we've reviewed here, but the one before where the devil people appeared, I think it was on that show, and one of them just looks like Matt, uh, Mike Bennett, and the other one looks like Taven in the mask. So how can you tell? You can tell it's Bennett. The picture I saw, you can just see it's Bennett's head. Really? There's no way to describe it. It's oh. just, it's just, you can see it's Bennett's head. Um, the other one is not quite so distinctive, but, but yeah. is he taller? I don't know because we're sort of crouched down. Uh. It's when the MJF's getting held back, like on the on the uh. mat. Mm. Um, but yeah, if you see the picture, you'll understand what I mean. Uh, so he got rid of his wheelchair, just like Davros and Doctor Who. <laughs> Uh, Hangman Page shows up backstage. I just thought that. That's <laughs> shows up backstage the first time since he lost to Swerve. He admits that he lost at full gear, but he knows that the one thing Swerve wants more than anything in the world is going to make sure that he never gets it. MGF appears and congratulates Hangman on the Texas death match, saying it was impressive to see two wrestlers compete to see who could get the most STDs. Whoa. They argue back and forth and accuse each other of being the devil. A fight is about to break out until Samojo comes along and tells MGF they have other business to concentrate on tonight. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I was like, what's, a, what's MGF doing here? Creating more enemies when he's already got 25. Yeah. And then it was like, oh, so he thinks he's the devil. So that's, I was like, that makes sense come the end of the segment. Yeah. I'm glad yeah. there was a point to that. Not yeah. just, it's my time to be a dick. Yeah. But he um, was, though. He was a bit of a dick. Yeah. He was like, oh, you're but in that's la- good, though. You already lasted six months, did it? My, I was better, I'm a better champion than you. I've um, missed that MGF over the last little while. Oh, he's been, I, been too wishy washy, hasn't he? I found him annoying, but I don't know if it's just you're meant to. Yeah. You might feel bad for Hangman. I felt bad for Hangman. But is I, Hang- I didn't feel bad for Hangman. Oh. He lost. What, so the, the, the dude who has lots of evil friends who interfere in matches all the time. Well, I'm challenging you to a no DQ match. But he's the good one. He's all right. He broke into but, his house. You're right. You're right. Hangman Page and all his friends just showed up to defend him. Oh, wait. Like, <laughs> when I was a kid, obviously was taught to hate Newcastle United, but I always liked Luar Luar because he did flips. And Hangman 
It's the elite of Newcastle. <laughs> Hangman's the Lomana Luana. <laughs> the who? Lom- I thought it was his name. Lomana. Lomana. Lomana Luana. Lomana Luana. Some of the Samaritan. Yeah. I like Luana Luana because he did flips when he scored. <laughs> Never really scored. Did he? He was all right. Yeah. Okay, yeah, fair enough. He's got a few. Yeah. Some way worse. Uh, but I think, is this hitting that maybe Hangman and Swerve are going to be a title feud down the line? Because he's on a, when he's on about, um, I know what you want from this life and you'll never have it. Is that the world title he's on about? That's Swerve? fantastic. After MGF's finished his feud with Bloody Wardlow and finished his feud with Bloody Samoa <laughs> Joe and his finished his feud with Bloody Adam Cole and finished his feud with Roddy Strong. Fantastic. Yeah, cool. Lots of stuff set up for in the future. I was just wondering what uh, Hangman knows that Swerve wants that he's going to stop Swerve from getting. Oh, I assumed the title. Yeah. yeah. Unless it's his child. Do you want my child? <laughs> <laughs> You're never going to get him. Fair enough. That's a totally understandable reaction. <laughs> um, if it's a title, then that would play into what... I think it was on the interview with Chris Van Vliet that Swerve did. And he said he, he is ambitious. He wants to be the first black AW world champion. And they should just immediately let him be the world champion. Like He's just really good. But Hangman should try and stop him as well. They need to get the belt off him. Do you have to do that? Anyway, anyway. It's never happened, apparently. What? Uh, and then Swerve Strickland beat Mark Briscoe in the CC, meaning Mark can no longer ma- mathematically... Blah, mathematically... Is that right? <laughs> mathematically. Mathematically win the <laughs> tournament. <sighs> if you move house, only do it once. Uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Which is a shame for Mark. He was really good in the, like He got a lot of offense in, in this because this, this match didn't have as much right to slap as it did. Or whatever mm. the kids like to say. Mm. I wasn't expecting much. Oh, it the, humped. The, the, it did it was on a Wednesday as well. <laughs> it humped on hump day. Because, um, yeah, just surprising how, <laughs> surprising how much offense he got in just because he has, you know, lost and, and, yeah. d- 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 and uh, sw- God, I'm telling Boris Johnson. Yeah. <laughs> What's happening? Go hide in the fridge. <laughs> Considering how much Swerve's won and he's lost, I was just expecting it to be just an easy win for Swerve. But no, he was very good. One of the highlights was a suplex off the barricade to the floor mm. from Swerve to Mark. Yeah. That's just about all I've got written down there, apart from Mark was good. Yeah. <laughs> I was putting a couple of letters, redneck kung fu. <laughs> He's yeah. good in this role as like the plucky underdog who ultimately loses, but you get behind him in the match. Yeah. I wonder what he's going to do for the rest yeah. of his matches. Like, just low blow them straight away? Yeah, you might as well. No, he's too nice, isn't he? He's like, mm. I assume you get an individual winner's purse for each match. I don't there know. you go, yeah. Yeah, why not? Otherwise, why bother? Well, yeah. And Matt Briscoe has not shown up again. Not so yeah, again yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> uh, Mariah May is interviewed backstage. She was in Japan, you know, and says her meeting with TK went very well. They Can both want Japanese wrestling. They both want to make sure her debut is as good as possible. She doesn't reveal her first opponent, saying the focus should be on Tony Storm and her first title defense. And of course, you can't have the two women's matches on Dynamite. Both <laughs> be right in the street, obviously. <laughs> Uh, she says she's been studying Tony, though, so that could either mean, you know, one of two things, either she's being nice to Tony or studying Tony, because that's her first match, because she hates her, oh. which she showed last week. Mm. I've just come up with a brilliant and creative idea. Tell us, Jack. <laughs> what if Mariah beats Tony, and everyone round Tony, like Luther, RJ City, and that, they all pretend like Mariah's always been Tony, and Tony starts to go mad, thinking, was I ever... <laughs> the women's what was that? Was I? Was I yeah, ever? remember Tony? You took Mariah May's gimmick of being the old film star. What? Yeah. <laughs> Because anyway. that is quite film noirish. Yeah, it's all, yeah, like, all yeah. like identity theft and I all that. I fully stuff. agree with that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> of course, Ross. I'm still sick of film noir off the top of my head. Then, oh. what does that mean? <laughs> I've uh, legitimately never heard film noir in my life. Noir, it's a genre. It's like um, oh, right. Sorry, I thought we can. No, it's I like <laughs> noir is like dark detective-y mid twentieth century. Ah, it's all like Hollywood stuff based on the German expressionism. Yeah, like all the Germans went. Well, German what's happening in this country? Oh, uh, taxi. I know, and, and then flew to Hollywood. And it's did the this stereotype stuff there. of like you like when there's like a Home Alone. No, like a moody. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Yeah, <laughs> like a, like a moody detective smoking a cigarette. Like uh, the troll went yeah. cold. I don't know what. Yeah, yeah. My my parents have left me behind I'm in the house by myself. Full of lead. <laughs> no, 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 it's not Home Alone. Home Alone is not a noir. I'm going to give you can I <laughs> no, count no, at 10. Home Alone itself. <laughs> oh, right. That little bit of Home yeah, Alone yeah, where yeah. he's scaring the pizza yeah, lad. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. I guess that's more like a gangster. One, two, <laughs> ten. <laughs> <laughs> I love that bit so much. <laughs> Congratulations to the Coke. Let's do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He started, yeah, yeah, yeah. We do Jag on Film. He showed we do up. Ross on Noir and he watches Noir <laughs> classic yeah. every week. But the Noir. It's like, uh, on, today on Film Noir, Shrek. <laughs> Well, you could do a noir reading of non noir. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. But yeah, the cold got his Hollywood star and he invited the, the, the one who played his mom in the films. He was like, Catherine? Yeah, yeah, thank you for inviting me. Because <laughs> she's, she's got big on the show that I can't say the name of because it sounds like a swear word. S Words Creek. Oh. 
because she plays the mom in that and she's really funny in it. And she's people, in Pooh Creek. Yeah, she is in Pooh Creek. I don't know if she was in I don't know she says Bebe. Yeah. The Bebes. <laughs> she's a really funny character. She's like a like a washed up actress, basically. She's like kind of Tony Stark. <laughs> oh. Like, oh, yes, the Bebes. And she's just really funny. Um, but people didn't realize that she, that was oh. Alex's mom. Yeah. Good for him. Hmm. And her, I guess. Uh, Samoa so Joe makes his entrance, but the lights go out, and he's surrounded by the devil's henchmen. The devil briefly appears in the Tron before we see MJF unconscious backstage. Joe rushes to the back. Got your money. Stick a can in her. <laughs> and he sprinted, by the way. He, he put he his can. effort in there. Yeah. He really did. So yeah, there's kind as, of... as did the fans did to get the refunds. <laughs> so we know that Mike Bennett was a previous devil because he's had the, the head of Bennett on that one. Kyle O'Reilly's one of them on this segment here because he's got the, the hunch of O'Reilly. Uh, but the, the bottle spot, two mm. big clues, or maybe it's one, I don't okay. know. Real glass, Jack, oh. Jack Perry reference, <coughs> or beer bottle, was it Hangman? Because it's beer. Oh. It's mainly James Storm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One of the minions comes out on the, the thing he used to write. When he was in beer oh, running. what was that called? Oh, I can't remember. The, the Boola Cooler, Cooler or something like that? Yeah. Boozer Cruiser, maybe? Boozer Cruiser. Yeah. Boola Cooler. That, what's a Boola? <laughs> it's a horrible. <laughs> Why would you even say that, Jack? Yeah, so that's a good thought there, uh, Ross. Cheers, Matthew. I like that as well. I didn't notice that. But mm. maybe try to think, I was trying to think who like, has beer as part of their shtick in AEW. Of course. The Hangman. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The Raging Alky. And yeah. then, but yeah, Real Glass. Damn it. Real cool. Mm. Moxie cuts a backstage promo saying he expects to win the CC because he's the ace of the world. That sounds like something Tony Schiavone would say. No, sorry, Michael Buffer would say yeah. about Kevin Nash. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he stands over nine feet tall. <laughs> he is a citizen of the world. Oh. He is half man, half power bomb. <laughs> what if it was him who beat up Trick Williams? What? My, Michael, Michael Buffer? Buffer. <laughs> Kevin Nash. <laughs> No, no, go on the first one. Because when you text someone, it's Kevin Nash shows up and beats them up. <laughs> Did you ever see you Don't Mess with the Zohan, the Adam Sandler? No, I know. And it's a weird it. flashback memory of it. The the main villain is Michael Buffer. I didn't <laughs> even know he did acting. Me neither. Is he good? Mm. Okay. It's an Adam Sandler film, so I mean. I know. wish I had his game. Why Imagine Buffer? doing his job and getting paid as much as he did for doing that. Yeah. The, the respect the hustle. I think the kids. What's that thing about like what's that Bruce thing you say? Don't fight the man who knows the thousand moves once, but he knows that one move mm. a thousand times. Yeah. It's, it's him. Goldberg. Story on. Oh. Two. Um, Michael Buffer is definitely the classier of him and his brother. Yeah. Bruce is. I can imagine being like called Bruce? Fun, fun Time Bruce, isn't he? Bruce. Might not be his nickname, Fun Time Bruce, Bruce Buffer. Tries to get himself over too much, I think. Gets mm. right in the fighters' faces. Riding! True, but I mean, at that point, people are like, yeah, gagging for it. Mm. So, I mean. It's yeah. time. Five rounds in the UFC. Okay. Yep. Nah, I like him. Uh. Swerve so Strickland interrupts and says he's willing to do whatever it takes to win. All right, well, Mox is like, good, me too. That's how the segment ended. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that nice? And then Ben, ooh, Makiewicz, I think, of TCM, bloody hell. Turner Classic Cinema Movies. movies. Classic movies. So <laughs> that's, that's full of film noir. Is this like an important thing? It seemed to be. I, know T- I thought TCM wasn't a thing anymore, to be honest with you. It maybe, like, it's, maybe it's an old reference to something. I've not, I'm, I'm adept here. I've not is it like TCM. the Criterion Collection? No, uh, oh. the TCM, like, Ted Turner bought a load of old stuff, um, like, just footage and stuff, like, films is one of them, and that's when back in the day before networks and, like, streaming services were a thing, and people were like, ha you're an idiot, what a waste of money. Obviously, he was ahead of his game, so he set up Turner Classic Movies. It's like all the right. all the films Turner <laughs> had the rights to. And that, in this country, um, was when Cartoon Network would stop and turn into TCM, and then we'd get, you know, Casablanca, The Godfather, the whatever, and then you'd also get... WCW Monday Nitro and the <laughs> oh, Thunder, which okay. is bizarre. And people go, why is this on th- the movie channel? And people go, because it's the highest rated show. Anyway, I have no idea why this, who this guy is or why he's here. And this is Tony Storm, who is set to defend her title against Sky Blue, who's really motivated. Tony wins, <laughs> but her celebration is interrupted by Rio. She attacks, but gets drop kicked to the apron. Dr. Luther carries her away, while Rio stands tall in the ring. Yay. Not as tall as she can be, you know, she's only a little. But yeah. All right, Jim Ross. She weighs 98 pounds. Have you heard? Ah, oh, oh, crap, that. <laughs> I thought the response would be bigger a bit for Rio. People were quite excited, but I thought it would be bigger when that... Do, 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 yeah. do, do, do. I think people are just so much into Tony Storm right now. It's just like, mm. oh, I don't want to think of someone beating her. True. And if there's one who will, it's Rio. Mm. Do you think? Oh, she's a multi-time women's champion, isn't she? Yeah. Has uh, she, she had it twice? I don't know. Rio, Rio made me feel 
<laughs> like boiling line contact. <laughs> Seeing her again made me feel quite sad. Reminded me of really? when AW was more of a family, Good. you know? <laughs> I thought it was corrupted by all these. I'm going to message from Brian Danielson. So just... <laughs> <laughs> um, I like the intro for the match where he t- the Ben talks about Tony redefining what it means to be a human being, like Garbo and Brando and Groucho. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Unless Groucho. <laughs> Let me fake that. Unless Groucho is an actual famous person, I don't know. Groucho Marx. Yeah, they all are. Oh, yeah, oh, Groucho sorry, Marks. Sorry, those are Modern, all real Modern people. Brando. I thought it Garbo meant... Garbo was a silent actor, so they basically did a film where Garbo, I thought it meant... Garbo Speaks was a big thing. Um, Sesame Street, I thought. I'm sure that Jim Garbo Cornette... said... <laughs> Who's no, Garbo? Gra- Groucho. <laughs> oh, 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 right. That yeah. was a legitimate mistake I made there. Oscar the Groucho. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Oscar the Groucho. Oh, it's Oscar the Groucho. <laughs> <laughs> Oscar the Groucho. <laughs> yeah, matter. Groucho Marks and the Marks Brothers. I'm sure that... Um, I'm sure that Jim Cornette often unfavorably compares Kenny Omega to Harpo Marx because he's got blonde curly hair and does big expressions. <laughs> and I was like, oh, nice. Yeah, because he, he was a silent character. Harpo, as... he, he was called Harpo because he had a harp. And, go, mm-hmm. and that's all the dialogue he'd do. So he'd read expressions with his uh, yeah. face mouth. Like God, that. he was wank back in the day. I'll tell you, you watch it, you watch like, the classics like the Stooges. No, Sto- oh, that's the band, isn't it? The Three Stooges, I should say. Lauren Hardy. I like Lauren Hardy. Yeah, but that it is mostly just violence. <laughs> It's like Tom and Jerry. <laughs> yeah, they're right. beating the hell out of each other. Mm. It's hilarious. But yeah, no, it was a nice little bit. I didn't get it, but people seem to, I imagine. So that's what I like the Dave Melt's review. I didn't get it, but it was great. <laughs> For a title match, Tony's gimmick might be a bit of an issue because she was just being a gimmick in the midst of a very important title match mm. against an up and comer like Sky Blue with front and back. <laughs> mm. <laughs> um, but I like the bit with Luther where Luther sort of like has her in a what's it called? A chicken five position? Chicken fight position. Oh yes. In the electric chair position. Electric chair. That's more wrestling. Oh, chicken. Right. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) I've watched a few movies that came out in like two thousand ish. Um, uh, like American Pie and whatnot. That sort of vibe. Not adult movies. Uh, I like where they ran across. Then yeah, I'm just gonna stop talking. (laughs) I've had enough. You're doing a great (laughs) job, Ross. Carol. (laughs) Please never stop talking. (laughs) And then yeah, just another thing about the director of the show needing to capture these moments, like where she did the thing again and it went black and white, but they missed it. This Um, feels like more of a gimmick for the TBS title, or like like a different part of the card. But I mean, she. She probably she is over though. Like, mm. it's, a, it's a good comment, yeah. It is good, but it's like, oh, this is a title match. Yeah. Oh, never felt like she was gonna lose. Yeah. But oh, like, I mean, sorry, that she's gonna do all the shtick. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, but she's a champ. I wouldn't mind if ah. her matches were a little bit less shtick heavy, but she can still keep it up in between. But yeah, the matches are very shticky, Vicky. Yeah. R.I.P. <laughs> she's there talking with Hayabusa. <laughs> <laughs> Two greats of their respective. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> oh. Jay White beats Jay Lethal in the Jay Classic, meaning Lethal can no longer win the tournament. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> He's the group's whipping boy, I believe. That's yeah. Terrible. He's just bottom of the league, isn't he? Ha ha. Uh, yeah, it was an easy match for Jay White, wasn't it? Within the cave fabe. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, crowd were like, yeah, whatever. It's I've, a chance stuff here. I've got a, a move that I liked in it. There was the... When the he one, reversed, two, three at the end. Yeah, 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 yeah. When he reversed the lethal injection with a chop block, I thought that was pretty good. I laughed at that bit. You laughed at it? Just because the lethal injection is a stupid move, isn't it? No, he Why needs, do you do that? He needs the torque. I to, see. To extra power in the cutter. Just jump a bit higher. Yeah. yeah. Try harder. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was, it was all right for what it was, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, it was yeah. fine. And then... we learned It's them. time! We learned that Von Erichs are going to be in Dallas next week. Oh, yeah. Feed what? them to Christian. I oh, don't know. Everyone, no. feed I knew them. it was happening because there were so many people sent me images of the Von Erichs and they just got a picture of Christian looking happy. <laughs> but it's also the Von Erichs are back. You're like, well, wait, we're one of them, and then it's the beds. Oh, but still, no. But having said that, all right, Matthew. Matthew. <laughs> we know it's crazy though, be saying the Von Erichs. Oh, they're back. Wait, hang on. But like, Matthew hates the Texas territory. <laughs> no, no, but like MLW ran. Uh, the Texas area a while ago and had the Von Erichs come back this exact combination and the crowd were going raged really yeah they were like really into it so um, hopefully they do the same for AEW it's like, like if Little Latin Deck grew up to be wrestlers here yeah and came back do you remember them Little Latin Deck oh Little Latin Deck yeah. oh I just realised what you said there Little yeah. Latin Deck yeah not like you know yeah. Yeah. so like Ant and Deck are Fritz <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ <laughs> and then Little Latin Deck are like the lads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes sense. Oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> little Lad and Deck. <laughs> what if they have kids can have Little Little? I wonder what they're up to now. Little Lad and Deck. I bet there's an article on the Chronicle. Yeah. 
Jill. I'm not checking. Oh, yeah, yeah. In case it's bad. I was going to ask Which Jill. Which you probably will Jill's be. not asked. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then, finally, the big match. The big match that they didn't want to do at World's End because they figured they'd do this match on Dynamite mm-hmm. in sunny Canada and they draw well. Well, can't fault them for trying, I guess. Uh, Christian Cage defends a TNT title against Adam Copeland in the main event. Christian takes out the ref, so Mrs. Wayne comes out to save the day, but hits Adam Copeland with a TNT belt instead. Christian wins. No. <laughs> no. Shayna Wayne. No. Shayna Wayne yeah. should never, ever, <laughs> ever, ever be allowed on AEW programming ever again. When she got in the ring, she might as well have picked up that microphone and said, good evening, everybody. (laughs) You may believe the way the story has gone so far that I might hit Christian Cage with this title belt, but oh no! What I'm going to do is whizzle-wazzle all of you and take down Adam Copeland instead and then put down the microphone and then hit Adam Copeland with the belt. She is awful. (laughs) You should have got the mic and goes, you know the rest. It's cut the black. She's definitely walking down the ramp going, hit Copeland, hit Copeland, (laughs) hit Copeland, hit Copeland. Don't hit Christian, don't hit Christian. Gets in the ring, sees Copeland and goes, that's the one I've got to hit. (laughs) She doesn't even tease that she's going to hit. I think Christian's there because he's got his back to the camera, but I think he's going like, look at me because he's on his knees like, no, don't hit me. She's not going to hit him at all. She's facing totally the other way. It's mental. It's really bad. I mean, bless her for trying, but some people just haven't got it. Mm. Yeah. She should not be in that. I mean, it, it was the right result. And like on paper, again, I think it worked well, like Shayna coming down and after all the story, helping Christian to win. <laughs> it was just, it was crap and execution. So it, it was, was a bait and bait. It was a bait. It was a bait. Sure, Michael. Yeah. But an accidental well, bait. No, it's a bait. And... That sounds no, bad. you know what? Yeah. Well, it kind of is, but it's be... also incredibly predictable. It was meant to be a bait and like, switch. Oh, did you actually think she was going to turn? Well, that's what I mean. I'm, I'm realizing I'm giving myself cross eyes here by like saying it like this. But like, yeah, it was almost a bait, bait. Yeah, because you knew it was going to happen. Because I didn't. As many people point out, she watched Adam Copeland smash her oh. poor son with a concerto in front of her. She no, because she was that. petrified in the corner of the ring. Don't remember a few weeks ago, she was like, why, Nick, why? No, that she was segment just, backstage. Christian's so handsome, she was just aroused. She couldn't stand up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> whatever, whatever he's used on Nick is rubbing off on her. Yeah. He's a charismatic guy. He's phrasing, guy. phrasing. Captain, <laughs> Star, man. Captain Charisma. He is. He really is. Uh, someone point out, remember when WWE got mocked for running Hogan versus Piper when both were in their 40s? 11 years after original They were feud. in their 40s then. AEW is headlining Edge versus Christian. Both guys in their 50s, 22 years after original feud. I wish I was alive. Like, at my age now. You are alive. In the 80s. Oh, sorry. In the 80s, though. What a time. Oh. Imagine looking like that in your 40s. <laughs> what a time you must have had in the 80s. Right. Poor Earthquake. Hey, live, live, live fast. I know. Earthquake's the one I always think of. <laughs> <laughs> But the match was going along well, I thought. You know, I like Christian going for the low blow straight away. Like, after the opening beating that, he was taken. Uh, there was the smooth reversal out of a spear into an impaler from Copeland. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, then Christian obviously get the ref down, going for the belt, and the double spear was good. And after that double spear bit, it all went downhill, because that's when Shader arrived. <laughs> I like the double spear as well. I liked when, I can't remember the move before it, but Christian, I think he avoided the spear and went straight into the kill switch, and I was like, that's good. Did you mention that already? Sorry. No, no. I like that bit. Um, but I'm, I'm more excited for like the rematch or whatever happens down the line. Mm. It's got to be a salad steel cage or something, hasn't yeah. it? Mm. Or a Shana Wayne ban from the country. <laughs> 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 Arrested it's at like, the border. But I live here. <laughs> Tough. <laughs> Tough. If we're, we're traveling there, you have to leave. I am. Ex- uh, I just I, feel like I'm, I'm being harsh, but like. She's no, been, no, but I'm, I'm with you. Like, I thought the match was really solid. Yeah. yeah, I thought the match was really solid. Crowd, like, hell, hell yeah, finally, this is going to be great. And the, the, the swerve was so stupid and like, wait, why is this even happening? But then, you know what, afterwards I thought, I, I'm, I'm sure people in my, kind of were mad. I know because a few were in my DMs going, that's okay. But the promos Who were, were it? the pro- Canadians. Oh, I thought you meant the, wrestlers. <laughs> no, no, oh, no, sorry, yeah, Canadian fans. But like oh. the promos afterwards, after this with Christian, oh, that's what it's about. They're going to be, yeah. They're gonna the be MVP good. of 2023 yeah. for AEW, yeah. Mr. Christian himself. That's what it's all about. If he next on matches, were, if he next on were her, that's the only way she should be allowed yeah. on TV. With Nick Wayne going, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just a, a proper dastardly heel to Christian. New dad, new <laughs> dad. Nick Wayne's mom neck and kill switch is in the background. Oh god, oh, good old kill switch. Kill switch, give me a beat. 
<laughs> no. <laughs> but I thought lots of rest, obviously, on Dynamite oh, with the, t- the tournament going on. But that's all. That's the, that's the final ingredient this feud needs. It's Tomko. Matthew's right. What's happened here? But Tomko. <laughs> you said give me a Real, beat. Did you want to see little Alan? <laughs> oh, I. <laughs> oh. That's them. Oh yeah, that is little Ant. I don't recognise little, little Deck at all. Isn't that the guy who plays Superman? No. no. Look, how, <laughs> look how tall little Deck got. That's not the gimmick. Deck's a very small man. He's a bit taller than them. I, don't like this. I mean, it's, Ant and Deck are apparently very short. Of the guy on the right, and uh, we will rock you. Ah. Mm. Sod off. Uh, well, <laughs> I've Joel's Spotify. in Spotify now. <laughs> <laughs> he can't control <laughs> his mouse. Are you all right? <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> you know, you've opened up every app apart from the one you wanted. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It has no effect on the podcast, I bet, so don't beat yourself up too much. That's true. Yeah, but yeah. you start playing, like, licensed music. <laughs> our, what do you think of this, Jack? And he's like, staying alive, staying alive. <laughs> anyway, yeah, that was the week of wrestling. Go home. No, wait, stay. I have still a bit more podcast to do with Yeah, it. yeah. <laughs> He's, he doesn't realize we're live. We're live, pal. We're live. Yeah. We're not even going to stop. Oh, we're fair enough, straight then. in. Let's have a rummage in our mail bags. <laughs> Telling people to go. <laughs> mail bag. I was talking to Joel. <laughs> Good <laughs> tag. Don't give him the chance. He'll take it. <laughs> Before one of these questions. No, he'll try and go home and end up someplace else. If his, <laughs> his walking's the same as his clicking. I should mention that before... One of these questions, Ross would like to point out that there was a very small choice this week to pick from. Oh yeah, there was there was four <laughs> there was four questions them. to pick uh-huh. from. One of the questions is very complimentary mm-hmm. to Ross. <laughs> I need to apologise to I think it was Kate from the Philippines who literally asked the question that we had last week uh, about our like most shocking wrestling return or most shocking moment in wrestling, which we did like yeah, it was Kate Hughes. So apologies to Kate, but yeah, I sent the screenshot of the mailbag when I opened it. We had four questions. Yeah. And we had to do we do three mm. on the mailbag, so one of them's in there. You know when wrestlers like change how a story happened to make themselves look better over the year. No, I believe uh, him, I believe no, him. I said good it was a the mailbag. Good tag me the mailbag, didn't <laughs> Good and tag. Good and tag. With the recent addition of the R Truth Pop to the ever growing list of types of pop within wrestling, it got me wondering as to what your favorite wrestling pop is. This doesn't necessarily mean the loudest, but just which one holds a special place to you. For me, I love this. Yes, I fully agree with this. It's classy Freddie Blassie coming out at Royal Rumble 2000, which for me is the most wholesome pop that has ever been in wrestling. Thanks for all the content you all produce for people like myself and for helping to get a lot of people through their days. From Point Six Eight to Dado, listen. Uh, former Bishop Auckland and uh, Sunderland player Lee Howie. Yes. Lee Howie, Lee Howie, Lee Howie. Your brother is a C word. <laughs> That's the chant. His brother played for Newcastle and he played oh, for Sunderland. Oh, I see. So Sunderland fan. Lee Howie, Lee Howie, Lee Howie. Your brother is a. Nice person. Yeah. Ah, the Freddy, the Freddy Blassie Pop is nice and wholesome, by the way, for people who don't know. Because um, yeah. they introduced all the people, The I don't know why, they went into this whole uh, ballyhoo, as they say, for the su- swimsuit contest, I think it is. Yeah. So you get Sergeant Slaughter, some of the people, blah, blah, blah. And just like, all right, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then now Freddy Blassie, and it's again, it's New York. So it's at Muscle Square Garden. So crowd, like, obviously there's young and old and people, but everyone seems to know everything. Mm. So, by the way, Freddie Blassie, and it's just this, like, oh, and it's the, the noise of people going, oh, it's him, and then going, son, this, ma- oh, <laughs> man. Half of Japan watched him, like, bite Ricky Dozotin's, oh, I butchered that name. Oh, Ricky Dozotin. Um, yes, with uh, head open and all that other stuff. Mm. It's, yeah, a, good, so it's nice a good one. example. Uh, my favorite pop in the last few years is Primetime Players did those little bits where they just slagged <laughs> off the, what? I was not expecting it. Okay, uh, we'll see where this goes. Players, they did this bits where they're just slagging off every other tag team in a way that was not helpful for the product, which WWE was filled with back then, because they just slammed everybody and did a very good job of it because they were largely crap. Yes, was it Los... Oh, Matadores. Matadores. He goes, who's ever Matador? <laughs> Matadores from uh, Puerto Rico. Mm. And all the other stuff they would say. And they were all like, what have you got there? And I got forget why they had uh, El Toro. Unicorn. El Toro, yeah, look at A this. unicorn! No, no, but they did. They had like this, this big rainbow like unicorn. And then he goes, oh. what's that? Oh, right. he, goes, he goes, well, you know, I love, you know, I love rainbows. <laughs> and it's this big, like, hey! Uh... The he's gay pop. <laughs> right. Fair A good enough. old young. They did one with um, the acclaimed as well, didn't they? Where 
a woman tries to hit on Bowens and he's like, what are you doing? That got a pop as well. Mm. That was quite recent. That's Harley Cameron. It was Harley Cameron. Yeah. QTV. QTV. Yes. I don't remember that Primetime Players one at all. I remember because I'm like, yeah, because it was just like, wait, oh, what are they going to do here? Is this the right time? And I was like, oh, okay, cool. With AEW, it would have been a bigger, <laughs> bigger event if they got gone boom. <laughs> but seen? like, obviously, it was almost expected, which again, is a huge advancement and everything else like that. But like in WWE TV, with the primetime players, like something, something, gay, crowd like, yeah! Have you seen the the sort of sleazy TMZ type guy who tries to catch John Cena out and says like, have you heard that one of your locker room mates is gay? And no, Cena goes, seen that. Cena goes Oh, fantastic. My brother's gay. And the guy just shuts down. because He's like, <laughs> oh. He's trying to get Cena to be like, oh, we'll have to see. So, <laughs> so, yeah, I know. I was kissing him last night. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what have you got, Ross? Uh, there's two that spring to mind straight away. It's a Dudley Boys, like the TLC era. Yeah, I imagine mm-hmm. Christian getting like sort of booze, but a few ladies going, ah! And the Hardy Boys would come out, ah! And the Dudley boys would get this like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, they would. Yeah. <laughs> um, and the other one is awesome Tanata, Tanaka, sorry, uh, one night stand. The Aww. first one where the chair spots happening, and mm. that when the crowd like he's Masato's going like, yeah, bring it on, and they're just the crowd go like the rise up. You can just feel them, yeah. the crescendo. Mm. They're the two main pops I can think. Of, the really. pop of oh my god, he's still doing that spot. Yeah. Mine is one I was there for at WrestleMania 32, which. Me and Ross would art and isn't remembered fondly, but we like it, I think, because we were there. And First it was like one. the great it was like the greatest hits. All the legends in there. And people were like, well, this is taken away from but being there live, mm. amazing. So it's the new day in the ring, or is it the League of Nations? Cutting a heel promo. Michaels comes out looking fantastic because he thought he was gonna wrestle. Mm. Um Foley comes out and there needs to be one more. And it's the it was the a great part because everyone sort of knew, but it was like, would he will he actually be there? And then Austin's music and that that was like it's the biggest part of being a part of maybe the Hardys when they came back the next year mm. but the Austin one was just class because it was a nice mixture of be, it being a total surprise and knowing that it's going to happen and like it, there was just a little bit of doubt and then he was there it was good ah it's a nice question thank you very much mm. Lee Howie oh bitch Lee Howie seasons diddlings diddlers <laughs> in the Jesus. Cultaholic podcast definition of course yeah right, thank you, you. Uh, be it the usual tag team of Matthew Ross and Jack or any mis- uh, mishmashed trio, <laughs> brackets, how will they coexist? I just wanted to say thank you for the many years of providing content for us wrestling fans. Be it this often chaotic podcast, thank you, reporting wrestling news, wrestlers of the week, WTF moments, Watching Manias, etc. This is my first time writing to the mailbag as trying to come up with a topic to ask uh, that isn't your favorite dog breed. It's a struggle. <laughs> Feel free to name one. Oh, uh, that being said, my question to you three is, what obscure moment from a promo or a segment, be it from Dub Dub AEW, TNA, etc., lives rent free in your head? Ooh. For me, it is from the April 23rd episode of Raw in 2012, where CM Punk is forced to take a field sobriety test by Teddy Long under suspicions from Jericho that he was intoxicated and failing said test would force him to vacate the WWE title. Punk had actually botched a portion of the test and technically failed, but resting is a lot of all bollocks, as you would say. I felt it was a good time to bring this one up with the recent return of one, Phil Brooks. And hopefully by the time this one is used, he hasn't already been fired. Oh. <laughs> hey, still got that six months. Two years for me. Anyway. Five years. Anyways, keep up the good work, lads, and don't be a jag-off, and don't be a diddler, in the non cultaholic definition. Yeah. On the real life. <laughs> uh, cheers. Sean from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. P.S. If Andrew can take an anime body pillow on a date... Jack can take his laptop to an Italian restaurant. Thank you, Sean. Yeah, but you, Jack can't do the laptop, what Andrew did after. Anyway, so what have you got for like little moments in... Um... Um, I've got one that I've slightly bent the rules of the question because I'm not even sure if this exists or if I've made it up. Like my really early memories of wrestling as a child, I can't remember if this was a real thing that happened. Maybe you'll recognize the segment. I feel like DX once locked Kane in the back of a van. Right. It's not a good... It's not oh, a good... bells for me. Like, not, and then... Was, was or, in, or, or maybe in a garage that was maybe under a, behind a shutter. Shutter. Kurt Angle slammed Kane underneath a big shutter once. No, he but, was he was definitely trapped somewhere. Oh, trapped. Okay. And then they go out and they're being naughty boys in the main event and then... Poof, how did he get out of that van? <laughs> 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 and you I know just, what? It doesn't ring a bell, but it, it could have happened. It would have been yeah. like 99, 2000... Hmm. I was going to say, Shane put Kane in a limo, didn't he? In like, 04. 03, 04. 03, that, um, yeah. And we... drew, like, drove it under a semi. Yeah, mm. Jesus. That was the call of the man. Earlier, this was like DX. This is like Triple H-led DX with Road When they nicked his mask. 
Yeah, around then, I think. Yeah, probably. But I just can't. I've got no basis for knowing yeah. when it... Like, I've got no other clues. Um, I once remembered a really obscure thing from a kid's TV show, and I had no idea what it was. And I <laughs> mentioned it upstairs, and Peter Austin from Trouble Jump was like, yep, yeah, it's this, this, and this. And I was like... What was yes. it? Yes. Beastmasters or something? Or, like, some spin-off of Transformers or something? Oh, okay, yeah. And I just remembered one scene from it without any other context, and he got it. So I was hoping that by bringing that up, you remember when Kane got locked in a van? Uh, like, <laughs> April 7th, 1999, <laughs> when it was, yeah. But no, I... Uh, that that still lives in my head, and it might not even happen. Oh. If anybody watch it, please do let me know. When Kane was in a van, how did he get out? <laughs> he, uh... <laughs> someone heard banging. So I was like, "We'll help you," or oh, whatever. Mm. Ross, what have you got for us? Uh, it still goes through my mind now. It's Eric Bischoff getting choke slammed by the giant, and the call of "Goodbye, Eric Bischoff." <laughs> I remember forgetting my <laughs> to pack my swimming trunks for swimming club when I was like seven or eight, oh. and my mom went mad at me because she had to drive like three miles to get to the swimming pool and when we got there in my bag was no swimming trunk so I had to go home because I was like I'm not doing it my underpants well yeah they'll, they'll see through and that'll fall off yeah. Um, so I, I got I got shouted I got the belt I got upset I didn't really I just got shouted at I just remember going through my mind when she was like we got out out the leisure centre so like in the car park and then she really went and I was like goodbye Ross Tweddle in the same cane to Tony Schiavone <laughs> saying goodbye Eric Bischoff <laughs> And that, whenever I do something wrong, whenever I do something wrong now, it always goes goodbye, Ross Twain. <laughs> oh, hey, kids' minds are weird, aren't they? Weren't they? <laughs> this has been a real wow. We've not really. This has been more like a psychoanalysis of ourselves, <laughs> Matthew. What childhood trauma is <laughs> you? I didn't really have anything with wrestling, uh, so it's all right. So I was watching the Brave Little Toaster did that. There was. Uh, um, it probably just, it's not even that obscure, I know, but I can't, I'm trying, cycling through stuff, but Vince's... <laughs> you know when we pointed the screen at the end? I know what we're saying now. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, Ross. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, well then. <laughs> Sorry, do come uh, Yeah, the Vince Life Sucks and Then You Die promo. I remember watching as a kid, I forgot about the memory until I watched it back, like the Tom podcast, um, and just going, I remember watching that and not even or half paying attention, probably had me action figures which at that point would have been Droz and Goldust minus a head because it fell off. Mm. So that was like the storyline they had going. Give me about my head. No, lol. <laughs> uh, it's good, it's good <laughs> when you're a kid. And, uh, Better than NXT. Though. Yeah. <laughs> and the, it, because he starts off and he keeps on going and he keeps on going. And also it's that, it's like karaoke. Everyone's going to wait for their slot. And then like, like Road Dogg and Xbox and everybody else out there time. Vince did his. And then Triple H followed that, but tried his best, but he couldn't. So it was like a slow burn, a build. And it's just like, you know, some of you, when you wake up and look in the mirror, in the full body mirror, and go, hey, that body doesn't look right. I thought that shouldn't look like this. And then you switch on your TV and look at people like me, and you go, that's not fair. And he just keeps on building and building. I remember like doing the thing like, what? where's this going? And he just like, some of you will have to learn the lesson. That for the, uh, Some of you, life sucks. <laughs> and then you die. Complete with Xbox in the back and going, yeah. <laughs> like just stunning like the delivery's like wow that really just build up and build up like you know Greek music I thought you meant X-Pac was like stoned I mean <laughs> maybe I think you could have this uh, mm. like better do something here like right pay right, attention right. to any of this but I've that never was the noticed X-Pac in that bit <laughs> once you've seen it like a hundred times like me you just uh, see him with a very like kind of yeah <laughs> so yeah that was it oh. um, hi I only just began watching podcast 307 oh, I feel like leaving yeah, right. What, yeah, like yeah, now? Just, that this quite. I didn't like the setup. This question's for you. <laughs> oh, oh you, this must make you leave. I can't accept compliments, man. Oh, bless I'm you. one of those arseholes who oh, can't accept compliments. Well, like, put your fingers in your ears off. Yeah. Make like Joe and put on Spotify. Right? <laughs> I only just begun watching podcast three or seven after some time away from the graps. I was so taken aback by the sudden and outrageous glow up of the great Ross Tuffer. Oh, all of you men look I know, I, great. I've read it already. I don't <laughs> <know>. <laughs> But at this point, I might have to say Ross has overtaken Jack and Mafu as the hot guy oh, of the heard, podcast. It right. uh, we don't need to spe specify that. You can just say the nice thing. You don't need to drag us down as well. <laughs> that beard and fade look is incredible. I think the last episode I watched was around 280, and so turning into last week's episode was wild. Joel, what do we look like on episode 280? Oh, no. That wasn't that far ago, was it? <laughs> now, <laughs> as, oh, as Joel loads up iTunes, uh, as he looks for episode 280. Now, I think the, the last episode of... Uh, now that Ross has a look that fits his new gimmick of the second hottest guy, a cultaholic, Tom is first. Mm. 
My question is... He likes the beard. It was six he's months got a ago. Type. What? <laughs> I've, had the, I've, had the, I've had the beard and fade for two yeah, years. I've had that a long time now. <laughs> <laughs> We've got an advert for Avatar now, so yeah, you're looking great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does Avatar have guns? Remember, remember when Ross was that, blue? That's a game. That, that, New Ava- game. that Avatar woman had an AK? What's she doing? <laughs> and now it's another. Oh, there you are. This is YouTube's new ads. You can't skip them. Uh, not yet. Uh, uh, one second. Let me, yeah. Anyway, we're all looking. Wait, wait. Yeah, this yeah, is right, 280, yeah, Ross, for comparison. This is 280. Six months ago. Oh. I'm dressed like that. Oh, God. You look exactly like <laughs> <all right. laughs> Matthew's had a haircut a bit. Ma- Matthew, oh God, Matthew needed a haircut. Then. Matthew right. going, Matthew going to the barber and going, can you give me the Brian Molko from Placebo? <laughs> maybe it was a title. Jesus. Maybe he meant a different number. Oh, oh, Twenty-eight. Look, look, <laughs> this person is giving you a, a huge compliment. Cheers, so. that is cheers. Um, if uh, my question is, what wrestlers' glow-ups, if you know any, were your favourites and why? I'll share my <laughs> favourite ones of all the time. It, uh, ones of all favourite ones of all time to give you some ideas. Austin Theory pre and post beard in brackets and visit to Turkey. Actually oh, looks like a guy no, no, who no. would have his phone camera on all day. I don't know about that. Devil's goatee in NXT to Pax beard in AE dub. Yeah. Looks more dastardly and bastardly. Mm-hmm. It's nice that I like that wordplay. Steve Austin in, uh, in ECW versus Stone Cold in WWF. Bald is beautiful. I mean, yeah, it was hanging on for dear life at that point. Um, have you heard him talk about his hair? It's sad. He's like, I used to love my hair. My hair was beautiful. I'm like, oh, <laughs> Steve. Yeah. Lesnar pre and post beard and face turn makes him look like a human person who could be cheered. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dean Ambrose to John Moxie, he just has a beard shaped head. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Controversially, Chris Jericho after he shaved his beard and hair in 08. A lot of shaving mm. and beard related. I, th- I think peak Jericho. Do you remember when he had the red tips at the very end of his hair, like yeah. 02, 03? That's prime. Like the massive dirty beard. Yeah. yeah. Rock, rock on, baby. He still looked yeah. a bit. Yeah, he still when he when he did de- when he debuted and did the the big promo, he still looked a bit. He was very clean shaven, wasn't he? It looks a bit unusual. He looked like a game show host. No seven when he came <laughs> That's back. That's the best no. debut ever. Oh, it was. He looked like yeah, big, big JBJ. He would taken yes. JBJ's hair. JB. Good old JBJ. His, his voice. Yeah. Also, currently, virtually Jay White pre and post beard. He looked like a guy who would probably own many knives before the beard, and now he looks like a guy who would stab you with one of his many knives. Okay, yeah, <laughs> Jesus yeah, yeah. Christ. Thank you, for, <laughs> thank you for demonetizing the podcast. <laughs> Thanks for even looking at my question. I hope it brings a smile to someone's face. Cheers. The real, actual, no joke, real Santa Claus, ho, ho. <laughs> okay, there's a crap way to end it, but other than that, like, yeah, crap. Ross, well done. Look at yeah. the love and compliments for you, mate. Crap, crap joke at the end of it would be Santa, but the rest of it. <laughs> Should I expose his real name? Oh, no. No? No. No. I don't. I think he might have not provided it for a reason. He's on the run. Yeah. <laughs> Lapland. Look, I can't give my name for legal reasons. <laughs> but I think you look pretty. Oh, good on you. Globes and wrestling. Right. I'll say Christian once he got his hair cut. Oh. Which obviously can go back a long time ago. But like, God, him with long hair. Me and Tommy watching him just going, he screams mid-carder. Like, <laughs> and then he gets his hair shaved and like properly cut. You're like, all right, yeah. And now, they, now I can see you. The naked further. truth revealed, and scars never heal. It's just the end. <laughs> I never thought about the lyrics before. Like, you're right. When you close your eyes, when you get a haircut and the truth revealed. People said the edges theme, all the lyrics made sense when he came back at the Royal Rumble, and it all fit the, the what was happening in front of you. And I was like, ah, did they? Yeah. Another, another chance to feel alive, and he's looking around like I'm back. They remember me. Oh, yeah. goosebumps. I guess, yeah. Mm. Yeah, I guess it did. Yeah, you know what? The, 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 Broken the, the, dreams are mentioned. The lyrics do change to obviously because I remember listening to it as a youngin, um, that's a long time ago. But now as an old person, it's like, yeah, on this day, yeah, well, yeah, oh, there's the whole. Yeah, that's a good point, Jack. The whole verse, shot down. There's the whole verse about like going to spear a AJ Styles, and everyone's like, what cameraman, and the cameraman <laughs> misses <laughs> it. And it's all like, everyone's like, what? Back in like 06, everyone's mm. like, what? But you know, wasn't Christian when the lass is <laughs> singing Christian's theme like 04? Isn't that, was that better? Atomic, yeah. is it Atomic Blonde? That's I mean, it. That's is it Atomic Blonde? Yeah, well done. That's what he was. He oh. was an Atomic Blonde. So Truth revealed. So you got he's your glow up. Yeah, and I think he's he's even now he's he's glowed up still. That's not the point of the question. Sorry, I've he's, got a, off he's a real Ross. vintage daddy now. Yeah, aye, father. So. Don't don't ask me. Ask the Wayne family. <laughs> Gunther. Mm. Okay, yeah. There's that picture when he's got the blo- the bleach blonde, that era of Gunther. Oh, bleach, but that's where that's the specific Gunther I'm talking about. I was gonna say that was like early on in his yeah, career. Yeah, very early Gunther. Oh. So yeah, the, to now it's just a, he looks like a like a like a like a god. Yeah, mm. I don't mind. I didn't mind 
bigger guns are all smaller guns. I like Big Walter. No, Big Walter. I I think he's he's retained the impact and the power of his movement. Yeah, he's not. It's not. He's lost none of his power. Functional muscle is on. Kavorka. Yeah. Kavorka. There we go. Uh, what's your globe? Mine's not a. Um, can the can globes be like in terms of persona, confidence I'll rather so, than yeah. physical? If you go back and watch Becky Lynch before she became the man, when she's a smiling, that's a really good pick, jigging. Yeah. Like I'm just happy to be here. Ooh, and then yeah. once she turned in, when she I think it was when she turned heel on Charlotte Flair, and just once she turned face on Charlotte well, Flair, yeah, everyone, <laughs> everyone cheered. Yeah. But the the difference in like how she walked to the ring and the mannerisms of the promos mm. and everything that was if it, I might have dodged the question slightly, but that's that's the one that first sprang to mind. Nice one. I'll say um, Julia Hart. Going oh. from um, fasty athlete, cheerleader, to goth woman. Mm. Yeah. Isaac Yankum <laughs> to Kane. <laughs> That's my gimmick one. Whoa, controversial pick there. Like. <laughs> ah, wow, that was a hell of a mailbag this week. Mm. If you have any thoughts. Uh, or yeah, please email in. Lovely compliments. <laughs> we, we had give four to emails this week. Please yeah. email in. Don't do the. Don't send compliments. In. Oh yeah, we no. hate those. No, me and Ross actually do. I, I, I know. Why? Why them. not? I just can't take awkward, it. Yeah, because we're it's, in, it's imposter syndrome, isn't it? Because we're English. Oh, I like. You know what? That's weird. Because yeah, I'd be the same if someone did it for me. But I'm happy that you've got. Uh, them. Yeah, I can and never. Yeah, you I guys can never hate do them. them. I'm sorry, sorry. <laughs> Mailbag at colorlike.com. We're unwarranted as well. Anyone, any old, <laughs> any old tosser can do what we're doing. And the same. It's not like we're Ronnie the Rocket or something. Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ronnie is. <laughs> 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 Wrist piss. Diddle. It's from the vault, I should say. As well. <laughs> it just says diddle. Not like, hello, diddlers. Did diddle. Mm. Long time watcher, first time writer. My name is Alex. I am a pothead from Charlotte, <laughs> North Kakalaki. No, not the same one that was featured on your podcast like 100 episodes ago. Totally different guy. I was high listening to that podcast episode and had to do a hard double take. Anyways, this past Monday on Raw, Don Mysterio got the most heat I've ever seen in any wrestling company in years. It could be this week, you know. It got me thinking about how underrated the popularity of wrestling in the Latino community is. As Latino myself, I've seen a lot of other Latino communities grow up on wrestling. Rey Mysterio, Eddie Guerrero are literal institutions of the culture. I'm sure this will make for a great show in Puerto Rico this weekend. Oh, wow. <laughs> and it oh my God. <laughs> bloody, bloody did. <laughs> shout out to the Queen Elizabeth II. She's looking very healthy right now. <laughs> shout out to Carlito, who I feel is usually overlooked when talking about the best Latino wrestlers. That brings me to the Reese's Pieces portion. Yeah, segue, baby. Below is a list of countries. Who do you think is the most underrated wrestler from each country? Oh, my word. Fastest thought first. For the love of God, fastest thought first. The podcast is already long enough. Begin. <laughs> Jesus. And we weren't even having the head scratch and Reese's Pieces at that point oh, in history. God. Who, who's this from? Uh, oh, uh, the current Nottingham Forest goalkeeper, <laughs> Keela Navas. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> JK. But no, seriously, how the hell did that move happen? It doesn't play for him anymore. Yeah. That was last That's week. how long ago this <laughs> was? <laughs> Well, this will be the week of uh, backlash. Yeah, of course it was. Puerto yeah. Rico. Yeah, Puerto yeah, Rico. All right, Mexico and great wrestlers. So I think to an English-speaking audience, the original Sin Cara is probably the most underrated because he had a terrible time in the WWE. Mystique, yeah. yeah. Super crazy. Ooh. Ooh, Super Carlo from Dubs and Dub. Uh, Canada. Oh. Um, oh, oh, man. Oh, no, yeah. Fastest thought. No, but oh, come on. I don't know. There's no wrestlers uh, in Canada. Um, prime time. Uh, Skipper. Oh, yeah, he was Canadian. Yeah. Was he? Damn it. Part of Team Canada. Team Canada. Oh, bloody bad, oh, bad news, Brown. I don't know. <laughs> was he Canadian? Well, he hangs out with Carlos and Jerry. Oh, he was Carlos and Jerry. Oh, yeah, okay. Fair oh, enough. Sorry. Um, well, hi, Boo, sorry, and Sticky Vicky. I'm going to make sure that um, bad news, Brown is. <laughs> yeah. You're throwing me off now. Leo. Uh, Canadian, Canadian. Oh, Viking. One of those IBS dudes who didn't I've, get out of there. I've got a better one. Vampiro. Vampiro. <laughs> England. Underrated. Oh, um, under, underrated. Oh, there's so many. Like Joseph Connors. Yeah. Oh, that's a good pick. Liam Slater. Gollum, uh, year of Connors. Yeah. I'm mm -hmm. put um, Dean Armark. Even though he's, when he's, he's a wrestler's wrestler, meaning wrestlers love him, but I don't think enough people outside of the little bubbles. Uh, Martin Bloody them. Kirby. Martin Kirby. There you go. Let's go. We'll go Bad on. News Brown was American. <laughs> <laughs> India. Oh, goodness. Uh, uh, Shanky. That one Shanky. match. That one match he had with Gunter. Do you remember? 
where they slapped well, the clips of it yeah, on yeah, the yeah. house show. No, that, that was in all Japan. We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go Sanga. We're literally naming. Yeah, Go on, say the great Carly a day. <laughs> the great Carly. I'm ready. Uh, USA. Oh. It's loaded oh. again. Oh. I feel like we should have like Joel singing just to fill the dead <laughs> air or something I'll, in the background. I'll go. What, what should Joel be singing? <laughs> Anything by the Beatles. I'll. <laughs> <laughs> he loves the Beatles. Oh, Paul London. From America, underrated wrestler. Underrated wrestler from America. I mean, it's pick anyone, isn't it? Mm. Pick anyone you uh, fancy. I'm picking Scoot Andrews from O2, Ring of Honor. <laughs> and a giant head. His name was Scoot Andrews. Is it Scoot Andrews? Hardcore. So Andrews, I forget his name wrong. Hardcore Holly. Ah. Oh. Oh, lovely. He should have been a world champion. <laughs> yes, really. that's a cause name. Samoa. Oh, God. Um, uh, I reckon, <laughs> even though he, had, he was fun and had a dance, Rikishi was a better wrestler than... He didn't have a chance to have class matches. That's a good pick. Okay. Yeah. You manga, as William Regal called. You underrated? I mean, oh. I think in the pantheon of like what he achieved, what he was allowed to achieve. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm, I think he was okay, far yeah, better yeah, than. Yeah. He had the feud with Cena, but then. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Damn it! Well, I can't pick them two. Uh, who's left? Dwayne. <laughs> <laughs> Dwayne the Rock Johnson is my pick for I underrated. Think the Rock is underrated in ring. Because people are always like... Well, people are often debating, though. I mean, I'm saying that like I have a joke, but people do go like, ah, oh, he doesn't deserve all the praise he's given because he was there a comparatively less time than Triple H or Austin or Undertaker. I'm like, you are out of your mind yeah, yeah, yeah. how popular the dude was in like 2000. Yeah. So anyway... Uh, he might be the best problem ever. I've seen him. people speculate that Austin uh, taking time off for his neck, so I was his 99 with the car crash and everything, uh, was, yeah, was actually good for him because... It meant that Austin got some time off to like get away and not be too overexposed because he'd been on top for like two years at that point. Yeah, that's a good point. So, actually. Do you think so the Rock have... they're doing that was actually a really good thing for him? There was a chance that maybe there was some booze. Mm. Not that about taboos. Australia. Um, <laughs> I guess Buddy Matthews is the one I'm going to say. Okay. Mm. He is better than what he's booked as, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Harley Cameron. Why is that? Didn't get to see much of her. I've seen <laughs> I've seen some indie stuff she's done. She's doing four fifties and that. What's that? What's that rest of the two kids in the coat? Oh, Jay Adelman. Jay, Jay Adelman. Yeah, yeah. We've really disrespected the great nation of Australia. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I'll go for um, a man called I think it was Punch Drunk Istria. He was at North once and had a really good match. Oh, that us. line. Yeah. yeah. I'll go oh, I'll him. say Oak the Caveman. Okay. It's real. Uh, Japan. <sighs> oh. They're all good from there. Yeah, they're all good. They're not. They are. Kenzo Suzuki was rubbish. Oh, <laughs> well, yeah, there's one. Um, out of all the Japanese wrestlers, they think. <laughs> yeah, that was um, it. People got, how did you, they, like, they, throw a rock, you'll hit 10 really good ones, and you got <laughs> this one coming out. I'll, I'll say, and he's not underrated in the Japanese wrestling landscape, but just because he's not a New Japan wrestler, so people haven't heard of him, I'll go for uh, Katsuhiko Nakajima from no, all right. Japan. He's moved. Oh, when well, he moved. Like the other month, oh, oh, he like left thing. Noah after beating Kendo Miyahara, the old Japanese, mm -hmm. and then now he's rocked up in Noah. Watched a Kendo title match. Kendo didn't win the belt, and he threw a bunch of flowers at him. Like he wanted to wrestle him for the belt. He's like, "You're crap." I've turned up here in a suit. That's good. And now the now he's become the champion. Mm. So Kendo's gonna have to come. So Nakajima, some of the best strikes in all of wrestling. Yeah. Oh. Yoshihiro Tajiri. Oh, yeah. Great says to give him his underrated. full name. <laughs> give him his full flowers. <laughs> what I did there was, by rambling, I'd hit Ross with a car at Survivor Series, giving him time. Yeah, to... <laughs> well, what a good team. Um, so you've hit me with a car and all. <laughs> so I can think of loads, but I'm thinking, who's underrated people are going to be bleed her of um, or care about? No, if you say someone people haven't heard of, it makes you look really impressive. Yeah. Wait, what up? <laughs> it's a point, right? Hey, fancy wancy. Uh, I watched Ish Ishin Ricky, who was in SWS, the you know that weird Japanese company, who looks really, really cool, and then he comes back to WAR and has a bunch of crap matches against Ultimo Dragon, and people are like, how can you have a bad match against Ultimo Dragon? <laughs> so then he retires the same year, but for a brief period, he was an ex sumo who got into it. He's flying around the crowd like he's ex sumo him, so they're cheering the hell out of him. The Logan Paul of his day. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and then he just takes some time off, comes back, and he's rubbish. Oh. So wait, amazing how um, how quick Glory can leave here. Uh, Puerto Rico. 
Puerto Rico. Ooh. I mean, it's too cold Scorpio too. Or not too cold Scorpio. Too cold Scorpio. <laughs> Savio. Vin- you just say anybody. Listen, I always, for some reason, in my brain, mix up yeah. Flash Funk and Savio. That's Vin- a crazy. <laughs> I know. I don't know why. Um, <laughs> is Savio Vega too obvious? I mean, yeah. Was he appropriately rated, Savio Vega? Oh yeah, dude. He was a big star in Japan. Oh yeah. There's team in Japan. Yeah. Oh. I'll he was a bit go. like whatever. He was just he just <laughs> into man going Savio Vega. I'll go for- I'll go for the man who topped our ranking of every single member of the Shining Stars, Epico. Oh, I was going to say Primo. Oh, well, there we go. Oh. I was going to say Primo guy. Oh, move we'll on. Yeah. Oh, I can't think of anybody. Oh, um, it's a lad. He was in TNA, had the barbed wire match of Abyss. Invader, no. Um, sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry. No, no, no. Oh, it's just a bloody name. Stop it. He had a match with the business. Oh, oh, come on. Oh, Devil Messiahs oh. or something? Oh, Judas, Judas Messiahs. Judas, Judas Messiahs, yes. yes. Wasn't he Mil Muertes in Lucha Underground? Yes. I think of someone. Oh, okay. Very good. He was someone in Lucha Underground. Mm. I know that connection. Mm. I can't tell you who. I, think was I was so it. excited to see Mil Muertes like, do inner promotional stuff. And then Lucha Underground just died on its mm. arse with all the cop. Anyway, and they were all locked into contracts. They couldn't even go anywhere. That was it. crazy. It's like, Mad. rest is going, can I be let out my contract, please? And they went, no. No, Ricochet. No, no. You've got to stay here. Yeah, you signed on to this contract. <coughs> you signed on for another another season. Because when's the next season? We don't know yet. Mad. But I can't leave until that's happened. It's like, yeah. It's like, okay. It, they call that the Dana White UFC contract now. Mm-hmm. Uh, and lastly, wherever the hell Come Tuesday is from? Uh, America. Oh, I've done that one, haven't I? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, pal. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how many offensive Heaven. accents Jack did. I'm guessing at oh. least three. Oh, I don't think I did any. Anyway, thanks, guys. Sincerely, Kayla Navas. Thank you, Kayla Navas. Thank you, Kayla Navas. Navas. From, uh, if any of her potheads from Charlotte, North Carolina, there, uh, botched that, sorry. Um, botched. They'd have to be called Alex. they would be called whatever they like. Please, please, please email us at mailbagalcoholic.com. Please email us. And make sure you tell us how pretty Joel looks. <laughs> yeah, Joel hasn't had it yet. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I love the way that Joel goes to click MS Paint and loads of <laughs> Illustrator. Please. I need it. Imagine he's, <laughs> just, <Love> you, Joel. <laughs> he's just had it open and he's just drawing us in front of him like a life drawing. <laughs> drawing like me French girls. <laughs> Is that me? <laughs> that was, it's on a time I have day. to do a different voice to, so, to show it's not me saying it, but then it's just like, here's, here's a voice. <laughs> Hello. Uh. It's Cultaholics. The question. Yeah. What a lovely long podcast we've had. And there's just a little shout out for our amazing producers themselves, Jason Goddard. Goddard is God. God. I can't go hard this week. No, oh, okay, fair enough. I'm trying. <laughs> Painkillers are wearing off. That is hard. <laughs> oh, bless you, <laughs> Damien Smith. Get down there in hell, you yeah. little Satan. Frick. <laughs> Lovely Jack here. I prefer when Ross takes the lead. I feel weird. Reno two two zero zero. He's from the future. Pew, pew. He's come back to warn us of our excellent podcast. Noah Anderson. 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 Two of each animal. Come on. Super <laughs> Super Sharkosaurus photography. Super Shark. Saurus. Sixty four photography. Oh no! I did it again. <laughs> photography. The crocodile again. That can be a shark, I guess. <laughs> If you're still here, the big <laughs> question this week is, what or what or what or what is the most prestigious title in all of wrestling? Right I'm going to have to probably right go now. for Roman Reigns this time. <laughs> 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 it's just because off camera, we were debating what the big question should be, and Matthew was like, well, everyone will just say Romans, won't they? And I I'd also have to go Roman. <laughs> Matthew, which one would you go for? <laughs> well, it's funny you ask that. Before Ross. you do, Joel, which one would you go for? Uh, yeah, I'd say Roman, probably. <laughs> So Matthew, you've been you've got three Romans in the room. <laughs> oh, hello. What are you saying? I, I think about your empire a lot. <laughs> um, I will say, just to make this something resembling a human podcast, no, no, no. as opposed to AI. Think of the uh, thunder. If we just end it now. Oh. Well, no, because the, the genesis... I'll say Roman Reigns yeah! for first, but if a close Thanks second very much would for be listening. Christian's <laughs> AEW. Uh, TNT. TNT oh, yeah. title. Because you brought up, that was the genesis of this, of this yeah, question. Yeah, uh, Christian brought up, it's been used in lots of sound bites, including the Magnificent Cultaholic News section, that Christian wanted to make that title more prestigious than the AEW World title. So I thought it'd be a good thing to bring that up. Like, what is more prestigious between that and that? Again, that MGF is... You a know, tag team wrestler. A ta- yeah. Uh, yeah, a tag team wrestler who is now incredibly injured, is feuding with 93 people, and then there's Christian going, lol, I'm so amazing. 
the guy whose dad I'm off for being dead now wants me to be his dad, and now his mum wants to be my wife. There's a, <laughs> like, I think we're wow. in quite a small window, and I don't think it'll last, but where I think right now maybe that is true, and the TNT one is currently more, certainly featured more heavily, I feel like, because mm. there's all the, the MJF one's all mired in all the bollocks. Oh, right. Whereas Christian's really sim- really straightforward. Yeah. Your dad's dead. Yeah. I'm class. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird because when MJF won the world title, the world title was the most prestigious belt in wrestling, maybe. Maybe, yeah. It was up there with Romans. Like last year. Yeah, past. Oh, I knew Japan hadn't rediscovered their form at the time. But now it's just gone like that, hasn't it? Uwu's gone like that and Mm. AEW world title's gone like that. Yeah. Yeah. Again, Roman can just not show up for months on end and people still go, I will throw money at my TV. I don't care. Yeah. Yeah, I guess you could throw in maybe Seth Rollins in the conversation. Hmm. Uh, Gunter. Oh, yeah, Gu- oh, Gunter. That's an even better idea, yeah, because oh, yes. of obviously breaking the Honky Tonk's record. I know you mentioned Rhea Ripley. I always mention Rhea Ripley Garen on Thunder, every yeah, occasion, yeah. just when I see people in the street. Right. Hop um, the mother. Yeah, everyone's got... Uh, most of the people who have the big titles are making them very prestigious right now with their long, girthy lengths. Maybe uh, Logan Paul's US title. <laughs> Most of the people who have titles are uh, doing a good job, yeah. Um, so it's nice there. Like They've got back to the, the old feel like a big deal. So when a title change does happen for any of these things, it's like, okay, great. Mm-hmm. This is history. This feels like I'm watching something important. I'm trying to think of like other promotions. I noticed when Vikingo came along, he still had that mega championship from AAA. Yeah. I was like, what's been going on there? QT Marshall has one. That he I lost it. supposed to be co-promote. Well, yeah, as soon as he's like left, right? He's lost that belt. Can't remember who so now. Like, you've left AEW. You yeah, give us a title back. I think he lost it before he left. You're leaving. Like a day before, back. yeah. Um, so I think of what other belts are prestigious at the minute. The five-star real world's champion. <laughs> Which is held by Jake Hagan. Still. Right. He's still active. He took it home with him, didn't he? He's had it for about 2,000 days. Uh, the, I was going to say the other title, but I forgot the name of it. The Tap or Snap title. That's one Tap or Snap Championship. Which, Mark Haskins' his belt. Which Rey Mysterio won via pinfall. Yes, he did. The tap or snap. <laughs> yeah. The rules have been suspended for this one because Rey doesn't know any submissions. Amazing. Rey could have put on a submission, surely. Just take off his knee brace and wrap it around the red. No, I, yeah. say, wait, yeah. who am I? I'm Rey Mysterio. Yeah, I'm not doing anything you tell me. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Don't have him wrestle for the tap or snap championship. Amazing. But we're um, all set, settled on Roman. I think so. The, the New Japan one at the minute... The IWGP isn't, it's Sonata at the minute, and he's not like, it's not like when Okada's got it or something like that, which is unfortunate. They're trying to build him. Yeah, it probably is. Stardom's been rife with injuries. Yeah, Roman. We've answered yeah. it. I can't think of any th- others. We've it's... all put our degrees in stating the bleeding obvious to good yeah, yeah, there you go. Joel? Yes. Oh, you <laughs> said, <laughs> said Roman, didn't you? Yeah, look, we're tapping out. Look, it's been a long week. It's December. We love you all. Jack, what have you got for us for, uh, until next week? I'm not sure when it's going out, but there is a rapidly produced newer weirdest episode coming out. Ooh. So the other one's now out on the channel. That went up on Sunday, and there is now another one in the works. Um, but I'm, again, I'm not certain when. Me and Owen stream on Twitch every Wednesday at 6 p.m., twitch.tv forward slash cultaholic, up the Mariners. We're now managing South Shields. It's not going well. And I've started a new massive long script, but. That's for next year. I'll keep that a little sneaky secret. Well, two weeks' time, you mean? <laughs> no, like actually in the new year. <laughs> oh, okay. When, when you've stopped remembering that, it, you know, when you think it's the year yeah. before. Um, 2024 proper. Bless you. What about you, Ross? Yeah, check out the rise and fall of Alberto Del Rio. If you want to hear 45 <laughs> oh. minutes of me talking about an absolute wanker, then that's on the channel right now. Yeah, I have people messaging me going, have you seen this? It's horrible. I'm like, yeah, I thought it would be like, I yeah, seen it yet. Credit to so. Justin Henry for the words, uh, Dick Tubbs on the edit for that one, I believe, and then me, 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 me voice was there as well. But in, yeah, in Justin, Justin is incredible, the, the depth he goes to. I don't know where he finds this stuff. He's just a nerd like me. Oh, he's incredible. We fact check each other. He's so cool. Yeah. But um, is him in Pride mentioned? Yes, it is. Yay. Get Fighting kick, Marco Kroko. Yeah. But there's no shame in losing to him, I've learned. Oh, God. Oh, there wasn't, but it was it's insane. <laughs> it was put against him. Like, is Jesus that the one Christ. where he's wearing the mask? Yeah. Yeah. Just obviously Dos Caras and all it's that stuff. in the head. Yeah. What if the devil Barely did? even touches him. It's enough to KO him and say, oh, okay, mate, this was a complete mismatch. That made me scared because I've stood next to Del Rio and he is. Big scary man, yeah, and I, and I'm just watching him get folded by an even bigger scarier man. I'm like, oh yeah. my god, he slapped me, Crocop. No, oh. Alberto, do you remember WCPW? Why did he slap you? Uh, we're doing a little bit, and he was not planned. It was just meant to be like I would say 
John O'Clock, mother, you know what. And he would go, no, he was saying it to me, but he slapped us out of nowhere for no reason. Really hard. In the chest? Yeah, really cold day as well. Really hard. Oh. Oh, Wrestlers yeah. love a bit of that. When yeah. you're doing bits, they love grabbing you and touching mm. you. and Disgusting people, aren't they? Trying to get themselves over <laughs> by being the hard man. Next, <laughs> next to a little presenter like us. Well, I didn't even cry, so joke's on you, birdie. Oh, I did later, Dick just break. seeing it. Just seeing him slap <laughs> Ross, I had to cry. Um, <laughs> but it has just been working on Christmas content. Apart from that, there's a game show coming. There's, uh, oh, God. I've, oh, oh, no. No, it's after, it's after Christmas now, don't worry. <sighs> yeah. When are we recording and The prestigious oh, Colties after, coming after up. First week of January. Thank coming. God. Oh, the Colties, yes. <laughs> yep. We need them to nail a date down mm. for them. We'll nail a date down. Yeah, but regular podcasts will continue apart from the one that falls in a certain part of December. I think there's one on. I can't like, remember the schedule. I think there's one like on Christmas Eve. It should be. That might be the cold. That might be the cold. That makes sense. There's going to be one maybe the week before that, which is going to be me, you, and Tom. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired, man. I'll try and... Uh, also, shout-outs to the Golden Age. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Years in the making. Yeah. Literally. Sam, uh, get this out. Matthew Stewart, and... Justin, Henry again. Yeah, Justin Henry. Yeah. Dog. Yeah. Whoa! Whoa. But uh, shout-out to those three for working on that because it's up on the channel now and it's getting very good feedback. Mm. And I dropped myself in it on the stream last night when I was like, oh, is it good, is it, Owen? And he went, have you not watched it? And I went, yep. <laughs> <laughs> really long imagine the Mariners oh well not the Mariners ah this has been Jack this has been Ross this has been my Gibson Joe Matthew? the golden age you got the holly or nothing man <laughs> mo mo moving moving just keep myself sane that's it but very boring but right now we're gonna remind you that mailbag and .com, patreon.com forward slash cult holic now we're gonna point the screen and say the thing that Jack suggested earlier I can't remember the cadence. Bye, Ross Tweddle. Bye, Bye, Ross Tweddle. Bye, Ross Tweddle. Three, two, one. Bye, Bye Ross Tweddle. Where's the meme sort of when I get cancelled? <laughs> <laughs>